Many anglers dream of going to Canada to experience the amazing scenery and to capitalize on world-class fishing opportunities. These once-in-a-lifetime adventures have the potential to produce the biggest fish some anglers will ever catch in one of the most scenic places on Earth. The Angling Edge staff, well, we're no different. Every year we dream about the next adventure north to Canada in search of trophy fish. On today's show, Jeremy Smith and Jeff Simpson venture to Lawrence Bay Lodge on Reindeer Lake in Saskatchewan, a place well known for raising monster fish, especially world-class northern pike and fast-action lake trout to boot. Oh, no, the muskie would be happy to catch that baby, We'd huh? be happy to catch that one. <laughs> Man, I just absolutely love coming on these trips with you, Jer. Just a, a great opportunity to just tag into some big pike. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. There we go, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. All right. It's cool. I saw him follow and threw right back on him. Bang. Bingo, bango. Woo. First spot of the morning. Jeff and I are on a sweet trip to northern Saskatchewan. Lawrence Bay Lodge famed Reindeer Lake, maybe one of the best pike fisheries on planet Earth. And our first spot of the morning, we got a little taste of what the place has to offer. Woohoo! Sweet. Look at how fat that thing is. It's amazingly fat. Cool. Way to go, dude. Way to go, dude. <laughs> that's awesome. I just saw him follow, and that's the nice thing about fish up here. They just have not seen lures, so you throw something back at them. Bam! Sweet. I'll show you this guy. You get a lot bigger than this, but look at the belly. Just look at the belly on that thing. That is insane. It's fall time, so there's fish moving up. Jeff and I and a number of buddies decided to come up here on a dream trip, driving our boats to a fly-in destination in hopes of targeting giant pike like this. And then maybe if we get lucky, the lake trout will be spawning by the end of the trip. So we'll get to catch trout shallow, big pike shallow, which should be awesome. Mr. Pike, see ya. Located in Northern Saskatchewan, Lawrence Bay Lodge on Reindeer Lake offers some of the best trophy northern pike fishing in Saskatchewan, and at approximately 100 miles long and in some places 60 miles wide, it's considered one of the top northern pike lakes in the world. Thousands of islands and miles of shoreline create a seemingly endless number of bays where giant northern pike reside. Because the lake is so far north, with an average depth of around 100 feet, the water stays cool and the big pike remain relatively shallow all season long. Yeah, nice one. Nice, nice one. one. This segment is brought to you by Big Bite Baits, designed to bring the big bite to your line. This is action packed. I totally just hosed Jeff over. You gotta remember to bring extra pliers on trips like this. Cause Jeff was just taking one off, basically a double. Drop the pliers in the lake. <laughs> so rather than help him get the pliers, I decided to cast and caught another one. That's the bait I've been using. We've got a number of different uh, baits on board. Of course we packed for everything, but sometimes just the simplest things are what you need. I'll show you this fish. And I'll show you a list of the type of gear that you want to have for a fly-in trip like this to the northern part of the world, northern Canada, Saskatchewan, for big northern pike and some lake trout. Look at that. Another beauty. Another just spectacular fish. Man, oh man, this is awesome. All right, I'll let you go. Hopefully catch another one. And All right, what a great fish. You know, you don't need a ton of baits for a trip like this, but you do need to have the right categories of baits. So check out what we brought for a trip like this to the far north in the fall. Big pike have many great qualities, but the fact that they're often in a very aggressive mood, willing to bite just about anything that passes in front of them, 
That's one of our favorite qualities. An all-around big fish producer is the size 12 X-Wrap. It's a Radican suspense. When they're digging a jerkbait bite, you'd be hard-pressed to find a better option. If pike happen to be scattered or you need to cover a lot of water, be sure to bring some size 7 rip and wraps, spinners, and spoons. Plastics are one of the best because of their versatility. We always pack 5 to 7 inch swim baits, minnow profiles, and tubes on these trips. To rig them, we'll have both the heavy duty and HD weighted willow swim bait hooks from 6 aught all the way up to 11 aught depending on the size of the plastics. For jigs, we have the VMC Boxer and Flat Shad jigs from 3 8 to 1 ounce. On this trip, the combo of a half ounce Flat Shad jig with a 6 inch Big Bite tube was simply oh. magical. This presentation slithers through the cabbage beds and is so simple to fish. It's become one of our go-to rigs for Big Pike of the North. <laughs> oh, geez, that's Ooh. decent. Cool. cool. That was cool. Made it right at the boat. Yeah. Wow, that's the fun part. It's almost like muskies. <laughs> Any musky fishing. <laughs> the bait was gone, and now it looks like he just nipped it, but he swallowed <laughs> that whole thing. That was sweet. It was a good show from this angle, Jerry. Yeah, too. that was pretty fun. Man, oh man. Right now I'm throwing an X wrap. We're mixing it up with different things. And we're using a lot of basically bass gear, you know, flipping sticks, fishing a lot of 7.4 heavy fast power and action rods. Nice little pike, catching tons of these guys. I'm gonna get them back. But one of the cool things that's happened recently here that unfortunately we were not able to get our hands on, but St. Croix Legend Tournament Series, they released a line of rods specifically for northern pike fishing. So for those enthusiasts that love coming up north, like this. Now we've got rods that are specifically designed for that. But if you don't want to get a pike specific rod, you know, really just bass gear is what you need for, for fishing these pike up here. 7.4, 7.6, seven, seven, medium, heavy, fast, or a heavy fast is, is what you want for this deal. Ooh, big one, big one. Ooh, big one. So that was on a number eight shad wrap. Your style of boat control is really key. One that was there from the very beginning. You want to be able to see in the water. The adventure begins. We are loaded for bear. We got You know, there's so there. many different ways to fish for walleye. Dependability and efficiency. Simple, fast, and easy. The best rides on a planet. Sure looked like it, by the boil anyway. Got ourselves a double jerk. It's a double? You got a big one, Jeff? Yeah. Two big ones? Yeah. Yes. Double Bs? Wow. Wow. Sweet. <laughs> Ooh, they're going to kiss. Huh? They are. <laughs> now Look what at we... this. This is what we're talking about. Now what are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> These are great problems to have. <laughs> right. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Get them next to each other. <laughs> you crazy? Oh, man, is that cool. I hate to say it, Jerry, but mine's bigger than yours. <laughs> that is absolutely what you come up here for. I mean, it's just, it's just such an incredible experience to be able to catch big fish like this so consistently. Those, those boy, boys were swimming together, huh? Yeah, they were. Okay. Bad, and you gotta be able to get in there. He puts out, there it is, but. I love having fish grippers on board. It's just a great way to lean the fish up against the, the boat. And you can get his jaws open. A jaw spreader's great, of course. But man, that's a great double, huh? Unbelievable. I'll get him back and I'll just show you the tools that I've got in the deck to safely handle this pike. So here's a few of the tools that you've got to have on board. A fish gripper, like I said, is nice just to get your hands away from the fish. And speaking of keeping your hands away from the fish and treble hooks, this is hands down my favorite tool to have on boat. This is a hook extractor. So you can see that the, the hook, what you do is you end up reaching down, you grab the hook here, and I pull back and you get a good strong grip on the hook. So you can unhook fish by keeping your hands far away from those toothy critters that often have treble hooks. Of course, I like carrying a, a longer pair of pliers as well. So fish grippers in this. And then I, I never, ever, ever go fishing for big fish with big lures without a good pair of bolt cutters. So 
not only to keep the fish healthy, but if somebody does happen to get hooked or go through clothing or whatever, this is, uh, when you're this far north, not having these is a bad deal. You gotta have them. So having just those little things on the deck make dealing with pike up here a heck of a lot easier. Oh, he's taking off. Whoa, baby. He wants to go. He wants to go. Notice we brought the big musky net because we were planning on catching fish the size of muskies and we're doing exactly that. <laughs> Couple of optimists. <laughs> That's awesome. But it is nice for just keeping them too. Yeah. Well, that's a nice fish, man. Woo, baby. Whoa. Capers. Cool. Just wailing on tanks today, buddy. Whoa. Holy I cow, like this that. is insanity. Uh -huh. This is totally crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh, what a great fish. Great fish. Great fish. <laughs> They're so pretty. I like them. Here, I'm gonna get this thing back here quick. It's like. <sighs> Well, you know, Jared and I, like he mentioned, we've both been up here a couple of times. And well, you get up here in your own boat, Jared brought his own boat this time. And you look at the lake on the map and you see the spots. Once you get on this body of water, it is massive. And then you go into bays and bays. And there's actually, the way we kind of break it down is we consider each spot, we go into an area, and you kind of have to forget how vast it is and just fish the spots that look good. And each little area becomes kind of its own lake, you know? so. It's very massive and expansive, but if you just kind of look at the spots, break it down, boy, the fish are there, sometimes by the dozens. One of the pieces of technology that is so important to have, especially if you're coming out here without a guide, you might be using a camp boat or whatever to go out after dinner, is bring some type of a GPS system. So right now we've got the Humminbird Solix units, but up, you know, a little Helix Ice 5 or something like that. Having a base map will help you safely navigate. But the thing we really like about this is we've been using the Auto Chart Live. Of course, saving all of our tracks for navigation, but the Auto Chart Live has been great for a few spots that we like. We drive around it, you fish it a couple times, and all of a sudden it's just like having the great Lake Master technology in the boat. These spots show up where the finger is, where the inside corner is, where the top and, and, the, and the drops are on it. So Auto Chart Live paints a really nice map of how the spots lay out, and it's definitely something that's helped us catch more fish on this trip. Yeah. Just when I pulled back on it, it sure seemed. They like to eat when you're throwing the right thing. You don't have all bluebird flat calm days. Just a perfect eating size fish. See, that's what I'm talking about, these Daiwa drags. We got walleye stuff, we got crappie stuff, we got pike stuff. This boat is rigged up about as nice, easy to use, and it flat out works. It's a must have when you're talking about big waves. Well, these trout are so darn tough. This bait is legendary. It's basically everything that we picked up we've had success with, but plastic seemed to be number one, followed by hard baits. Ooh, that's a thick one, Jer. Yes. I was going to say not as big as mine, but I think it is. <laughs> <coughs> nice. That nice is job. outstanding, yeah. Okay, there we go. Came on what is, well, it's definitely my favorite lure of all time for just catching everything. Number 12 X-Trap in this particular case, but the X-Trap catches everything. I'll show you this guy and I'll kind of show you the line and the leader setup we've got. We're doing this. There we go. Another great fish, huh? It's just, these things are one after the other. I mean, it's just, this is the most insane fishing. This is such a cool experience. You can't believe how many Fish like this are up here. It just is mind blowing. All right. So I'm fishing kind of a mix of line. It's all braid. I didn't bring any, any lines up here that weren't spooled with braid. For a lot of the pike fishing, I'm using 40 pound either stuff. It's 131. Some cases I've got 832 and even the uh, the Pro Mix braid on there. But does the job for a lot of things. And then just a little shank of wire to whatever bait that you're fishing is is all you need. This happens to be a single strand titanium, but for doing this uh, pike fishing up north here and also a little lake trout fishing, I, I really like having a bigger reel. So we're using a couple reels, but the one I keep coming back to is this Daiwa Tatula 300. It's a, it's a bigger frame, but it's still low profile. It's got a lot of line capacity, and then it's got the big, with the 110 millimeter paddle handles. And I like the paddles for doing this, especially if you're jerk bait fishing or you're doing a lot of pull pause stuff. Rather than having the big single knob cranking handle, it's just easier to find your center, find where the reel's at. It's got the T-wing system. Check this out, I'll show you. So this aperture opens up, 
and it lets the line move more freely on the cast. Really helps with casting distance, accuracy. It's also nice when you're lake trout fishing when that thing opens up, it lets your jig fall a little faster to some of those some of those deeper lake trout. Of course, it's got a smooth drag, so having a you know a size 300 like this is to me an absolute must Good have one. when you're up here fishing for Ooh. big pike. That was cool. Ate it right by the boat. Oh, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? There we go. Whoa, I haven't got a good look at it yet, but it sure looked nice. Sure looks good. Not a huge one. I thought it was way bigger, but it's very nice. Very nice fish. Oh, and it's kind of amazing how the guides up here, you'll fish a spot and then they'll go right back through it and you'll think, well, we must have caught everything, but there can be so many fish in these spots, it pays to fish them really, really slow. And there's a reason those guys come back through time and time again, because there's just so many fish in spots at times. It's amazing the concentration of big fish. Oh, beautiful, beautiful Jackson. You gonna take off, buddy? Hey, see ya. And one of the things that kind of prompted us to drive over 30 hours in the middle of the wilderness was having the technology to fish in weather like this. And so having a trolling motor up here to me is just, I mean, that's a game changer, right? And if you've got somebody that's operating the boat, they can put you on spots and, and run the big motor. But if you wanna fish and run the boat, having a trolling motor is huge. And the spot lock has just been amazing. We've been able to just pin in a spot here, fan cast and just fish after fish after fish after fish. I mean, it really does change everything when you have technology like this on board. It's amazing. Good job yeah. to you, Jer. Huh? I just feel like the greatest fisherman in the world. It's so easy. So easy. You want to catch big fish, Jeff. I mean, where else can you just come? You can't catch big muskies in any numbers. Okay, okay. baby. Wow, well, they got such cool yellow to them. Oh, that's cool. This is Wants to come in right there. Yes, Woo! yes, 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 yes. Pretty fish, Jer. Congratulations, my man. Mr. Smith. Huh? Oh. If that was a muskie, we'd be happy to catch that baby. We'd huh? be happy to catch that one. <laughs> man, I just absolutely love coming on these trips with you, Jer. Just a, a great opportunity to just tag into some big pike. It's, it's an amazing place. I mean, this is a trip we've been planning for four years. Big shout out to Phil at Lawrence Bay Lodge for letting us make this dream come true. It's been absolutely world class fishing for Northern Pike. And of course, the lake trout action has just been nonstop. Same deal. Love awesome. It. What a love trip, it, Jer. It. Woo. You know, when I do these closes, it's usually about something personal and something that I believe the Lord has done in my life. And, uh, and what I'm going to share with you today, I was really torn. Lord, do I really have to share this? You know, this is really special to me. And uh, I was torn. Yes, no, yes, no. And it's like the Spirit of God said, you need to share it because a lot of people are dealing with issues like this and need to hear this from you. A lot of you know that my wife has dealt with a lot of health issues over the years. Well, she went home to be with Jesus, went to heaven about 11 months ago now. The last six weeks were tough, toughest six weeks of my life. We were at Abbott Heart Hospital in Minneapolis, and she was in the intensive care unit. Over the years, she had three valve replacements. She was diabetic, uh, a lot of other issues. And uh, the heart was wearing out again. We had valve problems. There was a lot of things they couldn't do, you, you know, and uh, she started to get really sick really fast. Like I said, I was down there 24 seven with, with, with her during the COVID crisis. They did let me stay in the hospital from seven in the morning until eight at night with her. And then I had to leave. But it was uh, 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 one day after the other, after the other things, the doctors were trying everything on that you can imagine. And uh, uh, after very near the end of almost like five weeks in there, they wanted to try one more test, and she did not want to do this. She was already on pain pills, 
uh, are sleeping about 22 hours a day, very distant much of the time. And uh, uh, at one point, just days be before she went home, she looked at me matter-of-factly. There was a test that we were supposed to do the next morning. She looked at me and said, Honey, I can't do this no more. I want to go home to be with Jesus. Take me home so I can go home. Take me out of here. I want to go to my house. When she said that to me, what I heard in my heart from the Spirit of God is, Al, it's time. I'm coming to get her and you got to let her go. Al, it's time. I'm coming to get her, and you got to let her go. At that moment, my prayer went from believing for a miracle, which we've seen so many times in her life over the years. It just went like this. Lord, make it quick and easy. It was days later. She was in our home. Here, I was holding her hand on one side. My boys were holding her hand on the other. When her spirit left her body, she went to heaven. The peace that I have after that took a little bit of time. You can imagine what you went through. But I know and I believe in my heart what the Word of God says, that I will see her again. She's in a new body, a healthy body, living a good life, dancing in the streets of gold in heaven. I believe that with all my heart and that I will see her again again. That gives me the peace that surpasses all understanding. And there's a peace that I could deal with any, anything now. Am I still adjusting? Yeah, there's days and things that I adjust to. That's going to go on, on for some time yet. But, but I dealt with it when I seen what had happened. When she was ready, she was ready, everything just flipped over. And God just, it was a beautiful exit from body into the spirit world to heaven. And brings, that brings me peace that surpasses all understanding. Some of you right now are dealing with similar situations like this. I hope this helps you. Hey, from all of us here at The Edge, have a great fishing season. We'll see you on the water. Whoop, there was one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. These guys are just super juiced. I mean, it was right under it. He's still on it. Oh, he no, got he it. There you it. go. He just That's nipped it. That's a big one. <laughs> he just. Smallmouth bass are said to be pound for pound one of the toughest freshwater fish. All the angling edge staff would certainly agree they're one of the funnest game species to catch. Fun day explore, exploring some new water and catching our absolute favorite fish. There we go. Ooh. Interestingly, smallmouth bass can display a wide range of moods throughout the season. At times, microscopic hair jigs are unquestionably one of the best ways to catch them. And at other times, topwater could be king. Oop, look at that, look at that, oh. Spinnerbaits and crankbaits surely have their time seasonally. Finesse swimbaits are another good option just about anywhere brown bass swim in North America. But if you were to ask many professional bass anglers What's your favorite smallie bait? Many would probably say there's something magical about jerk baits. That erratic behavior can drive smallmouths crazy. Let's join Jeremy Smith and Jake Wallace exploring jerk bait strategies for smallmouth bass. What I like about that one is he hit the front hook, huh? Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. Got him. There we go. That's a nice one. That is a nice one. One of those days where it's trolling and then it's casting and just right on that edge of the fish being absolutely crazy and then being finicky. And one of the things with smallmouth bass I've learned over the years, especially with the jerk bait, in particular the X wrap, is that it's not a one size fits all. That you can just go grab the standard size X wrap 10 and just go catch smallmouth bass one after the other 
all the time. I use just about every size for smallmouth. This one happened to come on the six, the size six, the size eight, and then of course you've got the deep models. They can all come into their own this time of year. And when smallmouth are being tough, you can feel them pushing. They're not biting. Definitely downsize in the spring. It makes a big difference. I'm gonna get this guy back. All right, see dude? Feels like a decent one. Oh yeah, Ooh, nice yeah. fish. Hello. Hello, Mr. Brown Bass. God, you gotta love this doing this in the spring. It's just so much fun targeting these smallies. Oh yeah, nice fish. Because they can find them, they're pretty, once you find get. them, they can be pretty grouped up. You can really get on some awesome bites. Oh, look at that, got that hothead x wrap T-boned. Oh, little football. Oh yeah, they're chunky. They're not long, but they're fat. On the x wrap so we'll get them unhooked and fire them back. Unbutton there. There he goes. There he is, got nice. him. Sweet, Jake. There we go. Big boulder. There's a customer there. Ooh, yes, there sir. You go. Sweet. That's the thing with these X traps. It's nice. I got hit twice before this, so I was just popping it. I gave it a little jerk, and he came back, and this time I got him. Oh, yeah, nice fish. They really like this hothead too. They like bright colors for whatever reason. And oh, nice big smallie. Let's see if we can't get him here. He's got that last feathered treble right in his mouth. Oh, easy buddy. There we go. Oh, it's a beautiful fish, Jake. Real nice fish. And yeah, you could feel him. He bumped it forward. And I just jerked it and then just let it sit there and pause. And he came and ended up taking her. Man, they're super healthy. They are. This segment is brought to you by Sunset Country, Ontario, Canada. You got to come visit. And again, it's like, man, oh man, if you've watched our show before, you've probably seen a show or two in the spring with Al or somebody from the crew out throwing X wraps for smallmouth bass. And there's a reason that we end up doing it every, every single year. And it's that it really is the most productive tool that I know for catching these things. It is absolutely magical and it's not just a casting bait. When we started out today, we were trolling the bait. The bait can be fished deep, but I'm going to lay out a few of the X wraps that I carry on the boat to share with you why I have these, a good selection for anybody who likes fishing for smallmouth in the spring and really all around for that matter. Let's get this one back. For me, the go-to size X wrap in the spring is the size 10 and really the size 10 all around for most, you know, most smallmouth fishing throughout the year. It's a great size. It gets down in that, say, three to five foot depth range on a cast. And the key to an x wrap is that it suspends. It sits perfectly still in the water. You can snap the rod, throw slack back to the bait, and it jumps, boom, boom, boom. And it sits there, it just sits perfectly still. And that is really the magic to this bait. Now, if you run into a situation which happens all the time in the spring, where you're feeling fish push the bait, or you've cast at a spot where you're like, man, I know there is a pile of fish there and they're not responding to it. Smallmouth are absolutely suckers for downsizing baits. I'm telling you what, you take a size 10, throw it through there, get nothing, come back with a size eight or a size six even, and you just make it a little bit smaller, it can absolutely turn things around instantly. I can't tell you how many bites that I've been on when I've been fishing good spots, I'm throwing a tent through there, I get absolutely nothing, come back and just a slight downsize. So I make sure to have a, the size six, the size eight, and the size 10 on board. And then lastly, a bait that's overlooked, I don't see a lot of guys use, and this is a really, really critical tool to have in the boat in cold water. When the water's in the 40s and just kind of breaking into that 50 degree range, is the x wrap deep i carry both the 10 and the 8 that meaning that the 10 is the size of the body 
and then the eight, of course, is just slightly smaller. And you see both of these have a larger bill than the original X-Wrap. And if I'm trolling these, we can get these things down, you know, in that eight, nine, eight, nine foot range. So fishing over 12 foot, 14 foot rocks is a, is a great deal. It's hard to get it that deep on the cast, but jerk trolling is an absolutely dynamite method. And if we're fishing the six, eight foot roll, and we still can't get the fish to come up, even on the smaller baits, try using the deep version. You can still get it to dance, get it to hunt, get it to sit in place, but you'll end up catching a lot of fish in the cold water on the deep model as well. So make sure you've got all of those on board. And I'm telling you what, it might seem like, oh yeah, buy all these lures, because you should have everything. But the X-Wrap is hands down my favorite fishing lure that I've ever used. It catches so many smallmouth bass and multi-species as well. And I just saw Jake in the back of the boat missed one on the X-Wrap. Got him. There we go. Ooh, that feels like a nice one. Look at that. Boom, that's just the funnest bite ever. Jerk, 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 boom. That was pretty cool. I'm using a whole suite of technologies. They like to eat when you're throwing the right thing. You don't have all bluebird flat calm days. Just a perfect eating size fish. See, that's what I'm talking about, these Daiwa drags. We got walleye stuff, we got crappie stuff, we got pike stuff. This boat is rigged up about as nice, easy to use, and it flat out works. It's a must have when you're talking about big waves. Well, these trout are so darn tough. This bait is legendary. If you do have some technology in the boat, one of the most important pieces of it is definitely side imaging. I just love this technology for showing you where different transition lines are, where the rocks are. It is really a helpful tool. Now, I've fished this area all my life, and it wasn't until a couple years ago I came through this zone and found this little spot, and boom, it paid off. All right, let me get this guy back. See you, sweetie. Beautiful, beautiful brownie. Okay, so we were talking about technology, and we are fortunate enough to have all of the sonar technology available in this boat, but one of the most important tools that I've found for fishing smallmouth bass in the spring is side imaging. It's an amazing tool to see how a lot of these flats are laid out. And that's where you find smallmouth in the spring is primarily on flats. And they're near some of the best rock or bigger size boulders that you can find on those flats. If you're driving around with 2D sonar, a lot of times your cone may miss where the biggest boulders are. They might not show up that great on your 2D, but in side imaging, it just paints a beautiful picture of how that habitat is laid out. And if you've got that, you can narrow down the spots that are holding smallmouth much, much more quick, quickly. Oh, got him. Yes. Keep looking at that stuff going, it's gotta be good, it's gotta be good. Oh, he's a leaper! Right on the bubble of things beginning to happen here in the spring in the North Country. Look at how fat they are. I can see why people say toad. Look at his belly, I mean, look at that thing. It does look like one of those toads that's out in your, out in your yard. It's a fat, fat tank, tank, tank. What I like about that one is he hit the front hook, huh? That's a good, good sign. I'm gonna show you the rod and reel that I'm using to catch these guys. Let me get this guy back. Woo, loving it. Now for throwing these X-Raps, we're primarily using spinning equipment. For jerkbait fishing, for most bass guys, they think, man, that's crazy to be using spinning gear. The reason I like using with these X-Raps, especially for smallmouth, this is smallmouth specific, is with this, rod, reel, line combo that I've got can make the X-Wrap really dance and dart. And the more erratic the bait is, and the, the more curious the smallmouth are, it seems like the more likely they are to bite. Sometimes fishing fluorocarbon on a bait caster where the bait's a little more dampened can be the ticket, but day in, day out, braided line makes the X-Wrap jump way more erratic, seems to put more smallmouth bass in the boat. So what I'm using is St. Croix's new, they've redesigned the Legend Tournament. It's absolutely amazing. If you've fished any of St. Croix stuff in the Legend family, you know that it's absolutely marvelous. And my favorite series forever had been the Legend Elite series. It's of course their, one of their top end rods. But this Legend Tournament now, to me, the material they've made it out of feels exactly like you're fishing with the Legend Elite. And of course, for a lot less price. Now this is the six foot 
eight inch medium power extra fast action. I like that 6.8 because I've got my rod low to the water most of the time jerking, snapping and parting that action and then the extra fast, meaning where this rod is bending on the blank, see how close that is to the tip, the flex right at the tip, that's what's making the bait jump. So the rod is huge, huge, huge for making this system work. The reel I've got on here is a really sweet setup from Daiwa. It's their Ballistic MQ. Last year they introduced their Kage reel with the MQ frame and now it's down into Ballistic. And what it is, it's the frame is a, is a single piece. It's a Zion, Zion B material. So it's a super rigid carbon material that's light. But look at, see this big circle here? That's where they can fit the drive gear into the frame without having to screw it in. So it gives you a bigger drive gear. And the way they cut that, the gears are in contact more so than just with a circle gear where there's one point of contact. There's multiple points of contact inside that reel. So this is absolutely the smoothest. I mean, it's just, it's an amazing, amazing reel. And I'm fishing it on a 3000 size. And I like that 3000 because you can pick up line really quickly with this jerkbait fishing and that's a big deal. So that was on a number eight shad wrap. Your style of boat control is really key. One that was there from the very beginning. You want to be able to see in the water. The adventure begins. We are loaded for bear. We got you know, bites. there's so many different ways to fish for water. Dependability and efficiency. Simple, fast, and easy. The best rides on a planet. There we go. Nice. Oh, that feels good. Oh, that feels good. It feels good. And it's a leaper. It's a little guy. It's a leaper. It's just such an effective tool, this jerkbait is, for finding where, where bass are. And one thing I'll just say quickly about fishing a jerkbait I really prefer fishing with a, a little bit heavier leader than, than you might think. I'm actually fishing with 12 or 14 pound little guy leader most of the time for my jerk baits. And the reason I like that is that it tends not to foul the bait as much. The stiffness of that keeps everything in line so I'm not getting the line in the split rings. It's just a really great way to do it. And then I attach it with a little knot here. This is called an Albright knot. It's a modified Albright knot, but just a great thing that goes through the guides and a little stiffer lead like that. Makes the bait dance well and it doesn't foul as much. Got one, Jake. I think it's a munchkin, but it's really fun. It's really, really, really cool. Oh, he popped off quite enjoyable. He wasn't very big, but a little action. Just really can test your patience at times with this cold water stuff. You can fish a lot of spots, cold water, spring and fall. A lot of times fish are just concentrated. They're small areas that have a lot of fish. So you can get down, all of a sudden you fish two, three spots, you don't have a bite. You start thinking, is it my presentation? Is it this and that? Well, if you're fishing smallmouth, you can kind of rule presentation out when the water's cold. I mean, they love a suspending jerkbait. If they're around, they're curious by nature, they bite that thing, they follow it, you can, you can see them. So you just gotta keep your confidence high and keep fishing different areas, different depths, different parts of the lake, watch the water temperature, and eventually you'll land on, on fish and can start putting some numbers and size in the boat. Sweet, Jake. There we go. On, baby. Oh, oh, it's a nice big one, too. Nice one. It's got some fight, water's warmed up a bit, and. <laughs> Boy, it just came up and smoked it. It did, huh? Yeah, it was, it was cool. I actually saw my line jump there. That's one thing that's uh, really key to this whole setup is this high-vis line. We're using suffix 10-pound, and I was able to see that thing strike, and <laughs> boy, she's feisty. <laughs> just, that one ate. Yep, no question. Jeez. Let's get her in. Head first. Hello. Oh, there we go. It's a football right there. Oh, and it's a, oh, I lost mine. It was almost a double. Get her unhooked here. That you think they like the X-Wrap? <laughs> Gonna need the bubble pliers for this one, Jer. 
let me tell you. Springtime is a great time to be targeting smallies. Get yourself a couple of these, a couple X wraps, different sizes, and you'll have a blast. Look at that fish. Been a great day here on the water. We'll fire back and just can't beat it. You know, every year I accumulate some emails that I keep on file that I think would be really, really good to do a close like this on. Well, I'm gonna read you one that I just got a few days ago, actually, not that many days ago. And I tried to reach back to the gentleman uh, four different times. And uh, you'll know why he didn't respond immediately. Ironically, he sent me an email back this morning, and I couldn't believe it when I seen it. I'm gonna converse with him. We're gonna have a phone conversation here next couple of days after four o'clock. You'll, you'll know more after I read this to you. I've watched your show since I was a kid, having grown up with a religious faith shoved down my throat, I became agnostic but I always listen to the prayer and your thoughts at the end of the show. I've heard your testimony about your wife's health issues and how God in prayer got you through. My wife, only 46 years old, is suffering from liver and kidney failure. She's very sick and on dialysis. She's been in the hospital for two months now. I also have three children at home and we are all taking this very hard. I began to pray. I haven't done that since high school. I'm a realist, my wife may never come home. At the same time, I feel she needs more than doctors and hospitals. My question is how is your faith so strong? I'm falling apart, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and financially. I guess I'm looking for answers and I'm very afraid. I feel I need to get close to God but I also have anger towards everyone. I'm on the fence. I want to believe a miracle will happen, but I'm so negative about her condition. So I'm crying out to you to, as a man of deep conviction. This is why I'm reaching out. I don't trust those preachers or priests. I'm asking for some advice and prayers. Am I praying right? Is God real? Does he hear me? I'm so depressed and my head is spinning. I'm a hypocrite for turning to God when things are bad, turning my back on him when things are good. If this message gets to you, please pray for us. I know you can relate. This is the hardest thing I've ever done. Anything will help. Tight lines. Think you had a tough week? <laughs> How about a tough couple of weeks? Those are kind of stories that really touch your heart, but they're happening to people all over the world on a daily basis. I haven't had an opportunity to talk with him yet. We, we just touched base finally this morning before I'm doing this close. And uh, uh, I'm thinking, what can I share with them? All I can do is share from my heart, and we have a lot in common in what he has here. What he said here, I got a lot in common with the whole thing. I can share with him from my personal experience with my wife, business, life in general, you know, the ups and downs, the challenges that we all face. Encourage him, don't run from God, run to God, come to him. And I could see the way he's searching right now, the spirit of God is talking to him. He's looking, am I praying right? I wanna know, please tell me something. God's gonna answer that cry out. He's gonna answer that. I don't know what part I'm gonna play in this, but I'm gonna know, I know for sure that I'm gonna be a nucleus of making this happen. I can't wait to talk to him. This might be an ongoing conversation for months ahead to help walk him through this. But I know that the Spirit of God is knocking on his door right now because he does love him, he does care about him and his entire family tough days. You think you had a tough week, like I said? There's people that are dealing with stuff that you can't even imagine, and this is a pretty good example of it. Hey, pray for me. Say a prayer for me that I help this guy through this. 
Hey, from all of us here at The Edge, you have a good, safe fishing season. We'll see you in the water. Seasonally throughout North America, you can find a lot of hot bites for many fish species. Spring is always a prime time window because you have a lot of fish concentrated in the shallows. Directly prior to the spawn, most fish tend to feed very heavily. Summer Peak is another one of these hot bite windows as fish set up on classic main lake summer patterns. The fall cold water period after the lakes turn over is one more prime time opportunity for bass, walleye, crappie, catfish, and muskie. Today we're heading to Lake Vermilion to join Jeremy Smith and Lake Vermilion guide Luke Ronestrand, sharing an interesting cold water pattern for whopper walleyes. Lake Vermilion in the fall is an awesome place to be. It's fishing is so good that we're staying till the middle of the night to catch them. You don't have to stay out after dark, but if you want to get on a hot walleye bite, man, this is something really, really special. Oh, Thank you for this. It's so cool. Look at that. Oh, huge walleye. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. They're right, they're right in that, right in front of those weeds, basically. You can see there's one there, one there. Boom, boom. You see that one? I missed it. Oh, God! Oh! That was awesome, Luke. Uh, there we go. I don't know that it, it's probably a musky, Luke, but it's not very big. We were just talking. No, it's, no, it's walleye. All excited. You get a jerkbait hook sideways on a fish and it feels like you got a whopper, but it's a good, no. Look at that. Poor dude. You're, you're right, like, look at that. 10 inch bait, nice fat walleye. We're up on Vermilion in the fall here, Luke and I. And this is a great time of year when there's a big push of fish shallow. So it's kind of getting to be that mid-October time frame and bingo, right away in the morning, nice walleye. And tonight after dark, the mission will continue for a whole pile of these. I've never even got one. This okay. fish. It's boiling out there. Way to go, dude. It was just a very light eat. Oh, no, don't get off. Where the, that's a little ski. Sweet. Ooh. Pretty one. Sure is. Look at the color on that one, Luke. <laughs> Holy cow. Bright future for that muskie. <laughs> All There's right. quite quite a few that size in here. That's pretty cool what you're telling me about some of the numbers they're putting in here and it's got a bright future like you said. That's a part of our second, I would call it our second phase of management up here. Nice little fish. This is uh had a lot of fish this size and a little bit bigger this season and so when did they put those fish in here, Luke? What would so, you... it's hard. This one is hard to say how old it is, but they, it really started in 2000, I want to say 17. Whoa. Yeah, so starting in like 2017, they started stocking this lake pretty heavily again, and those fish have really showed up. Uh, we catch a lot of fish that size, and lake's got a bright future. I mean, they're healthy, strong, beautiful little fish, and uh, Hopefully we're going to find uh, one quite a bit bigger than that today. You are beautiful. See ya. Got one on. Nice one. Uh, nice. Yeah, we found them. Um, this thing's just going mental. Oh, double. Oh, oh we got it's double. almost a double. This segment is brought to you by BoatToTrailer.com automatic boat loading and boat launching system. Let's see if I can work them and talk them into it. Oh, this rod is fun to catch this thing on. Does it feel like a pretty nice one, Luke? I think so. Well, we are on a little mission here to catch some walleyes after dark. Luke and I just can't get enough fishing. 
So we decided to fish all day and then fish all night, yeah. right? Mus musky fish all day and then... <laughs> well, I fish at night. I just dumped one and then I dumped another one and Luke got one, so that's pretty awesome. Oh, this is feeling pretty nice. Staying down. That's a good thing. Oh, yeah. The nice thing about musky fishing all day and then walleye fishing at night is you get tons and tons and tons of stuff in the boat. Ooh, that's a nice one, Luke. It's a great fish. Sweet. Wow, that's an awesome fish, man. All right, I'm gonna flop him across the other side of the boat so we can deal with them over here. All right. Oh, that's a good fish. Great fish. All right, let's see what we got here. What's that rod I'm using called? Like you the bounce and troll, yeah. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, it's a, well, it's what it's made. We're trolling, huh? Nice, let's see that sucker, Luke. Easy. That is a great fish, man. Yeah, that one's just uh, starting to put a little weight on, just like getting in these areas and starting to feed on these perch. Yeah, that's a pretty fish. Yeah, it's pretty cool at this fall, fall trolling deal. I mean, these fish just show up in the evening in this you know, we're kind of just fishing like a little muddy neck down area basically, right? Yeah, current and bugs and perch. Boom. And throw walleye. This, <laughs> right? We'll throw the sky back. Yeah. Sweet. Nice. There's one. Ooh, that feels good. Nice. That thing smashed it, Luke. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> it feels like a nice one too. I just put it in neutral here sweet nice this feels good you know cold water and crankbaits are kind of the they just go hand in hand whether you're smallmouth bass fishing in the spring throwing jerk baits or your cold water musky or walleye fishing it just totally is the deal and especially trolling in cold water i mean it's not super cold yet but it's in the 50s and we haven't been at this long and we've got a number of bites what you got and here? I think I got a pretty decent one. Ooh, he's staying down. Haven't seen him yet. Let's see if I can keep him hooked up. Ooh, Ooh that's a good that's one. That's a nice one. Sweet. <laughs> Big yep. That's pretty cool. Look at that. If you can go out and just catch fish of that size after dark, that's pretty sweet. I mean, those are nice. This is like our average so far, Luke. Yeah. That's fantastic, man. Just outstanding, beautiful fish. I'm gonna get this one back and we're gonna keep going. We were just having a conversation about how much you can learn now with the technology we have in the boat with down imaging, side imaging, live imaging. Of course, 2D sonar and then the mapping here is spectacular. So we're just in a neck down area. It's kind of weedy, muddy. It's a spot for perch. Obviously there's a lot of bugs here, but we're seeing like these divots and just different features and what would you know, before it'd be like a you know seemingly nothingness flat, but now with this technology, you see these subtle differences, and boom, that's where the fish are. You know, yeah, we're just we're we're putting a waypoint down on the kind of these interesting features, and it's like that is where the fish are. There's a whole big area with nothing, and then just these divots and clumps of grass, and that's where these walleyes are. It's super cool. It's it's really fun to just you know. That's what's so great about fishing is you're always learning something. It's, it's just so so darn cool. And right now we're on the zone, so let's take ourselves off the spot lock. Now this is kind of cool. This features we're talking about, like right now, like we have the depth highlight set so that you can see this contour here at about 13, 14 feet. And look at we're catching these fish right in between, basically two points. I mean that's pretty cool. Before having this mapping technology, this would all seem like a 10 to 15 foot mud flat with basically no features, but there are indeed features here and there are fish here. This is kind of a, a crazy deal. And when I talked to Luke about coming up here and, and doing this night walleye trolling thing, he was really specific about color. It was perch colored baits and like uh, that olive ghost color and the glass shad wrap. And you wouldn't think at night that it could make any difference in the world, but the fish are in here eating perch and those walleyes are just so keen. It's a, just a couple days past full moon right now and they, obviously there's enough light that color can actually make a difference even when it's pitch black out. That, that's one of those things that just blew my mind. So a lot of people might look at that bait and say, geez, that's, that's a big lure for fishing walleyes. But I mean, you look at the size of these fish, 
and the size of the perch are in here, and that's what they're eating. I might have to switch to a BX swimmer or something bigger because there's big fish swimming down there. Yeah, that is, it's the perfect profile. Yeah, yeah. And those baits are really cool. They actually, I mean, it's got a smaller lip, but when you're trolling it, it still gets down six or eight feet and it's got a really cool, uh, like really cool vibration to it, but it's also got a really awesome flash and shimmy to it. It's a great, I mean, that's definitely a great trolling bait. And I think a lot of walleye anglers overlook that one for sure. Yeah, these things are great. Catch fish everywhere. Today we're on picturesque Lake Vermilion, situated in Northeast Minnesota. Vermilion is a sprawling 40,000 plus acre body of water with more than 290 miles of shoreline and 365 islands. It's Canadian shield water right here in Minnesota. The amount of fishy habitat in this lake is staggering, and what's even more impressive is the quality of the fishery. Lake Vermilion is often referred to as a mini lake of the woods, and often the fishing is just like Canada. There are a number of great places to stay on the lake to fit whatever style of vacation you have in mind, as well as the convenience of places to eat on the lake and fuel. Usually around the beginning of September, our water cools below 70 degrees, and we start to see a couple of uh, really cool forge migrations to the shallows here. We get, uh, we get a lot of perch to start pushing into the shallow muddy basins, and then we actually get some tulipy and uh, some whitefish migrations. That's kind of start, the fish start moving into these, these shallower, muddy areas. And I don't know what they're eating, if they're eating some kind of a bug, or what do you think? My thoughts would be, I mean, it's got to be minnows. I mean, I would think it's minnows, and you know, a lot of the the life, the bug life happens at night. So I'm sure it is definitely related to bugs. But you know, some of the forage is coming in here after dark, and then of course the big fish are coming in to to chase them. There's one. Oh, 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 sweet. They like to eat when you're throwing the right thing. You don't have all bluebird flat calm days. Just a perfect eating size fish. See, that's what I'm talking about, these Daiwa drags. We got walleye stuff, we got crappie stuff, we got pike stuff. This boat is rigged up about as nice, easy to use, and it flat out works. It's a must have when you're talking about big waves. Well, these trout are so darn tough. This bait is legendary. Just switched it up. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's on the floater, instantly on the floater, and it feels like a big one. It's pretty cool how the boat control is working for this situation. I love this boat. So I run the 1875 Pro Guide, and I just think it's, it's such an awesome boat for boat control. And typically when I'm trolling, that's why I love the boat so much, is I'm running the tiller. But because of the light conditions we're faced with right now, it's been really nice for running the trolling motor. So I'm using this little micro remote that's attached to my hip here, and I can just set it on autopilot, set the cruise control, and I'm going at the very specific speed we need to go, whether we're going with the wind or against the wind, and I'm always going 1.8 is the magic number right now to catch these fish. And, and when it's on autopilot, I've got this, the line is set up to show me exactly where my course heading is, so I can predict where, you know, where the, the boat's gonna end up and we're gonna be on the fish. So it's really a dynamite system for, for doing this program here. And this is what I love about fall fishing, big baits. I was fishing a smaller bait and Luke was just kicking my butt. I went to the biggest original floater, the 18 floater, and that took, I don't know, Luke, did that take 45 seconds? No, it wasn't very, oh, look at that fish. Another nice one, japers, crapers. This is insane. This is crazy. This is like going to the Great Lakes. We're just creaming monster walleyes as fast as we can. Look at that, huh? That one is, that is just a pig. That thing is eating well. It is awesome, man. It's crazy. Walleyes will really go for big baits. I mean, that's one thing I think a lot of walleye anglers miss out on. Luke and I are fishing, bait casting, and spinning, but one thing we've got in common with these two rods is they both got a lot of flex through the midsection to hold on to these fish with the with the crankbaits. That's a, that's a big deal. You don't want to really stiff rod with a super fast tip or you're gonna end up tearing a lot of hooks off of the off of the fish and you've got the balance control rod and I'm just fishing basically the rod that you use for slip bobber fishing on this on the spinning side this is a slip and rig type of rod so both of them have enough tip action where you can see the bait moving but then they flex through the midsection to hold on to the fish 
And you look like you've got a good fish. Yeah, this one's this rod is really fun to catch them with. So that was on a number eight shad wrap. Your style of boat control is really key. One that was there from the very beginning. You want to be able to see in the water. The adventure begins. We are loaded for bear. We got you know, twice. there's so many different ways to fish for water. Dependability and efficiency. Simple, fast, and easy. The best rides on a planet. Oh, it is another big one. Oh, okay. All right. Wow, wow, wow. That is just unbelievable, Luke. I mean, it is. This is a big fish hammer fest. I mean, it is, dude, so cool. Now that one came on the BX Swimmer, but we've caught him on the Shadow Wrap, the Glass Shad Wrap's a good bait. The, um, we've been catching him on the big original floater, but there's a, really a selection of crankbaits that you should have on board for fall trolling. So here's what we like to have in the boat for doing a program like this, to catch fish like that. <laughs> Thank you, man, this is awesome, awesome, awesome. What fish prefer on any given evening can certainly change. You don't need a ton of crankbaits for this, but it's good to have a variety with different sizes, running depths, and actions. There's a lot of walleyes this size in the lake right now. On this run, the BX Swimmer was hands down the number one bait. It's an overlooked walleye lure and runs mid-column on the 10 to 14 foot flat we were fishing. The other crank we did really well on was the original Rapala floater. This is the most classic night trolling bait in my opinion. The floater only gets down a few feet and the walleyes were hot and had no trouble coming up for it. The fish seemed to prefer the bigger baits so we were trolling with the number 18. It might seem big but we were getting more action and bigger fish on bigger baits. They're not always biting big baits so it's worth having some 11s and 13s in the boat as well. If walleyes are stuck to the bottom, shad wraps and glass shad wraps are dynamite. Often the rattle of the glass shad wrap can get a lot of attention. Tonight, shad wraps were fishing below the fish. A few others I always have along are deep shadow wraps, husky jerks, X wraps, and even some ripping wraps. The big deal is finding what depth the fish want the baits and the speed they prefer. Super nice fish. From there, you'll often find subtle differences in a hot bait on any particular night. It's pretty cool how savage walleyes oh, there are. You go. Good one. one. Good one. Ooh. <laughs> that thing just wrecked it. And it really is. It's so <laughs> awesome. Way to go, Luke. I right. felt like these BX swimmers, they, they definitely get big bites. I do love catching fish with these little Daiwa Alexa line counters. This thing is, it's got some good head shakes. They're fantastic. I mean, trolling, it's so much about replication. Right now I'm using a spinning rod and just kind of trying to match my casts every time, but you've got it dialed in to you go this far back. We're using, on there, there's a 10 pound suffix 832 and then a 10 pound suffix Invisalign leader. And it's like, Luke's got it just dialed where he's, we're 65 feet back, big swimmer, bam, bam, bam. So wasn't I telling you earlier today about how these walleyes can just fight? Yeah, like they're these, these are some of the better tough. fighting walleyes. Oh man, oh wow man, that's a great fish, Luke. That is a great fish. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> yes. Big one. Yes. Oh so, <laughs> man. Look at this Jeez. Oh Jesus. Oh, it's big. That is big. It's big, big. Oh, congratulations, I, man. Thanks, dude, that is... Fall is trophy time, and Lake Vermilion is a place to catch trophy. Dude, that is a really it big is. walleye. Wow. That is a tank. Wow, wow, wow. Hey, hey. <laughs> Lake Vermilion in the fall is an awesome place to be. It's Fishing is so good that we're staying until the middle of the night to catch them. You don't have to stay out after dark, but if you want to get on a hot walleye bite, man, this is something really really special oh, thank you for this it's so cool look at that oh huge walleye oh look at the choppers on him
One of my favorite ministries that my wife and I have supported for years is In Touch Ministry, and uh, uh, it's headed up by Charles Stanley. Uh, ever since I became turned on to the things of God at 37 years old and a light bulb went out big time, uh, I started following his stuff along with a number of other uh, uh, ministry work that really touches, it touches my heart. And this is just one of the daily devotion. I just want to read this to you. It's uplifting, a good thing. He titled it Wonderfully Made. Have you ever considered that fingerprints are an amazing example of how much God cares for us? Each of us is born with a certain arrangement of arches, loops, and whirls on our hands, and they don't change as we grow or age. They are also exclusive. Think about that for a moment. Out of, out of the roughly 8 billion people on Earth, no two of us have the same fingerprint. We've each been uniquely created by God. What's more, he has a singular plan for every life. There's no such thing as a non-valuable person in God's eyes. He loves every single one of us equally and is personally involved in seeing his plans for our lives come to fulfillment. In fact, it brings him joy to do so. So instead of comparing yourself to others or feeling inconsequential, look at the intricacy of your fingerprints and remember, you are a one of a kind and well loved by the creator God who brought you into being. Then he has a little caption, he says, think about it. Have you recently spent time considering what God has planned for your life? Sit down with him in prayer and ask for guidance and clarification to get on a right track. And there, God is a loving, caring uh, God that has something for every one of us. If you're going through a hard time right now, my gosh, look in the mirror and know that God loves you. He created you for a special, unique person. You are a one of a kind with God-given talents that you have that nobody else has to speak to somebody of the things that he has done in your life to share with somebody else. Nobody else could do that but you. Just think about that in the next week or so. Hey, hey, from all of us here at the edge of a good safe fishing season, we'll see you on the water. A big part of the angling puzzle is balancing your tackle for the technique you happen to be fishing. In most angling situations, the right rod, reel, and line are all important facets for any presentation tactic. The length, power, and action of a rod determine casting distance, accuracy, imparting lure action, hook set power, and ultimately the ability to land the target species once hooked. The reel is also a critical for casting distance and accuracy, but there's also varied gear ratios and drag settings that determine the speed of the retrieve, line pickup, and your ability to keep the line tight during testy battles. The line is the last critical connection point between the rod, reel, and lure. Today, lines come in a wide variety of materials. You have braids, fluorocarbon, monofilament, and each has specific properties that can be key for individual presentations. Today on the Angling Edge, we're going frog fishing for bass, where being geared up correctly is critical for success. This kind of fishing it, it can get addictive. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves. Adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. Got him. Got him that time. Yeah. Better one? Oh, there you go. Yeah. Wasn't too bad. We're missing a few. No. A good one. It's amazing how many different places over the years people have learned to take the frog and adapt it to open or sparser water conditions. Even open water over, over a variety. You know, initially everybody's thinking cover, cover, cover. Yeah, yeah, you know, and obviously it works in heavy cover. But more and more anglers are taking this style of bait and adding it 
to a, a buzz bait, a jump bait, a walking bait, a prop bait. And there's times it's a little different, a little more subtle, uh, a different kind of bite over the flats. Uh, uh, it's adaptable to many different conditions, even some smallmouth in some environments. So the frog that was initially designed to be fished in shallow water, heavy cover, like always has grown into other situations like good baits always do. You know, one thing you lo look at what a frog does is actually, I think it's a lot to do with the speed, relative speed of the bait. It's slower than a lot of those alternate presentations. So it sits in their strike zone for a longer period of time, you know, especially particularly like we're fishing over like just shallow flats right now. But you know, if the fish are a little bit more inactive, you know, it has a little if it just sits above them for a, a period of time, a lot of times that's all it's necessary to, to trigger them into biting. And if you're moving those faster moving baits, like a buzz bait or a spinner bait over that scene, you know, throughout that same water, it's just moving, simply moving too fast based on the attitude of the fish. Got there it, he is. good one. Good one. Yeah. Oh, good one, good one. I love, I love, I got into, to, to, Frog and docks, <laughs> you know, and I love it. I, love, I don't say, it seems like it's get her, getting the attention of bigger fish, <laughs> like this one. Get her jump. Oh, like this one. Boy, they really lunch it. Boy, they really lunch oh. it when you, when yeah, you look get at one. This. Here's a player here if look you, at you that. need uh, <laughs> that guy. He really. I will. love it. I love it. You know, you know, you sit and think. When you look at, let me get her off here a minute. She's hooked, she's hooked really good. Can color <clears throat> of a frog make that much difference to these bass? <laughs> well, like color does in many situations, the answer to that is absolutely yes. This is somebody's, just look at this new color. This is one of my favorite colors of the new Terminator. This is the popping frog. They added a bunch of new colors to the walking and popping frog, and man, they are magnificent. You know, you know, we talked to some of the pro staffers that have used this rappel of pro staffers like Seth Vider and and At the Foe, and I said, I talked, what, what do you think about these colors? And they said we're fishing more times in open water now in different kinds of cover, not all slap. And what we're seeing is color really makes a difference, truly makes a difference. And you see lakes that have color preferences to them. So, yeah, yeah, you know, the, the thought that, well, in heavy cover, you know, does it make a difference? Well, in heavy cover, probably not. But when you're fishing cover like this, there is no question you need a variety of them and find what is favorable, you know, in your favorite body of water. You see color preferences in different baits on different lakes all the time. This segment is brought to you by Sunset Country, Ontario, Canada. You gotta come visit. Oh, oh there's a good one. Oh. oh. But he was way up in there, Sal. Oop, spot lock here temporarily. One thing. I mean, that guy was like way up in there. You can see this wild rice up in here. And that fish was sitting right up inside that stuff. That's a good one there. Well, she really lunched it. Come here, buddy. That's a good one. Boy, she really crunched it. You know, I've actually got uh, two f different frogs rigged. I got a popping frog, and then I actually have the walking frog. And for this really dense, uh, where you got that really super dense cover up on top, you know, the walking frog is really, really hard to beat. Uh, just because of its, you know, that thin pointy nose design, you can actually go through even immersion cover where you got this rice up in here. This will walk right through there with that pointy nose. But in more of the uh, open water stuff and where we just have patchy uh, clumps of pads and isolated cover, uh, isolated weed clumps, I'm throwing the, uh, the popping frog. 
you know, because you can actually make a little bit more noise with it. You can actually, you know, position it directly around a specific piece of cover and make a little bit noise so you have the ability to call fish out of a, a little bit uh, denser cover, you know, if they're ho holding down in it. But both of them are really good baits. Boy, I've caught a lot of fish in both of them. I really like this popping frog in particular. The reason it's got a little bit of a more of a narrower, straight body bait, and it seems like it's a really uh, tremendous hooking bait. There's no question that frog, and uh, you miss a lot of fish. There's no question about it. But of the frog family, this terminator walking and popping frog, they're two, the two of the best frog baits as far as hooking fish that I've ever fished. And I fished all of them. Been doing this since ever since I moved to Minnesota 50 something years ago, fishing these kind of lakes like it started with the Bill Plummer frog. <laughs> and then we, there's so many generations of frogs to what we got today, it's amazing. And every once in a while, you see somebody tweak something a little bit different, like the hooks, how the hook lay, lays on the body, uh, a little improvement in the hook so the hook doesn't, yeah, you know, go and hook back up. They get just the right gap, just the gap, gap so the hookup ratio is really good. So they keep tweak, tweaking what is a phenomenal bait and making it just a little bit better. You know, we're fishing just, you know, shallow water shoreline habitat and some do series of docks. And we decided to fish that because the sun was still up. It's supposed to get a little cloudy and overcast where I think the, uh, the pads and that heavier, denser cover, the fish are gonna get a little bit more active in there. That's one thing when you're fishing these baits, it's, it's intriguing to me because how many times you can get in the shallow water, and I've seen it time and time fishing tournaments and stuff, and you'll have a whole bunch of fish that you found in practice up in these shallow water slob beds. And you come back there in the morning, and the fish are inactive. You look in the water, there's absolutely not a fish in the water. By afternoon, when the sun comes up, it gets a little cloudy and overcast, you get that humidity in there, all of a sudden the fish are just blowing up on bait. So the timing, is a big thing about frog fishing. It, it really, it really is to me. Oh, wow, that was a good one right there. That was a good one right there. I didn't hook him. Oh. <laughs> there he is, ooh. Mm. Oh, there I got that little buster crab tree, or did I? Oh, I thought he was bigger than that. I didn't know Look it was the that. same fish. What? The way he hit it, I thought it was a big, big one. He brought it back his home. home. But you can see, it's a real chomperino. Come on, buddy. Oh, there's another one, wow. Okay. You want me to motor you down there and come back? Yeah. What we're gonna do, do you know what? Actually, the wind is blowing into this and right now I'm sort of fishing really kitty wampus. I'm fishing against it, sort of crossing the, not only the pads, but the wind. And what we're gonna do is drive downstream. And then what I can use is my talons to pin myself down. And then we're gonna cast with the wind directly out at our back. It'll make this type of fishing a lot easier. It definitely, you're go fishing with the wind because that, then you're actually fishing with the grain of the cover because the wind has a tendency to line it up with the wind direction, you know, the pockets and the holes. It's sort of shifting around based on the wind direction. What we've done is spun around, and this is what, what I mean by this. When anytime you're fishing really heavy cover, most of the time you, you don't want the boat to be moving too fast. When the boat is moving, what is happening, you're, you're losing connection with the line, the line is draping and catching on the cover. So what you, if, if possible, a lot of times you want to be fishing from a, the boat from a fixed position, and that's where talons, like I have in the back of the boat, are really a cool tool for this type of fishing like really super invaluable. You sit there and we'll pin on a spot, then I'm gonna move down, pin on a spot, fan cast, pin on a spot, fan cast. And you'll see what I mean. We'll be a lot more efficient on our casts and you'll be a lot more tuned on the bites. The reason you see a lot of, a lot of bass fishermen have two talons on here like this is it locks the boat in one position. If you only got one, you kind of roll with the wind a little bit. It, it locks you solid in one place. So you're, especially when you're dealing with precise presentation methods. Oh, never hit it. Oh, that was a good one. Never hit it. Never hit it. Got it that time. Got him. 
This boat is rigged up about as nice, easy to use, and it flat out works. It's a must have when you're talking about big waves. Well, these trout are so darn tough. This bait is legendary. Well, that was on a number eight shad wrap. Your style of boat control is really key. One that was there from the very beginning. You want to be able to see in the water. The adventure begins. Got him. That's a I'm better one. Water, right? ah, come on, baby. I don't know if he tore off in there or not. He isn't as big as I thought he was, but he sure made a lot of noise. <laughs> you can get, this is, this kind of fishing, it, it can get addictive. <laughs> you know, frog fishing. Yeah, you know, I mean, I absolutely love it. Every year I look forward to, to the frog bites. And like I said earlier, you know, we're fortunate enough to live in a part of the world where we have a lot of lakes that have shallow water cover like this. So some where you can fish all day long, like the one we're on, you fish all day and you won't fish all of the cover. You drive, you can come off the access, drop the trolling motor and start casting. Now, naturally there's good spots are good spots. And when you learn how to pads on your lake after you're fishing, that's just time in the water. You'll find areas that this area here always has big fish, like the lake that we're on now, there's five spots that are really good. All the way, these, these five spots have been the same for 25 years. They're the best spots and are inevitably a little bit deeper than the rest of the pads around it. And, and, you'll, and the junk weed doesn't quite grow as thick. It, you know, you get a little bit more depth out of it and uh, uh, that overhead cover, it's almost inevitably a little bit deeper. And by a little bit deeper in conditions like this, I'm talking a foot can make that much difference. You can see that I actually have my shallow water highlight at five foot of water, and that really identifies with some specific things. When you look in these like shallow uh, slop beds, but you can see right here, we actually have like a deep water ditch right in here that cuts inside these beds. But it, the biggest thing is, is when you look at the map, this is also a one foot contour map. When you look at these, there is actually high spots and different things up in the weed beds themselves that actually are really key spots as you get over here. This is actually like a, a big bull nose finger. That's a, a lily pad bed here in underwater uh, cabbage beds or coontail mats. So, you know what I mean? You don't think that, you know, the depth finder, or, but mapping is a big thing when you're talking about uh, shallow water fi fishing like this, no question about it, because you can really identify those two really key spots by the, wherever the biggest flats are in the lake. Pretty looking fish. We're starting to come into them again. Oh, there's a good one. Oh, oh, come here. Oh, wow. Well, there's, there's, you gotta really muscle them out of there. Come here, buddy. There we go. There we go. That's a good one there. Oh, boy. That's a, that's a little bit better one there. Come here, buddy. Realistically, I could flip this fish into the boat and you see a lot of bass guys, but we're not going to. With this type of rod and reel combination, one thing when you go in slop fishing, I mean, the right tools, you know, tackle, rod, reel, and line is an instrumental aspect of, because there's no way, if you have too light of a rod, there's no way you can land them, no question about it. Let me, let's get her back in the water. That's a pretty one. Pretty bass, pretty slop bass. You get sort of that yellowy look to them. Come here, buddy. As I said, you know, the right rod is really critical. You know, to see, you can see how to pull big bass out of this dense cover. It's a, you really, you gotta muscle them out. I got the uh, St. Croix Legend Tournament Heavy Power fast action rod. This is seven foot four in length, but it's a very, very powerful rod. I mean, where you can really bowl a fish, you can tear them right through those weeds when you have to. You know, as far as a reel goes, this is uh, Daiwa's uh, Tatula, but this is a 300, 8.1 gear ratio reel, really fast action reel, and it's got that really wide spool, the T-wing system, for uh, to really open up the aperture for you know long accurate casts. It's a really nice reel. It's got the double paddles. So we've got a little bit larger paddle system on there. I think these is 190 millimeter uh, handle. 
but you can really help to winch fish out of heavy cover. You know, there's a, a number of different lines you can use for slop fishing. I actually use a 50 pound uh, Suffolk 832. This color is actually coastal camo, which I really like. It's sort of a, a mottled white blue and darker blue, so it's got a really nice silhouette against the sky. Very, very strong, tough to, uh, tensile strength on, on it. You know, I, I used, I'm using, as I said, I was using 50 pound 832 because you know a lot of guys like running 65 but i'll share something with you one thing with about 832 with 50 it's a little bit thinner and what that enables you to do is literally shear the wheat oop look at that one shear the weeds off you can cut them off which i really like that was a nice nice sized bass he came out of the edge there come on buddy where's he at he's close by here i pulled him out he's got to regroup i pulled him away from the edge Oh, there's a big one there, Al. Oh, oh, come on, oh, come on, oh, come on. There you gotta lean. This is one of those ones where you gotta put your, you know, you gotta, when you gotta put your knees in to get them out of there. There you go. Come on, buddy. There you go. We are loaded for bear. We got You know, ice. there's so many different ways to fish for water. Dependability and efficiency. Simple, fast, and easy. The best rods on a planet. They like to eat when you're throwing the right thing. You don't have all bluebird flat calm days. Just a perfect eating size fish. See, that's what I'm talking about, these Daiwa drags. We got walleye stuff, we got crappie stuff, we got pike stuff. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wide foot stance, that's what it is. You got to, you'll see, notice the boys, you get, really get some, some beef on it. <laughs> you put some leverage on it. He's not even that big. That goes to show you, there's not even that big of one either. I mean, that's what it is. Come on, buddy. He's making a mess in the boat. Okay. Hey, it's been a stellar day. We're catching so many big fish like this. We've had perfect conditions. We waited for the weather to get right. We watched the weather patterns. Everything was right. Hot, muggy, somewhat stable, not real heavy winds, slight overcast that was clear in the morning. The cloud cover didn't come in till later in the day. We planned everything right. We were tackled up right for it. And it will be a day to remember. You know, many years ago, shortly after the Word of God became real to me, and I started to get into it on a regular basis, turned my life over to the Lord, and really dug into the Word. I was at a retreat, and uh, for lack of a better word, a retreat. It was in Canada. And it had uh, a bunch of men that, that came for the weekend, and it was all fishermen, and you had different speakers that talked about uh, uh, their faith in God, how they came to know the Lord, and uh, 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 the impact that it has had in their life. And you had people from all different walks of life. And one of the speakers there, who was a pastor from a small church in Canada, as he was challenged us with something that I'll never forget, he said to me, of not me, to all of the men there, is anybody going to heaven because of you? I'm gonna say that again. Is anybody going to heaven because of you? He said those words and it got out of my head and into my heart immediately. I said, oh wow, wow. <laughs> uh, it is one of those things that I'll never forget. And it had a massive impact on my life. That's the reason that I do this show the way I do it. And, and, and I wanna be able to glorify God on the things that he's blessed me with in my life, be a blessing to uh, uh, people that believe in the word, people that are searching, that are looking to know more, uh, grow in their spiritual life, uh, body, mind, and spirit become one. They're more active in all of them. And uh, occasionally I get an opportunity to share the gospel, the truth that Jesus died for your sins, rose again, sitting at the right hand of the Father, a confession of faith in him as Lord and Savior opens up the gates of heaven. It's got nothing to do with denominations, anything like that. That is the foundation of the Bible, and Jesus is the foundation of all of that. It's really that simple. But that seed got planted in my heart, and I still think about it all. I wrote it down. It is in right at the beginning of my Bible 
right there and it's been sitting there since that retreat. Is anybody going to heaven because of me? Anybody going to heaven because of you? Think about it this week. Hey, from all of us here at the Edge, you have a good, safe fishing season. See you on the water. Got him. That's a nice one. There you go, Jeff. Yes, yes. Oh, awesome. What's the easiest way to catch the fabled muskie? Most seasoned muskie anglers would say there is no easy way other than committing to putting in a lot of time on good muskie waters. Make an untold number of casts, an equal number of boat side figure eights, and most of the time, lightning strikes when you least expect it. That's muskie fishing. Interestingly, oh, nice many one. good musky anglers are also wow. good deer hunters. They have that unique drive and an incredible amount of patience that's necessary to endure long hours on the water without a follow or a bite. During the summer months, many hardcore musky commandos head to northwest Ontario, which is considered a mecca for muskies. Lake of the Woods, uh, is, Eagle, like Cedar, Peralt, Lac Sewell, and Lake Wabagoon are just a few of the top destinations for both numbers and trophies. That is an absolutely fantastic fish. Jeff and I have been loving life up on Wabagoon here. It's an amazing fishery. It's overlooked. Woo! All right. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. <laughs> On the board, back-to-back -back spots, Jeff. Nice. Woohoo! Look at that. Husky! Husky. <laughs> what a great looking fish, huh? Yeah, good job, buddy. Woo! Oh, nice cool. fish. Cool. Yeah. yeah. What a fun deal. Jeff and I are on a musky mission on our favorite place to fish, Northwest Ontario Sunset Country. Beautiful spot. We're on Lake Wabagoon, staying at Merkel's Camp. And Wabagoon is an amazing fishery. Oh, got him. oh yes, got Jeff. Him. Yes, got him. Got him. Oh, Jeff. God, it came off. No. Yep. Home to some of the biggest fish in all of the world. Oh. Huh. There it was. And it has a very high density musky population. So Jeff and I, out exploring, looking at the waters of Wabagoon, and hopefully we catch a bunch of fish like this. Here we go, hey, aren't they beautiful? I think these Wabagoon fish are some of the most beautiful muskies in Ontario. Absolutely gorgeous, this dark water is such a thrill to fish because of, they just ambush it, they come out of nowhere. So I think we're gonna fish some shallow slop and hopefully put a lot of these in the boat. And hopefully this is the smallest one we get. Get her back, great. In all my years of muskie fishing, this is actually the first time I've been to Wabagoon and it is super interesting. The one thing I didn't expect, Jer tried to explain to me, like it's dark water, like it is dark water. I got a you know, bright orange blade on here and I know I lose sight of it at 18 inches. We're, getting, we're probably getting followed and, and you just can't see them. So it's real important to oh no, stay alert, do that figure eight at the end of your cast. But I'll tell you what, it is pretty exciting. Jer described it as a little bit like night fishing. I would totally agree. It's taken me a while to adapt to it, but it's really, really fun to fish these weed beds in this in this dark water. Super cool experience. See something? I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Here you go, Jer. Oh, Jer, nice. Oh, oh, oh. oh man. That was awesome, huh? <laughs> Cheer. That was fantastic. <laughs> that you wanted was... that thing going so fast. <laughs> we were just saying, boy, <laughs> wouldn't it be fun to get one to follow and then eat on a figure eight? I could not move that bait fast enough. <laughs> that was so fun. So, so fun. Hey there, mister. Hey, got one. Into the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You know, the thing about up here is, that's so fun, is that most days if you look around, it's like bluebird skies, not a lot of wind. You're just going, oh, we got a musky fish today. It's going to be a grind. We'll get a window in the morning. Get in the afternoon on Wabagoon, 
You want calm and sunny because they bite. That was just great. All right, Jeff, we'll slide this one forward and we'll get them off. We are off to a good day. We haven't been fishing very long and we've been doing some catching. Huh, Jeffrey? Look at that, those beautiful Wabagoon leopards. They just love them. This segment is brought to you by Big Bite Baits, designed to bring the big bite to your line. They're so darn pretty. I think these are some of the prettiest fish in Ontario. The system is so fertile. There's lots of them and they grow big. The longest muskie I've ever hooked was just about 100 yards down that way. So this is a good place to be. Let's let this one go. All right, see you, dude. Fishing this dirty water is really different. Wabagoon is different than pretty much anywhere you've fished, I can almost promise you. And one of the things I find to be a lot more helpful and productive is to avoid some of the things that you do in clear water. So number one is don't make super long casts when you're fishing around this heavy cover. We tend to get the boat closer to the cover and make shorter casts that are more accurate. So the cover is dense, the water is dirty, the strike zone is so much more limited that it really does pay to make these short, accurate casts. And then the second thing is just go slow. Pick your way through, and when I'm talking about fishing slow, I don't mean that you have to fish your baits extremely slow, I'm meaning keep the boat moving slow that you so you can make a lot of casts into the key areas. Oh man, do you see that one come up and grab it? That was awesome. Wow. Missed it? He just rolled on it. Ah. That was cool, you might get him. Came up and went, whoa. Got him? Yep. Got him, that boy, Jeff, sweet. Hey, that's a nice northern, Jeff. You betcha. Congratulations, you're on the board. Huh? Swiped your fish. Huh? Oh, that was mean. That's the thing about this lake, is there are a lot of nice jacks in here right there. Nice jack, huh, Jer? Yeah. Cool, cool. cool. Oh, did you see that one? Here we go, here we go. Came up on it. Here she is, here she is, she's still on it. Got him. Yeah, that was cool, huh? That was great. Boy, it's so cool about this is when you get into figure eight, you cannot move it fast enough for these fish. You would think that in this dirty water, it'd be slow, 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 but if you slow down, they say no, no, no. Woo. And what's fun about today is we've just really been looking at new stuff, just exploring, 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 and catching muskies. Loving life, baby. Gosh, that's a gorgeous fish. They're so stinking pretty in here. And I'll share with you, after I let this one go, what we've got on the deck for baits for fishing this dirty water on Wabagoon. It's pretty much the same stuff you've got on board, but uh, it's the rods and reels to have on deck for fishing this kind of water. Here we go. Mm -hmm. You're on, Wait. Jeffrey. Huh? I'm we literally around. just released one. Yeah. Unbelievable. That is unbelievable. That is crazy. Oh! <laughs> so it is exactly right in the middle of the major right now. Middle of the and major. Two muskies just like that. Never been to this spot, Jeffrey. <laughs> bang, bang. That's hilarious. Huh? I'm sitting here. Jerry's up there messing with his fish. So I'm waiting for him to be spot locked. So I'm just spittling around and flipping around. Bam. Hit another muskie right in the major. That was so cool. You don't do that very often. No. Here. But you know what? That's one thing to be said about muskies. Everybody thinks, oh, if you get a muskie, that's the only one there. I'm telling you, there's where there's one, there's often a couple, you know? Beautiful fish. This boat is rigged up about as nice, easy to use, and it flat out works. It's a must have when you're talking about big waves. Well, these trout are so darn tough. This bait is legendary. So that was on a number eight shad wrap. Your style of boat control is really key. One that was there from the very beginning. Do you want to be able to see in the water? The adventure begins. So when it comes to what we've got on the deck, you know, musky fishing, if you're into it, what's awesome is the equipment has become 
specialized much like it has for fishing for bass or walleye. You've got certain powers and actions of rods that work for very specific presentations. So on the deck of the boat, now granted I'm into musky fishing, but I almost always have four or five different rod and reel combos on the boat. So right now I've got one on board for throwing big bucktails. It's first of August, so big bucktails are a big deal. I've got a rod in here, that dive and rise deal is incredible. So I've got a rod for fishing suix, and then I've got a small, this is one of my favorite rods ever, I've got for throwing little bucktails, this is St. Croix Downsizer. And then I also have a rod set up for topwater. And this rod I kind of want to talk to you about specifically, which is pretty cool. This is St. Croix's new legend tournament. And look at the handle on that. It's the, the grass handle. So they designed this so that the fatigue of musky fishing doesn't get to you, especially when pulling. And this is a really great rod, especially for the guys that don't change hands when they're casting. You never really have to let your hand leave. So you've got three fingers down taking all of that torque and then the rest up. So you're putting the torque not on your wrist corked like this, it's just straight on. So it helps with the torque and then they redesigned the material in here. So this rod is like as light as their Legend Elite. It's actually very, very, very light. So an incredible rod for this type of deal. The nine foot medium heavy fast is kind of my go-to for a lot of these applications, but I will mix it up. Heavy stuff not coming down to a later, Jeff. Nice fish, Jeff. I like that. Cool, beautiful Wabagoon bass here. They've got a cool thing going on in the lake where they've got a number of fish tagged. And the goal is in the next few years to have $100,000 worth of tagged fish swimming around in Wabagoon Lake. So if you buy a ticket, you get one of these fish, they're worth a whole bunch of money. And right now, we're gonna tag one of them right here, put a tag in this, so if you come up and visit this place, you've got a chance to win a bunch of money by catching this fish right here. All right, I'm gonna get a tag in it quick. Here we go, this bass is going back into Wabagoon for somebody to catch worth a bunch of money. And off you go, Mr. Smallmouth. Just being here in sunset country pretty much makes you a good fisherman. Oh, there's one. Got him. Got him? Yeah. Nice. Oh, nice one, Jeff. Awesome. Yeah, Woo. sweet. Off the rock, baby. But I am telling you that electronics help you catch way more and bigger fish. That's just the facts. That's so awesome. Boy, it's kind of a cold front day, Jeff and I, fighting wind, fighting rain. And that's musky fishing. You got to, you got your highs and your lows and you keep each other up. You can keep grinding it out and catch a fish like that. Woo. There we go, Mr. Smith. Yes. Yeah, another musky. They're so pretty. Look at the yeah, green. Yeah. I mean, that color is just amazing. Super pretty. Let's go. Cool. Let's go. Right cool. on. I'll get her back. Now this boat is loaded with all of the sweet electronics that are available from Hummingbird. It's got 360 side imaging, down imaging, 2D. It's got Mega Live. It's got a great map on it. So it really has all that technology. But there's really two technologies up here. Aside from mapping, I'm talking sonar technologies that are really amazing, and that's side imaging and live. And I'm sure a lot of people have heard of live, which is forward-facing sonar, and a lot of people in muskie fishing use it to catch fish, but I'm telling you, the most valuable aspect of it for fishing the shield water is knowing how spots are laid out, especially on a lake like Wabagoon or even Lake of the Woods and parts of Eagle. The water can be really dirty, and I can't tell you how many times over the years I've been looking at a spot, I'm casting over here, and all of a sudden, grrr, my trolling motor grinds up on the rocks because you don't know how the spots are laid out. But with live, now we can get a good feel for exactly how everything's laid out. So you're fishing spots like you would have an experience of 50 years of fishing a spot because you can look in front of you now. I've got it on the trolling motor and I can just scan so I know where the weed line is. I know if there's a big rock off to the side. So this technology, to me, is the most revolutionary thing ever to come along in shield fishing, just simply for understanding the structure way better. Got one. Got one? Yeah. Nice one. The pike or musky? It's a musky. Oh. The boy Jeff. 
Ooh. Ooh. All right, maybe bring him over. Right. Can you bring him over to the other side? I can. Yep. Oh, this camera. He wanted to go that way first. <laughs> he did. He went didn't with he? him. Right? Yeah. Not a bad muskie, Jer. Right on. Every muskie is a good muskie, right. Jeff. Yeah, huh? Yeah. Nice. That's a nice thick one. We've caught a lot of fish. About this size. Yeah, but, but they're just thick. They're thick, and we're fishing hard, and they're still fun to catch. You know, you get get bit by these fish. Awesome, awesome fish. We are loaded for bear. We got you know, points. there's so many different ways to fish for water. Dependability and efficiency. Simple, fast, and easy. The fish rides on a planet. They like to eat when you're throwing the right thing. You don't have all bluebird flat calm days. Just a perfect eating size fish. See, that's what I'm talking about, these Daiwa drags. We got walleye stuff, we got crappie stuff, we got pike stuff. So for the reel I'm using for this, it's Daiwa's Pro Rex. This is a reel that was made specifically for musky fishing. And we're throwing blades and a lot of people like fishing slower gears for blades, but they make this in a 5.1 and a 7.1 and an 8.1. And I really like the 7.1 for this style. I feel like the uh, big cranking handle that it's got on here gives you enough torque that you can get away with a higher gear and also still have the pulling power. But one thing that I will say is that sometimes with these higher speed reels, you do have to watch your speed. You can end up just burning the bait way too fast, so you have to slow yourself down. But the other advantage to this, I feel too, with a little bit faster gear, is that when you hook fish, it's a lot easier to stay tight on them. If they come running at you, you just have to make a couple cranks of the handle and boom, you're on top of the fish. And then the line I've got on here is Suffix Pro Mix Braid. And you might just think, oh, braid is braid, but one thing you really, really wanna look out for in musky fishing to save yourself some money is a braid that has a ton of shock strength. So this Pro Mix braid has a ton of that. You're not gonna backlash and lose baits. And that can be, of course, very expensive. And I've had uh, different lines over the years that if you backlash, see you later. But this Pro Mix has got tremendous shock strength and we never end up losing baits with it. Oh, there's one. Yep, there you go, Oh, Jared. got him. Got him? Got him, yep. <laughs> That was awesome. That was awesome. Huh? Well, we're 50 yards away from the other spot, Jer. Yep, I don't need a net on this one, Jeff. It's you fine. Sure? I'll, yep, I can just pop this one off. Isn't that a beautiful, beautiful fish? Literally, Jeff just caught that fish and it's about two seconds later. I got one. I just changed colors from orange and brown to black and silver, the classic musky bait. Bingo, got another one. This is action packed. So one thing I'll say about Wabagoon, there's a lot of fisheries in Canada where you can catch some pretty big muskies, but Wabagoon has both numbers and size. It's actually got quite the high density, so it's a pretty, pretty cool spot. This isn't a big one, so I think I'm just gonna try to reach down and pop them off and try to get us a bigger fish here. So look at that tool, isn't that great? So you can just get a hold of them there. Like that, and musky be gone. If you're a musky fisherman, this is absolutely the most amazing tool to have on board. That Bubba hook extractor, unbelievable. So good. Got him. Big one. Ooh, big one. Thanks. Good job, Jerry. Oh gosh. Oh. All right. I thought it was bigger, but that's a great fish, Jeffy. A great fish. All right. Sunshine on Wabagoon equals big muskies. All right. Middle of the day. Middle of the day. Boy, when they open their mouth, you just can't help oh, but think dear. that they're giant. You can open. There we go, we should get there. Right there. Oh. All right, hey, Jeffrey. Nice going, buddy. Oh, That's awesome. Dude, that was really cool. He just pounded it. Oh, you oh. see their mouth open? And you just think, you, just, you can't help but say, big one, big one, big one. When you see a big muskie's mouth open up, it is something special. So we fished this spot. We came in from the back side here, and our baits cast over it. But we, we came around the structure and fished it from a different angle, and this fish bit. 
you know, if you have confidence in the spot, fish it a few different ways because it can pay off. You know, wait till you see the size of this fish. It's a Canadian giant. Oh, man, if I can get a hold of this baby. Holy cow, she's a big one. Wow, and it is beautiful. Holy cow. All right, huh? That is an absolutely fantastic fish. Jeff and I have been loving life up on Wabagoon here. It's an amazing fishery. It's overlooked years ago. People came from all over to catch fish like this. I'm telling you, they're back. It's an amazing multi-species fishery with some giant muskies in it and other critters too. Woo! Hey, we all know about the crazy real estate market that we've been living in and seeing the last few years. And I've got some close friends and family that are in the business. And uh, uh, they've been encouraging me, me to, to possibly entertain the thought of selling my house. And I've got a big home. My wife passed away about almost 10 months to the day now, very close to it. You know, and I've been thinking seriously about downsizing, getting a new location, simplifying my life. And I looked at 14 different places, different locations, and I just couldn't find anything that I was comfortable with. And they keep nudging me, Al, you could make a killing. You could make a killing on your house. And uh, 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 I was sitting in my prayer time not too long ago in the morning, and I had two major criteria that I talked to them about that are important to me. One of them was convenience, convenience to town, not far from my office, my church, the food, theater, uh, anything uh, that, that uh, uh, I have to get to quick and easy. That was important to me, and the other part of it was solitude. I want some acreage, I want some space around, er, around me. And uh, those were two important factors. And in my time talking to the Lord, I'm complaining a little bit in the morning. Why can't I find where I'm going through it? Should I do the sort of, and it's like that little tug. You know, it wasn't an audible from heaven kind of deal. It says, why don't you just look out your window? Duh, a wake up call. Why don't you just look out your window? Well, I looked out my window. I thank God and I am here I'm guessing for duration. <laughs> and simple truth, simple thing that I had to deal with, but uh, 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 it gave me great peace. Al, look out your window. Thank you, Father. You bless me so much, and my home and place I live is one of them. Hey, from all of us here at the edge of good, safe fishing season, we'll see you in the water. When it comes to fishing, few people have created more tactics and techniques than bass anglers. Brownie, I'm sure. And if you're ever fishing out here in the plains and the weatherman says the forecast is breezy, you better believe him. You name the situation or condition, whether it's finesse fishing, power fishing, deep water, shallow water, heavy cover or suspended, these anglers have a strategy for the situation at hand. No question about it, the Bass Boys have you covered. Many of these lures, rigs, and techniques have evolved from the tournament bass world where they have to catch fish no matter what the conditions. And crankbaits have long been a staple in the bass fishermen's arsenal. Many of today's cranks are often designed to have their own unique purpose. Often each lure component, from bill configuration, body shape, buoyancy, hooks, and line type placement are engineered so the bait dives to a specific depth and performs best depending on the cover, whether it be weeds, wood, or rocks. Let's join Al Lindner with more insights and strategies on shallow rock fishing for bass. I've had a phenomenal quick afternoon here. I didn't know what to expect. Uh, I knew I'd catch some fish, but I didn't know how good the bite, didn't know the temperature, it, it, what, what it was gonna be. We've had some big smallmouth, we've had some great largemouth fishing. I got a new favorite bait that I like to fish with. Uh, for a short afternoon on a lake, it doesn't get any better than that. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. There, there, right there. See that right there? That's them. 
they're running a little better. And we should get him. Ooh, nice bass. I've seen him on the Mega Live right in front of the boat. <laughs> ah, nice start fish. Nice start fish. Ooh, it's a big brown bass. I like that. A little spot lock on here. Nice start fish. Ooh, come here, come here, come here. <sighs> For about six casts, and we're on the board. We are on the board. Nice way to start the next day and a half. Here's the deal. I got out of my office. I got a chance to get away, fish alone for a little while, which I like to do every year, and uh, experiment with a couple of our, our marketing partners' new products. One of the products is this new crankbait from Rappaloff, it's called the OG Rocco, and uh, uh, that whole OG series has been really a great series. And I want to fish it a little bit, get a feel of the lake I'm on, I know really well, it's got largemouth, it's got smallmouth in it, and uh, I'm going to be able to fish about four hours today. The weather's cool, it's going to go to into the high 30s tonight, and tomorrow it's going to bump up you know, to maybe 60 degrees, I'll fish two thirds of tomorrow. I expect to catch myself enough fish to have confidence in the new Rappel Rock, OG Rocco. So, you're my partner in the boat for the next day, day and a half. Got him, feels like a good one. That feels like a good one. That feels a real good one. Bulldog. Nice bass. I wasn't, couldn't tell if it was a brown or a black. Oh yeah, nice largemouth. What was it? Nope, nope, it's a smallie again. I think. Yep, yep, another nice smallie. This segment is brought to you by Big Bite Baits designed to bring the big bite to your line. Nothing builds confidence faster than setting a hook on bass like this. <laughs> this bait, right now, it's perfect conditions for cranking. My water temperature's, uh, you know, where I'm, I'm reading 51 to 52-ish. You know, good crankbait uh, time, that's the magic time. Smallmouth, largemouth will catch a number of good fish the next day and a half cranking away. And uh, uh, just this bait, by the way, this Rocco is uh, designed by Octopo, one of the best bass anglers in the business today. And he come up with the whole OG concept. And in the last few years, that OG series of baits has been a home run. It's one of the hottest selling uh, hard baits in the bass world today. You get these cold weather days like this, wind blowing out of the northwest, you know, pretty cold. Fish like, like a smallmouth bass, they don't even care. You know that? This time of the year, they've been living under the ice for so long. They said, I don't care about fronts. I don't care if wind is out of the north, south, east, west. I don't care if it's windy or calm. I'm going to eat for a little while. That's the attitude of, of a smallie. That's why I like fishing for them so much, especially this time of the year, even again in fall. Those fronts, they, they, they don't bother them as much as they do the largemouth. They like, just, just like to bite and fight. Man, this bait feels good. You can really feel it thumping, boy. Just a thumping. Real good vibration to it. Let's see what you got going here. Oh, he got off on me. Oh, he came back. Another smallmouth. Huh. 
At the foe, you didn't know you made a good smallmouth bait. You thought this was just for largemouth. <laughs> a real good spot right here coming up. Little point of rocks and then there's saddles and then there's a mega big boulder on the end of it. Ooh, good one. Big fish. So that was on a number eight Shadrath. Your style of boat control is really key. One that was there from the very beginning. You want to be able to see in the water. The adventure begins. We are loaded for bear. We got You know, fights. there's so many different ways to fish for water. Dependability and efficiency. Simple, fast, and easy. The best rods on a planet. Very clean, nice looking fish. Lake's got a lot of largemouth like this. Get her back. That was a good fish. You can't beat balsa for action. You can't do it with plastic. And, and all the Rapalus baits like this, this, these are balsa baits and the action is amazing on it. This particular, it's a little wider than the other OGs. And the wobble is so tight. Look at the hooks. They are like needles. Needles. It's a great bait. It's another another great bait to add to your tackle box for largemouth and smallmouth. But again, I can't say enough about balsa, balsa, balsa. The action that a bait gets out of balsa is something special. Got him. Good fish. Big big bass, I think. Big fish though. Wants to come up like a big large mouth. It looks like a big large mouth. Like that other one. Ooh yeah. Nice big fish. Biggy large. Big largey. Big mama. Big mama. Big mama. If I was in a tournament, I'd be screaming, come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Big, big donkey. Oh, man. Oh, boy. That's a pig and a half. Holy smokes. Holy mackerel. That's getting up to one of the bigger bass that I will get in Minnesota this year. On a Rocco! My first day Crank and Rocco. <laughs> Do you think I don't? My confidence is sky high, baby, when you start putting them in a boat like this. Woo! It don't get much better than that. Yeah, you know, and today is just day one. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I got about six hours to fish tomorrow. I dumped another fish just before that, a big walleye, and then this big toad. Well, I wish I had a scale, I'd weigh her. This is one big Minnesota largemouth, let me clue you. Let's get that baby back for another year. Woo! That red big boulder's right here someplace. Got him. Big, big fish again. Big, big largemouth again. Oh, this is, we are on the mother load. <laughs> Mother load. She ain't like that last one, but she's a pretty darn good one. Another big one, back to back, just about. And I'm slowly getting these babies patterned for the first night. The conditions are so right with this weather change coming in coming into, let me put her back here real quick. That weather change has got him really cranked up. It's gonna get very cold tonight and real crispy in the morning, but these fish are biting pretty good tonight. A little better than I may have anticipated. I didn't know what to expect when I got here. Every spot I'm going through, boom, boom, boom. Some small mouth, some large mouth. That's the magic of this time of the year. You know, when you get it in and around that, that, that 48, 50, 52 degree, uh, uh, baits like the crankbait in particular, you know, they work all year, but these
style baits like this in that temperature range, cranking in shallow water when those bass first come up, it is a dynamite, dynamite way to catch fish. I don't know how many fish are caught on hard baits in a given season on bass. So let's talk bass. I can't even have a hazard a guess. How about you? How many bass are caught on hard baits? How many bass do you catch cranking hard baits compared to spinner baits or bladed jigs or jigs or wacky worms or a big fish? You know, crank baits produce tons of fish and you gotta have them in your tackle box. And this is another home run, you know, from Rapala. Am I selling a Rapala Rocco? Yeah, I'm selling a Rapala Rocco because if you buy them and fish them, you're gonna catch more fish. I promise you that these guys make baits that work. Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. right by the boat. Ooh. right by the boat. <laughs> wow. That's pulling like a brown bass. I don't think that's a largey. No, it is a largey. Yeah, yeah another largemouth. Man, this one's on fire. This one's almost a flipper. Oh, yes. Yes, a flipper. Well, you had a little spunk to you, baby. You liked, liked eating that thing and, and chunking it, chunking it around. They like to eat when you're throwing the right thing. You don't have all bluebird flat calm days. Just a perfect eating size fish. Dude, that's what I'm talking about, these Daiwa drags. We got walleye stuff, we got crappie stuff, we got pike stuff. This boat is rigged up about as nice, easy to use, and it flat out works. It's a must have. When you're talking about big waves, well, these trout are so darn tough. This bait is legendary. Good, healthy looking fish just coming in. I'm going to take a quick second and talk a little bit about. I got to sit down, down here. My back and my knee are hurting. I'm getting old. Things don't work the way they used to. <laughs> this, is, yeah, yes, this is a Mojo glass made for cranking, Mojo Glass cranking rod. This is the uh, uh, 610, which I kind of like. I'm, you know, I'm not making long casts. They got the longer rods for bigger baits for deeper water. I'm doing a lot of target fishing. So it works really, really good. The rod is a Mojo Glass Bass. It's a medium power 610, moderate action. And it's perfect for short, shallow water cranking like this. The reel is a, a Daiwa Tatula 6.3 SVTW. This is the 103 series. It's an amazing reel. It is super light. It's made out of material that, that they keep making these Daiwa reels lighter and lighter and lighter. It's amazing, amazing. And the line I'm cranking with is, is Suff Suffolk fluorocarbon, bread and butter, 10 pound test fluorocarbon. Can't go wrong. Look at that, look at that. It's all smallmouth right there. All of those are smallies. About 35 feet out. Got him. Got him, got him. Whoa. Oh, boy, that was a good one there. Whoo! I thought I had that one locked. Good school of bass, ain't it? They're staged up here going before they get back into that bay. Oh, man. That was a pretty nice fish. I'm on a point here, here feeding that big, big open water. This is the first big point. A rock saddle I'm cranking across here. And these fish will, could be by tomorrow, go up. There's a school of them here. They might go all the way back and spread all through this bay in back of me and start staging up a little bit shallower. But right now we got, we got a really good school of fish and a contact point. The first big point going back into a spawning bay. Does it get any better than that? and big boulders and rocks on it. And eating crankbaits, how sweet it is. See, see this here? This, that is a big boulder that's right, right out there. That boulder's 35 to 40 feet away. I just turned, it's a big giant boulder. It's about six inches under the water. This is the saddle coming up onto another shallow spot. But that mega boulder, I could see the top of it from here. Ooh, he followed it up. He followed it up and just spun away. It was a bass, largemouth, that looked like a largemouth, maybe a smallmouth. Just when I turned, turned, how many times 
if you had a crankbait coming in and just as soon as it changes direction by the boat and goes up, you get bit, that directional change. You know, you naturally try to change its direction while you're fishing a bait out, but that directional change, that's why you, read it, you, re, you cast out, you reel at different speeds, you try to bump bottom, you pull it, you stop it, you pull it, you stop it, you jerk it. You know, you make it do different things and you get bit like this. Isn't it? Good fish. Good fish. Oh! <laughs> it's so nice to sit on a school of bass like this after a cold winter in Minnesota and you dream about a good bite like this. Ooh, come here, another pretty good large mouth. You know, they're looking good. They're carrying a lot of weight on them, boy. They've been, they've been sitting out there this winter, <clears throat> sitting down in this, these deep weeds, and the weather's just getting, weather's just getting right. Well, I'm gonna come. Ah. Come here, there you go. What a hook, that hook is an amazing hook. Amazing hook. Junior, this is a junior. I don't mind catching juniors in between with the other ones. How about you? How about you? You know, I've had a phenomenal quick afternoon here. I didn't know what to expect. Uh, I knew I'd catch some fish, but I didn't know how good the bite, didn't know the temperature, uh, uh, what it was gonna be. We've had some big smallmouth. We had some great largemouth fishing. I got a new favorite bait that I like to fish with. Uh, for a short afternoon on a lake, it doesn't get any better than that. Granted, I know the lake, I love fishing here, but it's a good time to come out, kick my season off. I like being alone for a little while while I'm learning new baits. I just absolutely have had a phenomenal day, and I wanna thank you for joining me on my spring extravaganza with a new lure. I love it. Hey, the other morning when I got up, I got a beep on my phone. I pick it up, look at it, and it says, good morning from Apple News. The first images from the James Webb Space Telescope showing the deepest views of the universe ever captured. Then it goes on to read. The first image from NASA's Webb Telescope is our deepest view of the universe. The newly released full color images highlight a stunning collection of ancient galaxies and heralds in a new age for astronomy. After a million mile journey into space, NASA's newest flagship observatory, the James Webb Space Scope, has captured its first suit of full color images of the universe. As seen through the instrument's sharp infrared eye, that little patch of populated is populated by swirling, glowing, gorgeous galaxies, some of which existed more than 13 billion years ago when the universe was still a toddler. And then it goes on to talk about how important a find like this is. Every time I read something like this, I wonder how people can look at the world around us and look at space, the magnitude of space, and believe that this, all of a sudden, for no rhyme or reason, just popped up. Just a pop-up. No, nothing. Starts with some goo and it led to the magnitude of space and the world and the earth we live in blows my mind that, that they can't say the word God or created. It. It's so simple to me. How clear it is. I went, I got to go first of all, as I always do, the book of knowledge. Tells you everything you got to know about anything. And it's in the very, very beginning, the very beginning of the Bible. In Genesis, the first thing it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Duh. <laughs> is that pretty clear? Pretty simple like the word of God always is. Now let's go a little bit further. Let me go down to Romans. 
120. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. God's word is always so clear, so to the point, it addresses everything, everything. Hey, from all of us here at the edge, you have a great fishing season. We'll see you on the water. Fishing trips into sunset country is always an adventure. Today, Jeff Simpson and I are heading to Wildwood on Savant Lake. Savant Lake is located 75 miles northeast of Sioux Lookout, Ontario. We're talking a big lake, 90,000 acres in size with over 100 islands. As far as fishing opportunities, walleyes, pike, lake trout, and whitefish are the target species. Getting to the lodge is an interesting mission in itself. There's no direct access to this lake. You load your equipment and food for the week on an ATV with a trailer and wheel through the bush country for a couple of miles to the lodge. It's sort of like going to a fly-in fishing lodge without the plane ride. Wildwood is a full service resort with nice housekeeping cabins, with full cooking facility, nice boats, gas, bait, freezers, and guide if you need one. That's cool, you get in there on these, these bays like this, they can really be stacked up, huh? Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. Andy, we're here in the first week of June. It's obviously early season. What, your camp's been open for how long now? This is the third week. Third week, but it still would be considered really pretty early season. You got pretty high water conditions. It's been a cold water year. Give me a little bit of rundown in uh, seasonal movement of pike and walleye and lake trout throughout the season, what you see. So we have kind of a few main spawning areas for the walleyes and pike. The Southeast Bay, nice and shallow, a lot of feeder creeks and shallow areas that warm quickly that are primed for spawning. Yeah, you can see that's a lot shallower, big shallow water arm of the lake too. Yeah, a lot of feeder streams flowing into these areas. Yeah, kind of on the flip side, you actually have some of these other, these are really big areas. Yeah, this Bear Paw Bay here, same kind of thing, broken off from the main part of the lake, warms more quickly, feeder streams. We have this Never Freeze Bay, there's actually a fish sanctuary there closed for part of the year just to protect the walleyes that spawn in the spring. Okay. This northeast arm is just a large shallow area that's fantastic for reproducing fish. Yeah, then you actually have a lot of giant shallow water shelves as well and secondary shelves. It's like a mix of all different oh, yeah. type of, ha of uh, depth ranges can really support a, really a lot of fish. It's really incredible. I don't know how, how many islands are out there. I know I'm wandering around. You have to keep on <laughs> the map in hand all the time when you start wandering around because you spin around you look around because there's so many islands where am I on the lake you know yeah that's a nice thing about the lake too you can it can kind of be as big or as small as you want it to be it's not a vast wide open expanse I mean you could just focus on this south arm here south of the narrows and you'd have all the fishing you want but it's also nice you can explore 20 plus miles away oh yeah yeah Walleye and pike fishing in early season is pretty simple in these Canadian lakes. The ice went out about three weeks ago, so the majority of fish are still concentrated shallow. Flat bays with incoming feeder rivers and creeks are prime habitat for both spawning pike and walleyes. Really pretty habitat in here. This segment is brought to you by Sunset Country, Ontario, Canada. You gotta come visit. Really pretty habitat in here. Mm -hmm. You know, early season fishing like this, your first inclination when you come to these back bays is to just cast at the bank, shallow water, wherever you got a creek coming in, any type of shallow water cover, weed beds, etc. 
but realistically when you come into these back bays there's actually depressions and uh, sometimes there's uh, deeper creek channels in the center of the bay that could only be you know four to seven eight foot of water and a lot of times if the fish are inactive they can be sitting in those little bit deeper pockets so intermittently as we're moving along the bank and Jeff and I are both casting intermittently out into the center of the bay. I've seen it before on other uh, Canadian lakes like this and you'd, you'd pound them right in this exact center, just out in the center of the bay where they're just laying like logs. There's one. Ooh. Come here, buddy. A little bit better one. This guy, oop, perfect. There we go. We got them. They're starting to bite. It's sort of interesting is, is that a lot of the guys at camp were saying that the, uh, the best bite, believe it or not, which is sort of against the grain, when it warmed up and it got bright and sunny, that the uh, fish got more active, which could be because the water temperature has been so cool. We actually had, they actually have a real high water year as well, just a really cool season. You know, I've been blessed over the years to come up to Northwest Ontario and do this big pike fishing a, a lot. And my favorite rod for this technique is actually a, a St. Croix Legend Elite seven foot six inch, medium heavy, moderate fast rod. Now what we're doing, we're making a long, long cast. A lot of times we're using relatively big hooks and you're hooking the fish out on the end of the cast. So you need a pretty powerful stick. Um, I like a real fast, action reel you're moving covering a lot of ground you're making long long casts you're trying you know up in the shallow water you don't want to get right on top of them you know they can seem like they're really super aggressive but we're holding back and making long casts you know you're only in three to five foot of water a lot uh, but my reel is a this is a zillion twhd 7.3 to 1 reel it's got a real fast pickup ratio which is really nice a lot of times you hook these fish out on the end of the cast and they're really moving quick so you need a real fast pickup <laughs> you need a real fast pickup like that one <laughs> there you go ooh ooh no it's 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 a, just enough a, a cookie cutter cookie cutter fish i mean that's what i mean we well, you're processing a lot of fish doing this and you want the right tackle no question that's going to really stand up to the abuse for extraction time a little dental work there she is There we go. It's all she wrote. But I mean, that's what I mean. You're catching a lot of fish. This is really fun fishing. Come on, buddy. Whoa, <laughs> that's my favorite part of big snake fishing. <laughs> I like the blow up by the side of the boat on a release. <laughs> Oop, there he's got one. We are loaded for bear. We got you know, there's so many different ways to fish for water. Dependability and efficiency. Simple, fast, and easy. The best rods on the planet. They like to eat when you're throwing the right thing. You don't have all bluebird flat calm days. Just a perfect eating size fish. See, that's what I'm talking about, these Daiwa drags. We got walleye stuff, we got crappie stuff, we got pike stuff. Got him? Big head. Yeah, big Mr. Head. Big Head. Oop, there's one. Oh, oh no. Another one. All right, well, let's get one, stick one out of this active pod, James. Yep, buddy. There you go. The sweet hookout tool from Bubba. Basically, you get down in here and grab the, grab the shaft of the hook, squeeze this handle, and you just pop it out. Boom. That is magical. Magical tool, huh, James? It is. I like that tool a lot. <laughs> there you go. For early season pike, we bring a variety of baits, which include four inch casting spoons, half ounce Terminator Pro Series spinner baits, four and five inch Storm Wild Eyed Swim Shads, half ounce VMC Boxer Jigs, rigged with five and seven inch Big Bite Suicide Shads, and of course, number 12 X Wraps. Last but not least are 30 to 50 pound Terminator titanium leaders. The nice thing about these particular leaders, they don't get bent out of shape like solid wire leaders can. One leader can take a lot of abuse. Oops, there's one. Oh. 
Ooh. Come on. Whoa. There you go, James. Yeah, that's a good one. Ooh, now you're talking. There you go. You got a nibble. A big, <laughs> a big nibble. Let's see. One, two, three. Come here. There we go. Oh. There we go. Oh. There we go. A little sportier one, not a giant. They come a lot bigger than that one, but that's a nice one. I mean, when you cook, you know, throughout the course of the day, you catch a bunch of, bunch of these, and then we're still looking for Mr. Big, or I should say Mrs. Big. We'll get her back in the water. Get her. Let's get her back in the water. Boy, she, she's playing possum, I suspect. Mm -hmm. yeah. But one thing that I do with like minnow baits like this, a lot of times we'll just put single hooks on there or you'll just simply go in and flatten the barbs off. This is particularly when you're going through quite a few fish, you know, just to minimize the uh, damage to the fish you can, so you can get them off really easy. So what I'll do is just go in there and, and flatten them off. A lot of times we fish in a lot of other provinces and it's, it's mandatory to flatten the barbs off. That's more like it, huh? Yeah. Hugging. Oh, there's one. I got another one. That one too. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Right now. now you're talking. Doubles. There's a big one huh? there. Whoa, it's a big one. Whoa. Oh, no, it's not a big one. It's just a, a nice one. Yeah, I'm sorry. I thought, nice it was, one? I thought it was a bit, real big one. Yeah. <laughs> Get on bites like this, you know. Hog tied oh, himself there. I'm going to need the pliers. Oh, not too bad. That's a healthy, healthy one. Uh -huh. You see, they're still a little bit roughed up. Some of these bigger, bigger, ma bigger ma males. It's cool. You get in there on these, these bays like this. They can really be stacked up, huh? This boat is rigged up about as nice, easy to use, and it flat out works. It's a must have when you're talking about big waves. Well, these trout are so darn tough. This bait is legendary. So that was on a number eight shad wrap. Your style of boat control is really key. One that was there from the very beginning. You want to be able to see in the water. The adventure begins. What's been sort of really intriguing because we had that cold front came through, it's been really slow for most of the day. The interesting thing is you come into these bays and it doesn't seem like there's anything there and their fish are just inactive sitting in the, in the center of the bay. Come on, there we go. We didn't bring our own boat on this particular trip, but we did bring our own electronics. Hummingbird's Helix 7 all season is a great choice because it's both an ice fishing unit and a portable depth finder for a boat with both sonar and GPS. For remote water bodies like Savant, bring the Hummingbird Auto Chart Zero Lines map card. This card will have an outline of the landmass, including islands. It functions as a base map for navigation and you'll also be able to create your own contour map as you fish throughout the trip. Like a lot of Sunset Country lakes, Savant is monstrously big. Good electronics on trips like this are worth their weight in gold for both safety and to help speed up the fish finding process. Better size Waldo. Ooh. <sighs> look at that guy. Boy, look how dark that water is tannicky. Look at that guy, beautiful fish. Look at that thing. Wow. Early season walleye presentations revolve around a handful of key baits. They are jigging minnows, jigging plastics, hair jigs, crankbaits and rattlebaits. For these types of trips, we pack a lot of VMC Moon Eye jigs in weights from 1 8 to 3 8 of an ounce. Canadian waters tend to eat up jigs fast. For soft plastics, bring a good selection of bright colored 3.5 Big Bite Suicide Shads and Slim Minnows. Our top two hard baits are the number five and number seven Glass Shad Wrap and number six Rip and Wrap. These are great tools for covering water, both casting and trolling. 
Don't forget to pack some extra line for trips like this. 10 pound Suffix 832 for walleyes and a spool of 30 to 40 pound Suffix Pro Mix braid is perfect for pike. Also have a bit of 10 to 12 pound fluorocarbon on hand for walleye leaders. Here I am buddy, you know what's... Oh. Another Waldo, come on. Come here, buddy. Nice thing about these swim baits is actually, well, we're not, we're not really bottom bouncing or, you know, letting the bounce in the bottom because it's so rocky and you're losing jigs constantly if you're just bottom bouncing. So what we're doing is making, taking a really light jig head. I think we're running an ace right now. And what you're doing is actually just a slow swimming retrieve where you're just taking and reeling it along intermittently just skipping it as the drop falls, you're just actually following that drop down. A lot of times Waldos like it sort of slow for the shallow water fishing. Most of the fish we're catching are anywhere between, you know, four and seven foot of water. I don't know what this guy is, but huh. he's definitely be uh, of more of a different elk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's got to be a that's got to be a big pike. He doesn't even know he's hooked yet. Mm. No, you can tell, boy. I lift it up, and I thought I was hung on the bottom. Yep. Ooh. I can. See. Wow. Oh, there he is. Wow. Up with the head. Up, 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 up. up. I'm trying. There you got him. There you go. You go. Let's look at that guy there. It's a healthy one. Boy, look how fat she is. Beautiful, beautiful northern pike. That's why a lot of people come up here, particularly in spring, because you got a lot of these big fish up in relatively shallow water. They're pretty easy to access. But look how fat she is, though. Beautiful animal. Come here, buddy. You ready? Back to the depths. There we go. Glass shad wrap produces. The nice thing about a hard bait like a shad wrap, or this happens to be a wrap like glass shad wrap, is you get on these rock piles, and if you you know you're throwing jigs, the jigs are uh, <laughs> you got to really you're going to go through a few of them because it's so rocky. The nice thing about a hard bait is what you can do is actually reel it at whatever speed you want to to reel it just sort of. Just skip it over the depth of the rocks that you're fishing. Fish it a really, really slow. You're not getting hung up as much. Here's one. Yep. You getting the glass shad wrap wrapping? Giving, giving the glass shad wrap a workout. You don't want to be the, the boy who forgets the shad wraps when you go to Canada. Right? <laughs> no. <laughs> That, that bait's awesome, you know, it, it, in a little wind. That was always the problem. The, the, the original shad wrap is an awesome, awesome bait. Lively, but the, the glass shad wrap, you know, it's a little heavier and allows you to cast those baits. So that's, that's really a bait, a bait you want to have in your toolbox, no doubt. Whoa! What happened? Whoa, another Waldo. You know, when you come on these Canadian Adventures. You don't have much room to pack a lot of rods, so you got to be a little bit selective. And one of the rods I love is from the Icon series. It's a seven foot six, um, medium light power, extra fast action. Ooh, guess who's got another one, Mr. James? And that baby, boy, it can get, you can get work these crankbaits. I'm throwing this glass shad wrap, which is pretty much one after the other, and then the. Uh, one after the other walleye, but it'll also work, that rod will also work for, for pitch and jig. So it's just an all around good rod for multiple tactics. James has got one. You know, it's sort of interesting actually, you know, we got out this morning, we actually had a little bit of a cold front came through and actually had a bunch of rain showers last night. And it's like about 12 o'clock now, and it seems like, uh, and I know a lot of those guys were saying the same thing that uh, even the pike and the walleyes uh, the best bite was actually in the afternoon as that water warmed up. Right now it's still quite cold and uh, they're just starting to really get chomping now. 
right now it seems like you know we got a little bit of this windblown point pattern going on, which is sort of intriguing. We were doing, we've been doing such a variety of different things, you know, from the northern pike, trolling for lake trout, the back ends of the bay for the pike, outside the bays for uh, the lake trout, and then we're sort of like in between for the walleyes, and then even some in the back of the bays is too, where you get those boulder piles way in the backs of the bays. So we've been selectively changing rods about as fast as you move. As we're moving along, we're just taking advantage of the moment. <laughs> Where it could be walleyes, it could be lake trout, it could be a northern lake. That's one thing that's so fun to come up on a trip like this because you're just always constantly doing something different, you know. Recently, I had a friend of mine that's just really getting into the things of God. He's been searching his whole life. He's starting to ask questions. He was with me at retreats and at church things, speaking engagements through the years along with my brother. And uh, uh, he had some problems in his, his life, was turned off to organized religion, a lot of that, that things. And now he's coming back around, coming back around and he's searching. And he asked me, Al, I wanna get into the Bible. I never read the Bible. He says, I believe everything I'm hearing, but I need to know more. What Bible do I get? You know, and I did, you know, here, here, you know, I went through it. I got New King James, which I, I love. I like the Amplified. And the newest Bible that's out there is called the Passion Bible. It's the newest ver version. And I like the read in, in it. So I suggested to him, get this Passion Bible. It's the New Testament. It's Proverbs, Psalms, so Psalms, Songs of Solomon. And uh, I told him, first thing, thing I suggest you do, read the book of John. Have a marker with you or a pencil when you read it. And when you read something that really tugs at your heart a little bit, mark it, highlight it. More than likely, that's the Spirit of God talking specifically to you. And I said, when you get done with that, you, you, to know a little bit of what God says about living in the world that we live in, and that's a challenge by a long shot. I says, so go to Proverbs and read, read Proverbs, the bo book of wisdom. And it, it talks about daily living, wise counsel. And I would suggest that for you. If you're, if you're somebody looking, you never read the Bible, get into it. It's a, gr a great read and, and it'll get you moving in the right direction. But I can't overemphasize, make sure you have something with you because God will talk to you. This is. They're, these are not normal books. These are books, are the, the Bible is the inspired word of God. And when you read it and you feel that tug in your heart, that's God talking to you personally. He loves you, he cares about you, and he wants the best for you. Hey, from all of us here at the Edge, you have a good fishing season. See you on the water. Over the years, the Angling Edge staff has had the good fortune to fish all over North America for many different fish species. Going to new waters means you have to figure things out fast. Few tactics speed the fish finding and catching process quicker than trolling. The fact is, trolling is a unique presentation method that works great for many different game species. It's a highly efficient means of covering a tremendous amount of water in an effort to find active fish. There we go. There we go, big fish, boys. Nice, nice, nice. Covering so much water helps you gather information, like where are the largest concentrations of bait fish? Are your target species concentrated on points, sunken islands, or are they relating to rocks, wood, or weeds? Angling success is often an efficiency game of figuring out where the fish are not, which ultimately narrows the search as to where they are. Let's join Jeremy Smith and Ty Shadeen, who are based at Viking Lodge in Cranberry Portage, Manitoba. This is what people come up here for, to catch these giant mammoth lake trout like this. It is incredible. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. Nice here one? Mm, I can't tell. I don't think it's real big, but it's getting better as every turn of the handle, it appears to be getting better. Good way to cover water, you know, when these walleyes get in 
rocks in particular can be pretty hard to find them and see them, so you have to go slow no matter what. So it really does make sense to troll over a lot of these spots. Oh, that's a nice walleye. And so why not, oh, it's a great walleye. Oh, it thinks it's a bass. What? It thinks it's a bass. Oh, it's like, what? <laughs> Sweet. There you go, Jared. So Ty and I decided we'll pull some spinners and look at some different water and it has not taken long. We got a little guy, we got a nice one, we got bit off by a pike. And spinner rigging is an effective way to catch fish. Ty, you've done a lot of this. We just can cover, you can cover just a ton of water. And we're finding a lot of these fish when we're fishing with jigging wraps and so forth, they're more negative. So you're going through more fish and you're finding active fish this way, which is a great, like I said, a great technique to, to find fish, huh? eaters. Cool, let's get this guy back and get some more. All right, I'm rigging up this crawler right now and this is the spinner I've got going. It's just a little Indiana blade perch flavored pattern, but it's got this little float on here and this is a really nice deal to have when you're fishing around super snaggy rocks. So if you're making a turn, the rig isn't falling into the rocks and getting snagged, it's keeping it up above the rock. So that's a great little deal. VMC came out with these new spinners this year and having a little float on there when you're fishing real snaggy cover is a super handy thing to have. It's kind of cool. You see them, saw them on Mega Live, saw them on 2D, and then results in a fish. <laughs> so when it comes to bottom bouncers, you know, and, and weight, kind of the rule of thumb that I like to go by is roughly an ounce for every 10 feet of water that you're fishing. But Ty's got a two ouncer on and I actually have a three ouncer on and, and having different weights staggered will actually prevent you from tangling too often. So, ooh, ooh, whoa, a bit better fish. Um, it's nice to have the, that staggering and then I can really adjust that three ouncer. I'm keeping this almost vertical underneath the boat. So it's good. Oh geez, really nice fish. All right. I'm losing for you, Jer. Oops. All right, thanks. Sweet, sweet. When you're talking about bottom bounce fishing, my rod reel of choice is definitely a bait caster. Number one, it's it's really comfortable to hang on to. Number two, I like the bait casting reel because of line management. When you're talking about working up and down uh, different depths in the water column, it's really easy to push that button, and reel it back up uh, very fast because you want, again, you want that bottom bouncer as close to the bottom as you possibly can. You want that bait riding just off the bottom because that's where the walleyes typically are. And Ty mentioned the bait cast equipment that we're using and I, I think it's abs an absolute must and there's specialized equipment now for this. The setup that both Ty and I are using is made for this. We're both using bounce and troll rods. Ty's got the St. Croix Legend Tournament, the Blue Rod, and this is a new line. They've got the Avid Walleye series. This is just an awesome series a little less expensive than the Legend Tournament, but the quality is amazing. And they're both medium heavy power, moderate fast action rods. And then we've got um, these Daiwa line counter reels on here, just a size 100. Just a perfect setup. And of course I've got braid on here. I like the yellow braid, that way you can always see where somebody's line is. 15 pound 832 and boom, we're in business. This feels like a nicer fish, Ty. Another awesome fish. He swims right Whoa. over the net like he's supposed to. Bam! Bingo, bango. This segment is brought to you by Wavy Label Eyewear. Backed by a lifetime warranty, we see what others don't. Well, I would say in terms of finding fish, laying out the structure, we've used the auto chart live. We've got a good feel of how this structure is laid out. We could come back and jig fish this, no problem. We can make passes through here, trolling again and cream them. It's definitely, definitely paid off. Another walleye, beautiful. Definitely pays to come out, troll a lot of these structures. Trolling is just simply a fantastic way to learn new water on these Northern Canadian lakes like this, boom. Walleyes, trout, everything is susceptible to trolling. Learn lots, catch lots. Awesome, let's get it back. Summer is a great time to target Lakers because they're in relatively predictable locations. Lake trout prefer cold water, 
So when temps reached the mid 50s and higher, lake trout ventured to deeper basins. Many lake trout fisheries have basins of 100 feet and deeper. These deep water areas are often where we begin the search. And the search was started by Paul pointing out some of the key lake trout holes on this paper map. Now the Cranberry chain of lakes doesn't have a digital map, so we're using AutoChart Live to make our own map. We quickly find the deep water, then search for deep humps, points, bottom transitions, food, and of course, lakers. The more time we spend in an area, the better our map becomes. Another key to finding lake trout is locating the thermocline. In warm water, treat the thermocline like the surface of the lake. Your electronics can show you this, and in many cases, it's between 25 to 35 feet down. This screenshot shows you that it's roughly 30 feet. Notice none of the bigger marks are above 30 feet. Our best spot was a classic, a saddle between a point with a gradual drop from 40 to 60 feet before quickly dumping into 120. Across from the point was a giant rock that topped off at around 45 feet. We were getting bit consistently with baits running between 45 to 55 feet down. Viewed from the lens of fishing legend Dick Pearson, this makes great sense. There are multiple edges converging here. The edge of both structures and the narrow 15-foot band of water above them to the thermocline. It's a natural funnel and the perfect spot for trout to hunt. Oh, it definitely feels like a gooder fish. Ah, come on, baby. Got the clip on there. At least you didn't have to fight the board. That's a nicer fish. Yes, it is. Yep. There's two nice fish now. We put. No, don't do what I did and go ahead and lose it with 10 feet to go. I still got 135. So. <laughs> One thing that's super important too, like you don't want to over, over fight this fish. I mean, let your, let your rod do the work, let the drag do the work. If you start reeling and you're not moving the, the needle on the line coming in, just let that fish work itself out. It'll, it's going to get tired. And don't used to, pump. Yeah, don't pump. Yeah, let's that, let that rod do the work. That's why we got these specific rods. Let that flex work. Let that fish just tire itself out. It'll come in. You know, these dr Daiwa drags have the best drag of any reel out there. See them down. I just don't want to force them in. Get about 25 feet. Oh, nice trout. Yep. Real nice trout. Real nice trout, Ty. Yep, beautiful fish. Yep. Oh, yeah. Another Bubbles are coming out. Another, another, another yeah. dandy. Yeah, that one is a step up. For sure. Uh, that's another big fish. Uh, look at that, huh? Oh, wow, Get yeah. In. Here's your fish, dude. Another great lake trout, huh? Whew. Nice. Cool. Do you want a quick photo quick or not? There we go. Another trout, I gotta get us up the... Nice one? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I marked this rock here. It comes up pretty shallow. We're gonna be okay because it goes from 40 to 100. Instantly, it's a 60 foot high rock. It's kinda cool, you can... I'll show you guys a screenshot of where we're fishing right now. It's such a cool piece of structure here. So check out this video or this screenshot here of where we caught this trout. And if you're a trout fisherman, you'll be like, oh yeah, oh yeah. That is a trout spot if I've ever seen one. Pretty cool. And it takes a while to find that kind of stuff out here. And this auto chart has been absolutely crucial for this type of program. Doing this thing, it's important that the, you've got the front deck clear because the person in the back with long rods Needs to be able to net. That's a, is it a regular? It's a, it's a regular. Well, it's a regular, huh? Yeah. I thought it was bigger. So that was on a number eight shad wrap. Your style of boat control is really key. One that was there from the very beginning. You want to be able to see in the water. The adventure begins. We are loaded for bear. We got you know, fights. there's so many different ways to fish for water. Dependability and efficiency. Simple, fast, and easy. The best rods on a planet. Oh, just a regular. Regular. 
<laughs> trout, they just never quit. Sweet, back he goes. I gotta get motor in gear so we don't get hung up. Most of the time when you use sonar, the settings that come right out of the box are fantastic. However, when you're lake trout fishing and fishing deep water, that is definitely a time you want to make adjustments to your sonar settings. So one of the things that I like to do, especially with down imaging, and we use down imaging to really truth what we're seeing with traditional 2D sonar is change the frequency from mega, which is a really high frequency sonar, to the 455, which was the original frequency when side imaging and down imaging came out. And that lower frequency travels and gives you a better return in that deeper water. So the lower frequency, you know, it, it, it goes slower, but it comes back and gives you a crisper picture. So if you're going through this 100, 150 feet of water, with your mega imaging, a lot of times you're not seeing much on down imaging. So you go, what's going on? All of a sudden you change it to 455 and boom, things light up. So definitely when you're lake trout fishing, this is the time to just sit and play with your electronic settings and hey, you're just, you're out here in open water. It's a great time where you can just make a little adjustment here, see how it looks and, and just keep tinkering with it. And eventually you're gonna find something that works really well and see more fish. It might be it. Would that be something if it's the first one? Yeah. <clears throat> I think it's going to be a good night if this is how it's going to be, Jer. Yeah. It's kind of a, you know, you come up and you look at this stuff, you hear most of the time when you hear people talk about trolling for lake trout, the places they're like, oh, you got to have down riggers, and you, you really don't. Like, we're just using the offshore snaps, so we're, we're just adding weight, just snap on weights to the line, and it, it works pretty good. You just get these heavy lead balls, you know, we're running eight and ten ounces on these lines and that's getting our baits down you know at two and a half miles an hour we're able to get our lines down in that 55 to 70 foot range really effectively and that's uh it's been pretty awesome so you need some more speed you got to keep that pressure on these fish because we are using barbless hooks barbless hooks and the rod he's using this is actually a, a trolling rod it's one of the icon uh, trolling rods from St. Croix and look at that it just can take uh, great flex I mean that thing this one's got eight ounces of lead and a huge planer board I mean you've got a huge fish and whatever but it takes all that flex it's just a great this fish great is stick. <laughs> this is I mean if this isn't a big fish I will swim back all right <laughs> thing of beauty He's this not... is a little different than some of the other ones that uh, you just kind of reel them up this is not a reel them up fish this is not okay I see your lead See the Ooh, trout. There's a fish. There's looks burping. Looks nice. nice. One. Yep. Real nice one, Ty. Really. Oh, oh look at man, that. that's a wow. Whoa. Wow. That Whoa. Is, that's a Whoa. huge Whoa. trout. Dude. Dude, that's a magnet biker. That is a big trout. Wow. Whoa. Look at the size of this thing. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Whoa. Jeez. So backward. Whoa. I mean, these things are special. These are prehistoric, and they're just unbelievable fish, man. Like, these are fish of a lifetime, right? You come up here, this is what people come up here for, to catch these giant mammoth lake trout like this. It is incredible. Whoa. They like to eat when you're throwing the right thing. You don't have all bluebird flat calm days. Just a perfect eating size fish. See, that's what I'm talking about, these Daiwa drinks. We got walleye stuff, we got crappie stuff, we got pike stuff. This boat is rigged up about as nice, easy to use, and it flat out works. It's a must have when you're talking about big waves. Well, these trout are so darn tough. This bait is legendary. See, Mr. Trout? And back to the depths. See ya. All right, ideally we would have regular lead, you know, balls for doing this, but of course we've had mishaps, we're learning, we've got these things hung up on the rocks, so we're improvising right now. We need eight ounces, and so this is kind of how we're doing it. We've got kind of a hodgepodge of lead, but this is the secret to it. We've got these little offshore clips, and you want to make sure you've got them. You probably can't see that, but there's a little peg on the inside. That's going to keep it from sliding off if it happens to when it gets to your swivel for your leader. So make sure that if you get the clips when you're doing this, if you come up here doing this, you, you've got the clips that have the little peg on it. That's definitely gonna prevent it from popping off. It's gonna save you a few, few lead balls, but that's our little, that's the little rig we're gonna use to try to make things meet. But 
Might not look pretty, but it sure is working. The selection of lures we pack for trolling lakers deep is pretty simple. It's mostly spoons. From our experience in these northern waters, bigger is usually better. There are countless options for trout trolling spoons on the market. The biggest lure Jensen Coyote spoon is a classic, and even some of the bigger flutter spoons popular for bass fishing can work really well. A good complement to trolling spoons is the quick fish. This bait has a crazy wide thump and is lively even at slower speeds. It's one of the few hard baits that can be added to a spoon spread and function properly. There are times when Lakers have a strong preference for quick fish, so don't travel north without these. So with this trolling out here, it does pay to do different moves. Speeding up, slowing down is obviously a big key, but one of the techniques that we've been doing where a lot of bites have come is I'm turning the tiller really quickly back and forth. And unlike when you're fishing just straight crankbaits on a flat line, when you make that turn, one bait's gonna speed up on the outside corner, dive deeper, the other one is gonna rise up and move slower. Well, when you've got you know, eight, 10 ounces of lead when you're doing that move, one still speeds up, but then the other one plummets. It falls really quickly. And I, a lot of the bites I think are coming as that ball is just falling, it's plummeting. So the trout might be chasing it, chasing it, chasing it. You make that turn on the inside, the bait falls quickly, and then you start to pick it up and bam, they get it. So it's different than just fishing with a, a crankbait. Having that heavy lead on there is doing different things, making the baits move vertically depending on how you're operating the boat. And it's kind of a cool thing for triggering fish. Got one. All right, so I'm gonna do this thing. Took us a while to figure this out, but I've got the micro remote on the Minn Kota trolling motor here. And I'm just putting things at one mile an hour. That just kind of keeps the set moving. And I'll use the uh, autopilot feature just to maintain the course. And that's been great for not getting our stuff tangled. Cause we made the mistake earlier of trying to troll too fast. You lose fish or if you stop and you leave lines out they just inevitably get snagged and you break stuff off, so. <laughs> I like when the line's singing, you can hear the line. Look at that sucker, will not Tight. come up. My luck, it's oh, oh, just gonna be regular. Here, here. Don't go any further. No, that's a nice trout. Here, that's oh, a, that's a big one. That's a big one. Ty. Yes. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Wow, that's a big one. <laughs> Oh, right, dude. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. That's not, all right. Look at that burping trout. Look at that green hues on it. I'd say Viking Lodge coming up here fishing for walleyes and trout is absolutely an amazing experience. Dude, this is absolutely incredible. Woo, I'm loving it. Have you ever said something that as soon as you finish saying it, you thought, oh my gosh, I wish I never said this, but you don't get a do-over. It's said, it's done. We all been there. We all know what I'm talking about. You wish you could take some of these things back. Some of them have a major impact on people's lives, not only yours. And I'll give you an example of something that really, so it sounded simple, but it left a mark on me. And it happened just a short while ago, spring of the year. I'm crappie fishing on a lake not too far from, my, uh, from our office. There's two boats of us out there and, and we're catching a reasonable amount of fish. We're coming to, to get back off to go to another spot, pull the boat out of the water. And there's two guys anchored in, in, in a, a, a boat fishing a particular area. And I'm following the boat in front of me to get off the water. And where these guys were fishing, I know this sounds dumb. It was tight, tight between shore, and we came kind of closer than we should have between them and the spot that they were fishing. And as, as we came through, these guys in the boat had some choice words for us. And one of them, the last thing he says is, I passed through, he says, Al, you should know better. I went through, I can't forget those words. Al, you should know better. I should have stopped and went back and apologized, I didn't. Hey, I hope you're watching that television show right now. I'm really sorry, 
I'm really sorry. Your words meant a lot to me. It, res it went in, it burned into my heart. As somebody that professes to be a Bible-believing Christian, I should know better. My action should make a difference. And I can't tell you how often that was a check in my mind and in my spirit. I should know better. And I just have to share that with you. Because again, if you're watching, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What you said, those words, I should know better, have changed my life for the better. Hey, from all of us here at the Edge, you have a good safe fishing season. We'll see you on the water. Cold water fishing is a relative term based on where you live in North America. For many southern bass anglers, fishing in 40 degree water is generally considered extraordinarily tough conditions to catch bass. In the North Country, where bass have a far shorter growing season, they have to feed when they can. Many of these fish live under the ice for four to five months throughout a year. Believe it or not, the Angling Edge staff targets smallmouth and largemouth bass through the ice. During cold water windows, suspending or slow moving lures can be absolutely magical. Let's join Al and Troy Lindner with more cold water bass fishing logic and tactics. I, I love that shadow wrap, the original one. You got to go down and deep it in cold water and got to get some depth. That's the bait, definitely the bait of choice. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. kind of lethargical in, in 42 degree water. I've seen a few of them moving around here. Yes, look at it, should barely wallow. <laughs> barely, barely wallow. Hang on. But it's a start, a start fish. Troy and I are doing something we absolutely love to do. Now last year in fall, we left off on an amazing bite of big smallmouth. One of the best bites of big smallmouth I've ever had in the late fall. You know, in fact, that one day try I got a 22 incher. You know, some real monsters. Then he headed back south for the winter, and it's spring, and every spring he comes back up here in, uh, in the upper Midwest. And we, our first trip is almost always a smallmouth ice out trip. You know, so the water is really cold, but we know what to expect. You know, we're on water that's 40 to 42, maybe 43 degrees. But we know how to catch a few of them here and there. And I think we'll get a couple of big ones to boot. We're on a lake I haven't been on for quite a few years. Yeah, I know the lake pretty well. I've been here before years ago, but I'd say it's been six, seven years since I've been on this lake. I've seen some fish here probably a half a dozen of them laying down there on, uh, on my mega live. I can't, you know, I can't look at it. There's, there's one right there now too. You know, I can see them moving through here. We're fishing through some. You know, the afternoon might kick them up a little bit, but at least we got to start. Yeah, the difference between last spring and this spring, one thing when you talk about electronics, this is the first time that I've seen the new hummingbird Mega Live. This is the first time I've actually seen it, not online or on TV. I'm actually in the boat fishing and kind of watching Dad use it up on the front of the boat. I don't know if he's going to let me take the front at all, but it's pretty cool to see the fish move and react in real time. It's nice having two units on the console like this. You can see the boulders off to the right of the boat. Actually, there's some deeper boulders, it looks like, to the left of the boat. And then I have a nice map here. We got a, actually, we're sitting on a waypoint there, nice depth contours and then the Mega Live on the front. 
it's just kind of interesting always to see, you know, he has that forward facing imaging there with the trolling motor. So it is interesting to see the depth up there. I can also kind of recognize the weeds and when he kicks us actually to the right and the left, it kind of gives me a little idea what the cover looks like. You know, I can see the structure here and this gives me a little bit better what the cover and this obviously is a, is a crystal clear image of the boulders exactly around of the boat to the right. Those big boulders right there. All right, I got to make a cast. That felt like a bite. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> This segment is brought to you by Sunset Country, Ontario, Canada. You gotta come visit. Okay, I, I threw back where you, where you caught that one, and sure enough, this one, oh, this one's, oh, this one might be a little bit more active than yours. It's gonna take me a second, I'll let you, let's see if I can get this one. There, look at that. Okay. Look at how fat they are, look at that. These are those Dakota fish. Oh, Troy, did he come off? Yeah, yeah. Look at how fat they are. I mean, they're built like tanks, man. <clears throat> yeah, you know, let's see, we've been out for a while. The morning bite was, was sucking wind. You know, now we're, get, we're getting out here the afternoon bite, starting to pull a few of these, few of these fish in. It's getting their interest. It's 40, warmed up the surface temp of 43, all right? With no wind. To get a little better understanding of where these fish are right now, let's rewind. Basically, just a little over a week ago, this lake was actually covered with ice. In the North Country, smallmouth bass live under the ice for a large portion of the year. These overwintering locations are generally deeper boulder flats in depths from 20 to 30 feet of water. In some cases, these wintering holes may be holding monstrous schools of big ground bass. When the ice finally melts in the spring, the first shallow movement revolves around two critical factors that bass need at this time, warmth and food. The best spring areas are often expansive rock and gravel flats around four to eight feet deep, which are the exact same flats where they'll eventually spawn. Now keep in mind, not all the fish do the same thing at the same time. They move a lot, and I mean a lot, based on any changing environmental conditions. Example, if you have three stable warm days, expect lots of fish to quickly move up into these flats. But during a spring cold front, smallmouths will move and can often be found staging along the perimeter of the flat, say in 10 to 15 feet of water. One good point to remember is that these fish tend to be aggressive during this first shallow movement. Day in and day out, horizontal lures like jerk baits and finesse swim baits tend to shine. Seems sometimes this whole flat just can light up with them. Let me just spin around and go back on the point here. I think these fish are just coming in from that deeper, they're coming in out of the deep water. That's their contact point, this point. Then they'll come up and spread. The spot that we're fishing on now is a, a main, main migration route for these fish that have been wintering in deep water. If you look at this massive structure, big giant flat behind us that they're gonna go up on and eventually spawn on with big boulders and they're gonna get there now. But the first point, this point goes out and drops off the deep water pretty quick with rocks on it. That's the first contact point. These fish we're catching here are right up on this. As the day goes on, a few more keep coming up, coming up, coming up. We'll probably catch some fish going back down this way. Just, the sun is waking them up. You know, when you're looking at water temps, right now in that 42, 43, 44 degrees, very early season, there's a few baits that are must haves that you want tied on to the end of your line this time of year. Like we said earlier, think horizontal running lures when the water temps are in the low 40 to 50 degree range. Three top choices are suspending jerk baits, finesse swim baits, and hair jigs. Keep in mind that because of the cold water temperature, these fish are somewhat lethargic, but they're still more than willing to bite. The key to getting bit is to get a bait moving slowly at their level. That's why suspending jerk baits are a mainstay. The Rapala x rap is a known producer at this time frame, especially if the fish are up on a flat in that four to eight foot range. Next, the key is figuring out how long to pause the bait. 
With water in the low 40s, you may have to let that bait sit for four to five seconds and let the hackle teaser tail entice sluggish fish into striking the bait. Secondly, we use a lot of big bite baits and a 3.5 suicide shed rigged on a light jig head can be deadly. The beauty of this swim bait is you can fish it from the shallows to the deep depending on your retrieve speed and jig weight. Jig weight is really important. We like to use a light 1 16th and 1 8 ounce BMC finesse half moon jig, which enables you to really slow down the bait and roll it along just right. Big Bite has an incredible selection of lifelike color patterns, which can make a big difference when the fish are finicky. Third, the BMC Marabou hair jig can be a silent killer. In fact, a simple do nothing horizontal retrieve can sometimes outproduce every other bait at the start of the fishing season. Cast it out, let it sink two or three feet near the bottom, then just simply reel it steady and slow back. Finally, the Shadow Wrap Deep is a money bait when those fish are out in that 10 to 15 foot range off the flat. We often make a long cast off the back of the boat, get the Minn Kota on at about 30%, and simply jerk troll along the deep break line. We can cover so much water doing this, and the best part is that your bait is always at the depth, working with no dead time. The bottom line is you need to have horizontal running lures that you can fish up on a flat, on the edge, and slightly off the break to be truly a successful ice out smallmouth fisherman. You know, we got those handful of, of known producing baits for this real early ice out bite when it's so cold, the water temperature is so cold. But the, uh, at no time will both of us be throwing the exact same bait. He's throwing here, I'll be jerking. Yeah, you know, a, a, as an example, uh, if, I, if he's jerking, I'll be throwing, I'll be swimming a, a, a boot tail, but, but we won't both be throwing the exact same thing. And it's amazing you, how you see the difference. How the fish will bite one thing, they won't, and then you might see a little pattern a little later, a different pot of fish on something else. So, so I mean, you got to be, these rods rig right, and don't be afraid to grab a different rod, but don't fish the same thing the other guy is fishing. I've got her that time. Let's see what we got going here. I'm going to spot lock here a minute. Feels like a real good brown bass. We are loaded for bear. We got you know, bites. there's so many different ways to fish for water. Dependability and efficiency. Simple, fast, and easy. The best rods on the planet. They like to eat when you're throwing the right thing. You don't have all bluebird flat calm days. Just a perfect eating size fish. See, that's what I'm talking about, these die with drag. We got walleye stuff, we got crappie stuff, we got pike stuff. It big is. Walleye. Oh, big, it's a big walleye. Big walleye. Do you want a net on that one? Yeah. Or you, that's what I had before. I don't know if it's the same fish or not. That's a nice walleye. That's a big walleye. That's the, the beauty of this time of the year. Yeah, you know, what we're doing here, these walleyes are in pre-spawn. And, uh, you, you know, throwing these baits that we're throwing. Uh, you, get, you get some bonuses every now and then, like this. <laughs> I mean, they kind of go hand in hand, you know. The walleye spawn about 44 to 48. You know, so there, you know, she's carrying nice. That other one I had before this was probably a big, big gal like this one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Outstanding. The jerkbait rod that I'm throwing today is really sweet. It's the new uh, Legend Tournament Series from St. Croix. And uh, they did a, a tweaking uh, on the Legend Tournament Series, and it's really, really good. This one is... 6'8", medium power, extra fast. And it's great for jerkbait fishing. And my reel is a, uh, a, a Daiwa Kage MQLT, and it's really sweet, 2500 series XH. It's uh, a deadly combination. Drags that Daiwa has, it's like a, a fine-tuned watch. They don't make junk, they make great stuff. So Dad got that fish and, and we spot locked down. And it's the nice thing about, about that Minkota spot lock. It's subtle adjustments on it and it's very quiet and it's really important 
when you're fishing shallow fish like this, they can be a little bit spooky. In spring of the year, when a lot of fish are in shallow water, like walleyes, smallmouth, largemouth, crappies, bluegills, you know, you know, a good pair of sunglasses is key, even on a slightly overcast day like this, to, to knock out the hay, haze. And you could see little mats of weeds, you could see the boulder, the spot on the spot, and without them, uh, I can't say enough, it's one of the key, key, key aids, you know, to catching fish in shallow water. Yeah, these wavy labels, they have fantastic lenses, whether you choose the plastic option or glass, they're very comfortable to wear. And, and a big, you know, a big thing is they, oh, a bite. they have a, a lifetime warranty, which is, you know, which is kind of rare when you're looking at all the different sunglass choices out there, a lifetime warranty. You know, some of the, the finer points of hair jigging, especially if you're myself here in the back of the boat, you can just cast it out, drag it off the back, or else just cast it off the side. I like to reel it just kind of nice and slow and actually like to hit off, you know, especially when the weed growth isn't up, I want it hitting off some of those rocks and just kind of bouncing off them. And a lot of times that'll trigger, you know, those small mouth to bite where it's kind of swimming along, bounces off a rock and then they'll bite it. And the other nice thing, if, if you have somebody on the front, like my dad's fishing a jerk bait, I can just throw the hair jig off the back like oh, this. Got him, got and him. Just kind of drag it and set the hook. Got him. When he's not setting the hook in the front, this boat is rigged up about as nice, easy to use, and it flat out works. It's a must have when you're talking about big waves. Well, these trout are so darn tough. This bait is legendary. Well, that was on a number eight shad wrap. Your style of boat control is really key. One that was there from the very beginning. You want to be able to see in the water. The adventure begins. You know, this particular rod, rod, rod I've, I've got suffix. Uh, braid on here, you know, and I got about a, a seven or eight foot suffix fluorocarbon leader. And this is a great, great combo. You got sensitivity, casting distance, everything. I use this a lot. You know, when I'm jerking like this, we're moving along pretty fast. I go one, two, three, then pause, pause for a long time. One, two, three, pause for a long time. I'm up, I'm fishing flats that are anywhere from uh, four to four to maybe eight foot. Yeah, yeah, you know, so that's it. It's boom, 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 pause. Boom, 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 pause. Now when I pick up, when I have some deeper fish, like some of these other deeper structures that we've been on, yeah, you know, where I'm, where I'm throwing the shadow wrap, the pause is a lot longer when you're deeper. You know, I, I'm, I'm pausing a lot longer when I'm, when I'm trying to call those fish. Let's say that shadow wrap, it goes deeper than, the, than this bait. The shadow wrap will go down. Let's say I've got fish in 12 feet of water. 10, 12 feet, feet and a lot of our lakes, that's pretty typical this time of the year. You know, so you got these fish, you could see them down there two, three feet off the bottom. And you want that bait, that uh, shadow wrap will get down there. And I'll use that with pure fl straight fluorocarbon. And it pulls the bait down. You get a little more depth with the shadow wrap, the fl fluorocarbon versus the braid. Gives you a little more depth, fluorocarbon's heavy, it pulls yep. the bait and you leave it sit longer. And it's a slow sink. You know, so you get deeper that, remember that strike zone is really small, really small now. Those fish could see it, but they're, they're not gonna run a long distance when that water's in the 40s. So, so yeah, you know, it's all, what is, what's the strike zone to the pause, to the cadence? All of those things come into play. A little bit better one here. <clears throat> you know, we might be onto something, jerk trolling these big flats, Troy. Look at that. That's a pretty good one. You're getting up there, really getting up there in size. You know, it's amazing to me, being a, a, a smallmouth fanatic my whole life, these are my favorite fish, there's no question about it. And the smallmouth explosion that you see all over the country just continues. It's all over Canada, it's in lakes, rivers, or reservoirs. The smallmouth boom is hot and heavy. But another area that it's really interesting to me is in these the, the, the states west of the Mississippi River, states like South Dakota, North Dakota, uh, uh, Idaho as an example. Many people believe the next world record smallmouth is gonna come out of Idaho. And uh, these western reservoirs, rivers, and lakes, 
the smallmouth have adapted extremely, extremely well in oh, all of them. Uh, uh, Troy's fished all of the uh, Colorado River system from Hot. Powell Look to Mead to, to Havasu, uh, 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 all the way down. What, you were even catching smallmouth almost on the Mexico border? Yeah, that, that was actually back in Arizona just a few weeks ago. And, and well, the air temps down there at the time were about 90 degrees, a little bit different than what we have here. One. Those are the ones I want us to. Got him. Oh, oh. Good one. Whoa. Good one. Got him. That's the bait. Definitely the bait of choice. Right, Troy? When is it too early to come out for the smallmouth bass? Never the transition area. They're biting under the ice if you know where they winter. Then you give them about five to seven days after ice out, and they're ready to chew again. One thing about smallmouth, they like to bite, they like to fight. Isn't that a good combination? That's why it's my favorite fish, Troy's favorite fish, and many of the guys I work with. Hey, I get lots of emails on a regular basis. I just want to read this one to you. And it was titled, True Inspirational Humor, True Story. A longtime viewer of your fishing shows and one who truly appreciates your inspirational endings to your shows, I thought I would share this true story. A colleague of mine was stricken when in his mid-50s with a very strange nerve-based illness that after years of treatments and therapies continued to degrade his mobility, his mobility until eventually he lost the use of his legs and generally became depressed about his failing condition. Since he was unable to do many of the general home maintenance projects any longer, most of the work had to be hired out. As he sat in his wheelchair one morning feeling bad and a bit depressed, he got a text message on his phone. The message was short and simple. Jesus will be there shortly. Shocked by the message, my friend started thinking, the end is near, and, and Lord, I'm not ready to go yet, he thought. What will I say if Jesus actually comes for me? Well, his mind was put to ease when later that day there was a knock on his door. It wasn't Jesus. It was Jesus, pronounced Jesus, a Hispanic worker there to do some roof repair. Needless to say, my friend was relieved to know he still had time to finish his divinely assigned task here on Earth. A little bit of humor, but some serious note behind the humor. When our time comes, and it's going to come for all of us, do you have the peace of God in your heart because of the shed blood of Jesus? That when it's time to check out, you're going to go to heaven? Something to think about this week. Hey, from all of us here at the Edge, you have a great fishing season. We'll see you in the water. Crappies are real seasonal movers and shakers. Throughout a year, it's common to catch them in back bays in depths as shallow as one to four foot in spring. On main lake weed points in depths of eight to 15 foot during the summer months, then in basin areas in depths of 25 to 30 foot during the fall into the winter. Following fish seasonally, using good electronics, and paying attention to presentation subtleties are all part of the puzzle to catch crappie on the move. And to catch crappies consistently, you must be willing to move with them. The good thing is they tend to move in large packs of fish that can be easily identified on your electronics. Today on the Angling Edge, Al and Dan Lindner focus on finding and catching post-spawn crappie. <laughs> and he got to get out of the office yep. for a while. Perfect, perfect These day. are giants. What a day, what a fun day, you man. You got it. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. Got him. Nice. You seen that, didn't yeah, you, Dan? I saw that. Your, your, your heart is beating, ain't it? <laughs> yeah. And it's a good one. You might need a net. There's some good ones here. Okay, I'll get the net for you, big. She's a good one. Look at that, huh? Yes. When, you know you got good crops when oh, you got a net. Oh, look at that. Oh, nice. 
Whoa. Whoa. How's that for a, wow. How's that for a starter? That's a good one, ain't it? I told Danny, you better have your big boy, big boy boots on today for the crappies we're going for. And uh, I cheated a little bit. I came out here yesterday and uh, I told Dan, uh, I'm catching some really big crappies. Now, Dan and I don't get a chance to fish as much as we like to, you know, cause he's always working. He's editing, shooting shows. He's got a young family, he's busy. Although we do get a chance to get out and his favorite fish is a crappie. Just like it is for many of you. Crappie are your favorite fish. And in our part of the world, we're at one of those times where I would consider it uh, a peak period of sorts for, for, for these crappies. I'll explain that a little bit as we start catching a few more fish. It's crappy time, Dano. You know, it seems like every year you keep on saying the same thing. The springs are strange, you know, it's either high water, low water, late season, and that's what it happens to be this year. We're about three weeks behind where we would normally be at this time frame. And so these weeds have not fully developed. That's where we're at right now, at least in uh, central Minnesota. We're throwing up into about six, and I'm holding an eight to nine, and the magic depth seems to be somewhere around seven-ish. But what the real magic is, is weeds. Weeds, these weed beds are not up the way they should be yet. You know, because of the late season. I mean, it was crazy this year. We're, we're chasing three weeks like we there are for go. any kind of fish. Counted that one down to about four, Al. You'll notice he's fishing with the float. I'm swimming a jig. And when we start out doing this, fish is coming up. Didn't need fish. a net, I'm sure. Oh yeah, yep. They're, they're nettable fish, Dano. Right it's always good fish. Oh, yeah. Come Whoa. on, Mr. Clam. Oh, oh Clam. I, I can't stretch my arm that far. Okay. There you right. go. There you go. Swim in that. Swim in that little jig. Look at that beauty, huh? Beautiful crappie. Thank you, Al. Like I said, Al's fishing with a float, and I'm swimming a jig. And when we start out doing this, you'll see a preference on any given day whether the fish want it swimming or underneath that float, so you always want to have two rods rigged. Yeah, like uh, like I was saying, I was testing, whenever you're casting a and swimming a jig back, you're always kind of messing with the, the countdown method. You'll cast it out there, give it a one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,004, and then slowly swim that bait back up and around and through those weeds. And when you get onto a countdown time like that one was on four i'll replicate that you know what i mean rinse and repeat and uh and that'll up your odds and catch more fish you know in what's a big fish in our part of the world the big crappie these these are a nice eater this is uh, you know right in that eating size and and uh, uh when you get a 14 inch or, or above and occasionally 15 inch we get out of these lakes here you know, once in a while bigger than that. That's a, that's a big upper Midwest crappie by, by a long shot. What's happening here, the, it, it's that time of the year we, we, that we often refer to as a summer peak for different kinds of fish. And these, these big fish are out here now. You're seeing a lot of big fish. They are the first size fish. These crappies are the first got ones him. to go in. He's got a crappie there. Boy. See, I got that. I got that. That timing down at, at about five is when you start swimming it back. Oh, <laughs> holy! Oh man! Holy you, you got Moses! One of those toads, Moses Dan. Malone! You got I a thought it was a bass. You got a toad. This segment is brought to you by Wavy Label Eyewear, backed by a lifetime warranty. We see what others don't. I thought it was a bass. You got a Holy toad, cow. I got the countdown. Oh. Don't help be my hero. Oh. Oh, that's a... <laughs> Look at the size of this. Dude, that is a big, big crappity. Mr. Clam produced. I'll oh, get that hook out of there. That's a big crappie, believe me. That is a dandy. Holy cow, man. That is a magnum. And like what uh, Al was talking about, 
um, in this uh, time frame right now, a lot of the, the first fish in, these big ones like this, are the first fish in and the first fish out. And you gotta understand what's happening. It's a late season, so these fish don't have a lot of time to dilly-dally. They go in, do their business, and they get back out. And these big ones are the first ones out on this, on this weed line, the pivot point. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Wow, we bye-bye. These fish just finished spawning just a little while ago. And uh, there's probably still males up in the shallow water. That's why you're seeing all the big fish out here right now. And the whole thing revolves around weeds, weeds, and more weeds. As these weed beds develop uh, on these edges in the early in the season like this, they're patchy weeds. So you gotta find the weeds and the crappies will gravitate to the weeds on the first initial drop off. Some, some lakes, dark water lakes, that could be a, a four foot edge and another lake, it might be a six or eight foot edge like it is on, on the lake that we're on. Some crystal clear lakes, it might be 10, 12 feet. But wherever the weeds start to develop, those crappies will go there. As the season goes on, those weeds can get so thick that you can hardly penetrate it. Those crappies will live in there and they don't come out until late evening. They come to the edge or come above, above the weeds at, in the evening. But this time of the year, when you find them like this, it, it's one of those magic moments. You get about two weeks of this special, fantastic weed line crappie fishing before they start getting hard to get out and they penetrate pretty good. Right now, you can get a, a bait out in front of their face. You know, and Al's talking about those sparse weed clumps that are out right now, and that's where your electronics, uh, electronics can be very advantageous, especially side imaging. Uh, at this time frame, because if you look down this break to that break, there could be clumps of weeds here, there, 100 yards spread. And for you to fish this whole thing with a float and swim in a jig like that, it'd take you a year and a day. So it, what we do a lot is drive along with our using our side imaging on the hummingbird, and you find those clumps of weeds. At least it gives you a starting point where those clumps of weeds are at and likely the fish, you know. So it'll uh, expedite your fish catching process by using uh, side imaging to your advantage. Like we said er earlier, we start off, each guy has got a, a float rod and a, a swim jig rod. Right now, he's doing better than I am uh, on that swim jig, but I'm catching some on a float. And it's interesting to see, if we were all fishing floats and nobody was swimming down a little bit deeper and tickling the top of those weeds, you might say uh, that the fish ain't biting real good today and he's kicking my butt. I'm coming through with the, the float first, you know, and I'm getting some nice fish, but he's getting more behind me. So it gives you an idea. You watch what's happening. You always let the fish tell you what they're doing. And nothing is, is better than doing a little bit of an experiment. One thing we almost never do is both guys in a boat fish the exact same bait at the exact same depth doing the exact same thing at any given time. We're always mixing it up, mixing it up, mixing it up. And uh, at the end, one guy, it might be a 60-40 to the to float to the swim jig, but that other percentage of fish you would have never got. You would have never got them if, if you didn't it didn't change up. Got them. Nice. Got him, got him. Oh, I'm going right back into the, the sweet spot there. I, I, I moved I moved the touch. Oh, look at that side. Look at the side. Right in that same spot right there. I got the sweet spot, Dan. I'm picking up quick with the cork. <laughs> Whoa. They're not, not a giant. I'm, I'm, I am getting a little bit spoiled when I'm saying not a giant. Ooh, I flipped that and I shouldn't have. He was bigger than I thought, and he broke my jig off, look at that. That's what I get for trying to flip a fish like this. Yeah, you should sh show, <laughs> hey, gotta, show them that I jig. I gotta tell you a little bit about this jig that I'm using. You know, we do a lot of work, work, work. one of our soft bait, bait partners is Big Bite Baits. They're one of the biggest manufacturer of soft plastic baits in the whole wide world. And they always ask us, give us an idea of some new designs for, for smallmouth, for largemouth. And, and I said, what about panfish? And uh, everybody, panfish is a big business. I said, I got a bait I'd like you to consider. And I want you to look at this bait. There's been baits similar to this on the market for a lot of years. Marabou tail, leadhead, rounded body. 
There's been a few manufacturers that made a bait like this, but they never made it this small. I catch a lot of fish on, on a bait like this. I says, give me a shape of a head, which they did. I wanted the guide, the, uh, the, tie, the tie on the hook to, to be de designed to be fished vertical under a float along with casting, but I want to be able to vertical jig it. And the body is round and that marabou teaser tail is there. And this baby, they did this right. They came out with it, and you know what they named it? They, they named it Linder's Panfish Jig. <laughs> Hallelujah, thank you, Linder's Panfish Jig. I love it. And it is one fish catching sucker. The line we're using is fluorocarbon. It's four pound test Suffolk fluorocarbon liters. And we've got nano braid for backup. I have one rod that is all mono with a fluorocarbon liter. And uh, uh, four pound test is, is what you need to do. I think one of the biggest mistakes we ever see people make, crappie fishermen and pan fishermen in general, is fishing too heavy a line, too heavy of a bait. You always want to remember in pan fishing, smaller and lighter is better. That holds true. Day in and day out, four pound test line can't be beat, unless you're fishing real heavy cover. In some cases, that's, that is it. But what are we fish? It isn't. Okay, on again, Dan. I know, watch, I'll go right back in there. So that was on a number eight, Shadrath. Your style of boat control is really key. One that was there from the very beginning. You want to be able to see in the water. The adventure begins. We are loaded for bear. We got you know, there's so many different ways to fish for water. Dependability and efficiency. Simple, fast, and easy. The best rides on a planet. With the carapides. Look at that. I switched up to a uh, float. I was getting some on that uh, swim in that jig. And like we said, we always have two rods rigged when you're doing this summertime weed line fishing. Nice little crappie. You know, crappies can be really color selective sometimes. And these Linder Panfish Special Jigs come in a variety of crappie and bluegill colors that are, uh, you know, uh, mainstays across the board, whether you fish north, south, east, or west, anywhere inside the United States, they've got a color that'll work for you. You'll notice after I got done catching that last crappie, the knot on here pulled up this way. Anytime that happens, you want to straighten that knot out so this bait is running horizontal like that. A lot of times it goes like that, boy, you'll see the bites, your, your bites will drop off immensely when it's like this. All of a sudden, bang, bang, bang. Got him. There you go. I tricked a good one, Dan. You trick I him? can tell you right now it's a it's netter. It's a good one. Get the net. That's what I like to hear from my crappie buddy. Get the net. Oh, yeah. It's one of those that thinks it's a bass. There you go. Oh. <laughs> hey, I'm bringing him to me, Pop. <laughs> there you go. All right. There you go. Okay. We made one pass there you go a pretty steady pass through and caught quite a few fish then it kind of slowed down and i said i told dan i said let's make one more pass through there we'll change some things up a little bit man it's fun catching these fish like this dan i love this yeah. i love it i love it i love it when that float goes dunk, dunk, dunk. so we changed colors i put a darker color on this one Okay, it's interesting. We have each have two different rods, and I grabbed this rod. I had a different color on, uh, on it, and you'll see, it it it's an avid panfish rod. My other rod is a panfish rod to a higher end panfish rod. Saint Croix makes a rod for about anything you can imagine. Yeah, yeah, you know, and they got panfish series rods, and I like this avid. It, it, it's a, a, a a new design slightly upda updated and it's priced really right for pan fishing. And uh, I want to talk about these reels again. We ha have, uh, have uh, Daiwa reels on and uh, there are three different reels that we have. But one thing is they're all size 1000s and that's important. The size of the reel is important and it just manages your line yeah. so much better. And I highly recommend us that, that, that you use a 1,000 size size Daiwa reel. No, I'll get it myself here, Al. 
You sure? Ready? Yep. All right. There we go. It looks like one of that wants to think he's a bass. Yeah. That means he's good. That's, he's a good one. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, you, you went, oh, you had the float yeah. on. Mr. Clammy by myself. You know where that fish was. I got him kind of pinpointed on the shoreline where I was casting. Sometimes those fish will be in little uh, little clumps. You know, when it comes to summertime fishing, it's tough to beat that uh, linear panfish jig underneath the float or swimming it for giant crappies like this. They like to eat when you're throwing the right thing. You don't have all bluebird flat calm days. Just a perfect eating size fish. See, that's what I'm talking about, these Daiwa drags. We got walleye stuff, we got crappie stuff, we got pike stuff. This boat is rigged up about as nice, easy to use, and it flat out works. It's a must have when you're talking about big waves. Well, these trout are so darn tough. This bait is legendary. Right on the number. And the boat is sitting on it. Spot lock. I just did. Oop, there we go. Look at that. See how, see how else spot locks them? Net, net, net. It looks like I'll a good one. I can You're get good? Them. Ooh, yeah. ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, yeah. ooh, dog. Big one. Okay. Else up in the front. Now I got my own net. There we go. Yeah, that's a doozy right on the numbers. Al spot locked. And I cannot say enough about spot lock for pan fishing is vital. You know, one of the most important things to be successful when you're catching crappies like this or bluegills is understanding their seasonal movement, how they relate to habitat, and you can stay on these fish all year long. Got him. Another uh, jumbo? Yeah, yeah, oh man, yeah. Jumbo Lena. Yeah. Is this the biggest, uh, uh, the granddaddy of them all? Yeah, that's the biggest fish of the day, Dan. Oh, come on! Oh. <laughs> man, oh man, oh man. Wow, wow, we were. All right, Daniel. You got it? Now oh. I'm going to come back here. And I'm going to get with my man, Dan. <sighs> the clam say, man. I told him I promised him a good day of catching big crappies. Yep. Yeah. And and it was a good day. <laughs> and he got to get out of the office yep. for a while. Perfect, perfect These day. are giants. What a day, what a fun day, you man. You got it. Did I earn my keep? You earned your keep and a cookie. Did I earn my keep? <laughs> yeah, I agree. Oh, there's another one. You got yours too? Yep. You know, numerous times, people send me an email or ask me, I did a speaking engagement or something like that. Just, hey, why do you go to church? I've watched it on television. I don't get much out of it when I go, why do you go to church? They're searching. Well, for me, it's simple. I feed my body. Yeah, 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 you know, I feed my mind. I, I read the Bible. I read up, uplifting books about fishing, the fishing industry, uh, uh, things that make, make me uh, 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 understand more things, G gives me a better view of things, more knowledge. And, uh, 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 and I go, the main reason I go is it is refreshing to me. I feed my body, I feed my mind, and I gotta feed my spirit. I read the Bible every morning, almost every morning, and I go to church on a regular basis as much as I can possibly make it happen. And it's refreshing, it gets me going for the week. And uh, the other part of that question that I say that, that I answer answer them with is is you know where they say I don't get anything out of it. I know a lot of people over the years that have left the church that they were raised in and went to a different church, and uh, their life has changed. They weren't being fed there for any particular reason. Sometimes it's them. God might want you in another place, and I believe that happens. And uh, they weren't receiving in one church, and they got in another one, and they're serving the Lord, they're on fire for God. And it's possible, I'm not saying it's the answer, I'm not there to divide churches up. I know a lot of people, myself included, that left one denomination 
to go to a different uh, uh, t- type of ch- church that is totally Bible-based. And I want, if you are one of those people that is searching, that is looking, let me give you one important tip. You're going to a church for the first time, sit in a parking lot and watch how many people are walking into that church with a Bible in their hand. If you see a good portion of that happening, it's a good bet that that this church is on fire for the things of God. If you don't see the body of believers, majority of it walking in with a Bible, you might want to take a a second thought. I'm just sharing some stuff that's on my heart with you. Maybe some of you are ready to seek God in a different way. That is not meant to divide or be a negative thing. It's a real thing. Hey, from all of us here at the Edge, you have a good, safe fishing season. We'll see you on the water. If you like walleye fishing, there are a few places on earth like Sunset Country in Northwest Ontario. My little dad is a monstrous fish. Look at the size. I'm serious. We got to get a still camera. That this dead fish is, is huge. huge. There are over 70,000 lakes nestled in pristine wilderness that host fantastic fishing opportunities. Boy, are they cool. They are so fun to fish for. Lake trout. There are also a lot of different angling options based on budgets and needs. The beauty of the trip here that impressed me the most is the average size fish. And we got two more days to, to go fish. You have numerous drive to destinations, fly in operations, and outpost camps if you really want to get away from it all. That was awesome, huh? <laughs> The good news is traveling into Canada has changed back to what it was prior to the COVID 19 pandemic. All you need is a valid passport. You don't need a vaccine card or go through the Arrive Can app process. Let's join Al and Troy Linder on a three-day walleye mission based on a campfire island on beautiful Rainy Lake. This is why, why people come up to magnificent Rainy Lake. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. Oh, well that feels good. This is just kind of a dead, that kind of just big weight. You need, a net, like on, a, you big, need a net on this or not? Yeah, yeah, it just feels like a big, yeah, let's I'm net this one. Some good our, ones here. Yeah, if you don't mind. I'm just kind of snapping off the back here. Yeah, we've been marking. I think them. I there's some mark. I marked some pretty good just fish. Just staying down. down. Yeah. Just. All right. That's better water. Drag isn't too. I don't have the drag like super That's tight. Better water. I could tell on the head. Yeah, yeah. It's feeling. Now it's starting to wake up. Before it was just kind of a. I marked. I'm marking them under us here. I'm marking some good ones. Yeah. Oh yeah. Up there. Nice one. Oh, nice yeah. fish. Nice fish. Yeah. Oh right, yeah. There you go. Oh, oh okay. there you oh, go. Perfect. Bait just I knew they were there. Popped out. That works. There we are. Oops. On a nice sunny day. On a nice sunny day. It's, that is a nice one. No question about that. Look at that one. You can see we got slick conditions. Normally I'd be throwing a topwater for smallmouth, but up here. In these conditions, you can get nice walleye on flat, calm, sunny, hot days. Boy, am I on oh, them here. Oh, oh. Troy and I are fishing one of my favorite lakes in Canada, and I got a lot of them. We're in such that country on Rainy Lake, and I don't know how many years I've been fishing up here. It's an amazing body of water. Yeah, you know, it's like 200 and 240,000 acres of water. Some of it's in the U.S., most of it is in on the Canadian side, and it's a phenomenal fishing, tro- trophy fishing for everything. You, you got big walleyes like we're fishing right now. And of course, the pike get much bigger than this, but when we're talking about walleye, this is a really, really good one. Look at that. You got pike, you got muskies, you got huge smallmouth bass, you got a, a, a growing population of crappie. You know, it's a heck of a heck of a lake. And we're going to be up here for a few days and, and hunting. Up. We might do a little piking in, in between walleyeing. But it's, at, it's the middle of August. 
And what does that mean up here? It means a lot of these big main leg deep pumps like this draw a lot of fish, everything, pike, walleye. We purchased uh, Campfire Island in uh, February of 2022. When we bought it, uh, water levels were increasing probably three inches a day, four inches a day. And at one point it overreached the 1952 record level. So this year was the highest the water's been since 1952. It was roughly seven feet higher than normal. We, I'd say 60% of the, the cabins lost their docks, their decks, anything that was within seven feet from the water line at normal. It was pretty well all gone, thousands in damage. We can accommodate up to 16 guests at a time. And we have an eight bed cabin, a four bed cabin, and an additional four bed cabin. Yeah, I love to fish, obviously. Uh, born and raised in Port Francis. Um, my parents had a cabin on Rainy Lake, so grew up, grew up in this central zone of the lake and love meeting new people. So it's, uh, it's, it's kind of an honor to show people the lake that don't get to see it every, every day. Some of the bonuses is you don't, you don't get to see the, the vehicles and the everyday traffic you would at a drive-to lodge. Um, you still get the fly-in feel here, but you're only five minutes from town. So that's kind of the upside to it where we're located. Uh, back when I was a young kid, my dad raised me growing up uh, catching crappie. So the crappie fishery around here, it's, it's sparse, but the ones you do find are nice and it, uh, it kind of hits close to home when it comes to crappie fishing. Got into smallmouth fishing and started doing tournaments probably back in 2012. We, we specialized in pike, uh, smallmouth and crappie at Campfire Island. So depending on the time of year, we can pretty well target all those. Yeah, Rainy Lake is, is pretty well, from what I've seen, one of the better walleye fisheries in Northwestern Ontario. It's another nice one. Yeah. It's an eater. Yeah. Um, from, from getting fish fry eaters up to, you know, 28 to 31 inch trophies. For social media, I got to take pictures. Rainy Lake pretty well has as it all when it comes to trophy fishing, especially in the walleye. Right. We are walleye fishing right now, but these structures hold both walleye and pike. And depending on what we're seeing on the screen, I got my pike rod rigged up. As you can see, this has, got, this has been chewed a little bit. So when we mark some bigger marks on there, I'll throw back, I'll snap jig this. And then if it looks like walleye, you know, I'll, I'll throw out the uh, jigging shadow wrap and occasionally, you know, a big walleye will hit a big swim bait like this. This segment is brought to you by Wavy Label Eyewear. Backed by a lifetime warranty, we see what others don't. I've been seeing fish all along. Yeah, we like marked we... a whole lot. Dad up on the front has Mega Live on, which is great for him up in the front, kind of scanning in front and out away from the boat. And when I'm dragging and snapping off the back, it's great to have on this screen, the map, I get to see the structure, the layout, position of the boat. And over here, most of the time, I'm snap jigging off the back of the boat. So I want to see what's directly down. So I have the 2D sonar, and then I have the down imaging, which makes an even clearer picture of what I'm seeing there so I can identify fish and the structure and see the separation even more in the imaging. And also the 2D sonar is really nice for just the overall uh, structure, bottom composition as well. You know, when you're out on these Canadian lakes, starting around, oh, you know, easily by mid-August and it'll go all the way till really late in the season, the main lake humps like we're on. You can look all around me, we're not near shore anywhere. We're out in the middle of the lake and these lakes, you, you, you look at your map, you run around, you get these deep, deep pumps and uh, this lake's got smelt. Yeah, you know, so that's a plus in, in there. But these big walleyes in these lakes love these main lake humps and they like what we refer to as transition areas. You'll come off the top, it'll go down like this and pretty soon it, you'll see the bottom start to lighten up a little bit and let's say it's a, it might be 30 feet and all of a sudden it gets really soft to 32, 33 feet of water. It might be 20 feet depending on the basin, but the transition area and the base of that transition is the area that those big fish really like to live in. Yeah, to see those transitions back here, that's where the 2D sonar is nice. The harder bottom, that's gonna be your dark red and then when it goes to orange, yellow, that's your softer bottom. And that sometimes, you know, 
difficult to see on down imaging, but on 2D sonar, that's where that can really shine, identifying the hard bottom to soft bottom transitions. There, got him. Got him. Oh, oh, oh that was, that was out, as you see, I'm kind of out there kind of far. It'd take me a second to reel this one in. This was like two snaps out there. And then that's when this one hit. My, yeah, I'm, a, I'm, I'm getting to be a good net man. I'm telling you, a good net man. I don't know if this, this might be a little bigger than the last it, one. It, yeah, they kind of wake up when they get near the boat. Oh yeah, I can oh, see you, oh, oh, that's oh, a donk. Yeah. That's a donkey. Yes, they like to sit in that nice shade of the boat when they come in Look at that. near. This oh, is bigger than the oh, other ones. Yeah. I'm saying this is, this is maybe a 28 inch or how's that great? That would be my biggest of the of, season. Of the season? Pro when you see that head shake like that, that's a big fish, baby. Yeah. I got the, the drag actually is moderately tight on man, this one. So there, as I said, I got the, the drag is not loose on this As soon as we get this in, I'll tell you what these fish are doing and how they position on these humps. Oh, oh big, yeah, big, big, big one. Big. Big, Look at big, that yeah. one. Oh, that's oh. a big one. Oh man. Woo. Okay. Oh man. Look oh. at that. Oh, the, oh, the, bait. Oh, the good. magic the jig, bait came off jig again. Popped out. Oh my God. Look at the size this, this of these fish. A, this is a. It's all yours. It's yeah, all yours. Right. Man. Oh man. Another monster. Holy smokes. He's been cleaning my clock on these big ones, man. And that's what that's what we came up here for. This is the this is the next size up from the other one that I caught. Boy, and they, and they, when they hit, they can get so aggressive. Even, like I said, this nice, calm, sunny weather, they, they put on the feed bags, they really strike the bait hard. That's a lot of fun. This is a beautiful fish. Oh, that's a, oh, that's a nice fish. Well, what I'm throwing here, this is the Rapala Jigging Shadow Wrap. And this style of bait from Rapala, like the regular jigging wrap and the flat jig, this differentiates a little bit from those and can apply to different situations and catch big fish just like I caught here. And this has different characteristics that separate it from the other baits in the Rapala family. The Rapala Jigging Shadow Wrap is truly unique compared to its brothers, the Jigging Wrap, Snap Wrap, or Jigging Shad Wrap. First off, it has a durable plastic construction with a broad silhouette. It's a lead-free, zinc-weighted lure. The three and a half inch bait weighs five eighths of an ounce, so basically, it has the length and profile of a number nine jigging wrap, but the weight of a number seven. The fall rate between the jigging shadow wrap and a jigging wrap is dramatically different. The jigging wrap drops like a rock after it's snapped. The jigging shadow wrap launches up and forward aggressively. Then it has a slight hang time before diving down and away. The larger profile, modern finishes, and belly flash action are ideal for targeting big eyes. It's opened many anglers' eyes to fishing this style of lure in colder, shallower water where a traditional jig and minnow is often used. This one-of-a-kind bait takes a different twist on the idea of pop jigging. You know, when we're fishing reaction baits like, like this, I personally cast it, I'm casting it probably 50% of the time. Yeah, you know, working toward fish, I'm seeing them on mega, there's big fish under me here. And the other method that we use another 40% of the time about is pulling, you know, like you'd be, you'd, like you'd be pulling a spinner or a lindy rig, say. And that's what Troy's doing. So I'm casting specifically to a couple air areas that he got. You got him? Yep. Yeah, he's got another one. This was dragging way out back. We are loaded for bear. We got you know, fight. there's so many different ways to fish for water. Dependability and efficiency. Simple, fast, and easy. The best rods on a planet. They like to eat when you're throwing the right thing. You don't have all bluebird flat calm days. Just a perfect eating size fish. Dude, that's what I'm talking about, these Daiwa drags. We got walleye stuff, we got crappie stuff, we got pike stuff. Dragging way out back. Yeah. It so, don't look big. Wow, well, we're just, this is when they, they wake up when they get near the boat, so this is, and we're, uh-oh, 
Uh-oh, got a little bit of weight to it. Did it wake up? I don't know. Enough is enough. I gotta change color. She's got, got something really snapping. I gotta get something that's got a little smack to it here to get their attention. You know, it's amazing. Even on a reaction bait like this, every once in a while, you know, you'll see that color is, is the whole the whole enchilada. And I mean, he's just been smoking me back there with him. Kind of a real hot color, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna play catch up with this baby. <laughs> yeah, you never know what you're gonna catch up here. Well, we know it's gonna be walleye, but they could be smaller walleye. They can also be gigantic walleye. And right now I wanna show you a rod setup that is perfect for this style of fishing. This is a St. Croix Legend Tournament Walleye Jig and Wrap model. Now this is a seven foot one inch, medium power, moderate fast action. So it does have the backbone, has a nice comfortable cork handle, but that moderate fast action is really great to allow the bait like this to be able to fall. So you want it to snap up and you want it to fall. So you don't want the rod tip to be too fast. So you want that moderate fast action that really balances well. For the reel, this is a Daiwa Procyon LT3000CXH, and this is a size 3000, which is great. You can use a size 2500 or size 3000, spool it up with braid. Size 3000 is going to hold a little bit more line. And this series from Daiwa is a really nice kind of in between. This is in between their value reel and also their high end stuff, so it's a nice kind of uh, medium priced reel that pairs really well with the St. Croix jig and wrap rod. Oh, oh, this was actually, I just landed, that one came off next to the boat and my next cast out is this one. So yeah, I get a net on this one. Okay. I'm, I'm messing with the mega live yeah. to look at, at it okay. here. He's sitting in the back, you're yeah. just setting the hook. All right. This boat is rigged up about as nice, easy to use, and it flat out works. It's a must have when you're talking about big waves. Well, these trout are so darn tough. This bait is legendary. Well, that was on a number eight shad wrap. Your style of boat control is really key. One that was there from the very beginning. You want to be able to see in the water. The adventure begins. All right, time to let this one go back, try to get a bigger one. I've just spot locked here once. I want to work it over. You know, each each one of the different styles of this type of bait is unique in itself. The action is different. And you fish them slightly different. In this case, I started off with monofilament and I wasn't moving the bait right. And Troy was catching fish after fish after fish behind me with uh, uh, braid. He got suffix braid with a suffix 10 pound test fluorocarbon leader. And you're able to fish the bait so much different. Remember, this bait's got a lot of hang time. It's not as fast as the any of the other baits. Oh, that's a good one there. It's not as fast as a lot of the other baits. So performs way, way better with braid than mono. Oh, oh that was right underneath the boat. I'm really fishing yeah. a little different than we yeah, did we yesterday. I'm, I'm kind of spotting. You had spot. that school of fish here, a pot of fish. So I just spot like the wind is laying right where it can fan cast that area. I don't know how many fish are oh, in there. It's another one casting out. Kind of a way. We're marking the fish underneath the boat, and occasionally I'm. This is the second fish here I've been throwing out away from the boat. I'll take her. There was a whole pot of these. I, I missed one. It was boom, boom, boom. Yeah, 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 you know. When it... All right, I'm gonna put on a new leader. Spooled up here, I have 10 pound suffix 131 braid, and then I'm using suffix advanced fluorocarbon for the leader. This is eight pound, you can use 10 pound as well. And I use a barrel swivel, and this is very important because this bait, it spins around, it darts to the side, and this helps prevent line twists. And this barrel swivel, this is absolutely key and then you'll get more bites when you're fishing this on a nice fluorocarbon like Suffix Advance. This is abrasion resistant and also with the eight pound, you know, or 10 pound, you know, that, that clarity in the water when it's down there, the fish don't see it as easily as they would see braid. You're gonna get a lot more bites. It was just giving you a little chit chat ready. there. And I, okay. I'm just trying to get positioned here, like about like this. Feels like a pretty good one. Yeah? Yeah. 
Yeah, right. good yeah. fish. Okay. You know, these humps that we got in here, we, well, we found these, this is one area of humps, and when you get in a, a part of the lake where you get on one basin, yeah, you, you know, all of them humps can have, have a pot of fish in them like this. Should be a good one. Oh, oh man, yeah. it is. Oh, that's a, oh, that's a doozy. A, that, that's, a, that's the biggest one of the day. Uh, Got it. Oh, 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 oh boy. Oh. <laughs> biggest fish of the day, I think, Troy. I know for me, what a walleye. This is why, why people come up to Magnificent Rainy Lake. I mean, you talk about King Kong. That, these are fish, baby. These are walleyes that have, these are great lake size walleyes. Oh man, what a beauty. Oh, I haven't had a walleye like that in a long time. You know what, Troy? I'm not even gonna make a second cast. I'm so hungry, I'm gonna release this baby and we're gonna go in and come back out tomorrow and maybe change some northern pike. Oh! <laughs> That's a wrap. <laughs> hey, Dan and I just came back from a successful shoot in Ontario sunset country. Yep. We had a great time up there filming. Yep. And on our way back and our time up there, there in the evening in a lodge, we talk about a lot of things. And he brought up something that I said, hey, you gotta share this with our viewers on one of the clothes. So go for it. Well, about uh, around 10 years ago, I uh, recently got married and we wanted to start a family. So Alyssa and I were trying naturally and it just was not happening. So um, during that time, I had spoke with my dad and uh, we were doing some research into IVF, which is where you take the egg and the semen out and you mix that outside of the body until it starts um, multiplying. And then you take that and they put that back into, into the body. And um, when we were discussing this, I'd ran this by my dad and my dad was naturally sus uh, suspect about it. You know, he said, you're playing God. And I thought about it for a while, and it does sound kind of different, I guess, you know. Um, and uh, I got back to him and I said, well, Dad, I said, if your heart valve was failing, I said, would you just say, well, that's it. I guess I'm checking out, Lord, that's it. Or if you broke your leg, would you just say that that's what it is? And my dad sat and he thought about that, and he did a 180. And <laughs> when my dad does a 180, he does a 180, and he was so committed to IVF after that and uh, not, not only financially but spiritually behind us uh, you know praying and all of that stuff and I never had a, a, an issue with it because I believe that my faith and science works together in concert and I know you've seen that in your life dealing with Aunt Mary and the issues that you've dealt with so um, to me I, I had no problem with it I think th I thank the Lord for doctors <laughs> <laughs> Amen. you know Amen. So, and luckily, and uh, thank the thank the Lord, we have two beautiful, healthy kids now. You know, and that was thanks to my father and his 180 on on science and faith. So great words, great words. Hey, from all of us here at the Edge, you have a great fishing season. We'll see you on the water. Largemouth bass are a unique species that inhabit all different types of water around the world. They thrive in large rivers, ponds, small creeks, natural lakes, and reservoirs alike. They're a very adaptable fish that can feed on a wide variety of forage. Of the three major bass species, smallmouth, spotted bass, and largemouth bass, largemouth bass prefer to live around dense cover no matter where they're at. You name it, lily pads, milfoil, reeds, submerged brush, or timber are great underwater habitat that draws concentrations of largemouth bass. The makeup and depth and density of these different types of cover often determine the best presentation tactic. Today on the Angling Edge, James Linder and Jake Wallace go deep on some of the finer points of bulrush fishing bass. I'll get her back in the drink. Wait, they're all, all of them look the same thing. They're all just like super chunks. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. There's one. Got him? Yeah, oh. it's in the reed. Oh, come on, buddy. You had him? Oh, yeah. Still on? Still on. Oh. Yeah, it feels like a good fish. Whoa. Pulling them out of them bull rushes. There yeah, we go. Yeah, you gotta lean on them. There you go. Yeah. 
what we're looking for. Flip them up. There we go. Good way to start. Wow, that's a little fat, so. Yeah, we'll get a little flip here. There we go. Nice fish. Look at that. Pick up in the bulrushes. Pop that jig out. Great way to start the morning, huh? That guy came out of the dense stuff. Boy, look how fat little chunk he is. Look at that thing. Beautiful bass. Look at the yellow color on her. Not a biggie, but it was a bass. Boy, but it tells you something, maybe where the fish are. Sometimes they're on the outside face. Sometimes they get really dense in where you have to really commando fish them. That fish was like in the middle of that stuff right there. It's one thing when you're talking about fishing these vertical weeds like bulrushes and maiden cane or reeds is cast placement. <laughs> the biggest thing is, is not to cast too far. You cast too far, then you gotta pull them back. So you gotta be, when you get into the really thick stuff, I have the tendency to make really short casts. The thing is, it's sort of interesting when you get into this type of cover, the fish don't spook away from the boat. You can be almost right on top of them and you won't spook them. Yeah. There's one. Oh, there's a good one. Oh, whoa. Wow, huh. Ooh, come here, buddy. Come here. Come here. Oh, come here, you little runt, you. You know, we will sort of spot lock this here. There we go. Come here. Oh, come here. Look at that. Beautiful bass, though. You gotta play with them in the boat. Come here, buddy. Holy mackerel. That guy got, really got me. Beautiful bass. It's sort of interesting, you know, these reeds, a lot of these reeds are different, they have different like weed composition around them. You know, some of them actually have a, uh, are hard bottom areas, but you also have a, some of them, we have actually different type of mixed grasses inside there. And sometimes you'll see preferences where the fish are actually can be sort of concentrated in. In this particular case, that's what we just started noticing. Boy, there's a lot of mixed cabbage in here. I don't know if that's gonna make a difference or not, but we will look for it in the future. We'll pull my pegging weight to sort of pin it pretty close to the, the bait here, huh? You wouldn't think that mapping would be applicable to this type of fishing situation, but realistically it is. These beds are so big, you know, up in North, so we live in central Minnesota, and we actually have acres and acres of this type of water, whether it be bulrushes or uh, like what we have here, reed beds, you know what I mean? There are acres around, but what I can do, because dependent on where the fish are positioned, if they're around the perimeter, it's very easy to fish around the perimeter. But a lot of times when you're fishing up in the inside and what you can use the, your track line is more or less like mowing the lawn that you zigzag back and forth like this and you've actively, really effectively cover over the entire reed bed. There's one. Got him. There yeah. you go. Nice one. This segment is brought to you by Wavy Label Eyewear. Backed by a lifetime warranty, we see what others don't. There's one. Got him. There yeah. you go. Nice one. There you go. Oh. Lean on that dog. Come on. Come on, Jim. Yeah, get him out of the stairs. Pull him out of there. <laughs> she can't even see the jig. Yes. That's that's how we like it. Oh, nice fish. Oh, come on, buddy. There we go. Look at that. You know, one thing that's really important when you're doing this, you know, pitch in, 
throwing in this really heavy cover for these bass is jig weight. Fire this guy back here. Nice. Now when you're pitching in heavy cover for largemouth bass, jig weight's super important. And you know, you're, you're thinking, you know, fishing shallow, you'd think go light. But the reality is you want to go heavy for two reasons. One, for accuracy when you're casting. And two is to make noise, right? To pull those fish out of cover and help them find your jig. Well, Jake's been fishing a half ounce Terminator jig. I've been fishing a three quarter ounce punch rig with a, a BFE, a big bite uh, flipping bait. This is called the best flipping bait ever. And what Jake was talking about goes the same with uh, punch baits. The interesting thing is, one thing that's really important when we're casting, what we're trying to do is also engaging the reel right away and feathering the bait down so it's not plunging to the bottom really quickly in some cases. It depends on the attitude of the fish. Sometimes if the fish are a little bit more inactive, the lighter weight will help unquestionably. But the thing is, is the casting accuracy and getting the bait to actually punch through the cover with the weight is more important to get the bait down to the bottom. Actually, realistically, when you see, look through the cover we have here, it's very, very dense. You know what I mean? There's a lot of different uh, particular matter, algae on the sides of the, the reed stalks, bulrush or maiden cane. And so what you, you want to do is that heavy weight is really cool in the fact that you're literally lifting. You'll notice the way we're fishing the bait, we're actually popping it up and down off the bottom because what you're trying to do is actually attract the fish from a distance away. This is a, a stop knot. These, they just come on little wires here and you can see what I have here just these little rubber grommets but what you do is you take and you put your line through it like that and then pull the rubber stop knot onto the line and I'm going to slide this up and then what I got his here is just a BMC tungsten weight and okay what we're going to do Slide the weight on, it's a three quarter ounce. You could go to a half or a, a one ounce depending on your preference and your, what you want for a drop speed. And then what I have here is actually, it's a flipping hook. And this is, happens to be a VMC red line, which is sort of a newer hook. This is vanadium steel, but it's really super strong. And then it actually has sort of a, this, uh, what's called PTFE. It has like a coating on it to make it faster hooking. They claim that it's 50% faster hooking on there. You can see what I did is I just made a loop, slid it on there, and then I'm gonna drop my line back through the hole here. And then what I'm gonna do is pull this whole thing tight with the line like this up the hook. And there you go, and that's on there. That's a really serious system right there. That's what a lot of guys use, and there's a reason for this. The reason being is because once you, when you set the hook, it actually leverages the hook up to more a positive purchase versus hanging straight without that snell knot, it just hangs straight. But when you put leverage on it, you can see how it twists that hook into more positive hooking position like that. It's a really good system for this, and my bait of choice right now is a Big Bite BFE, which is called the, bit, the best flipping bait ever. The nice thing about this is it's got a lot of plastic to it. It's very, very dense, so it actually can be fished through that heavy cover without tearing through the, the bait, and it enables you to pitch through the stuff without tearing the bait up really quickly. What I'm going to do is take it and just put it in there, sleeve her up, spin her, and then what I'm going to do versus text posing it, a lot of times I would punch it all the way through the bait and then dig it back into the bait with this because the cover is so dense. What I'm going to do is just take it and put it right in the center of the bait like that, and that will enable me to actually pull this bait through that heavy cover. When it gets hung up, you won't have the tendency, the hook won't punch all the way through the bait, but that's your system or one of the systems besides the jig that's a really great flipping bait for vertical weeds like bulrushes, reeds, maiden cane. That's the system. Okay. Oh, come here. 
Come here. Come here. Come here, buddy. There we go. Pulled up to the real outside patches, way out in the middle of the lake. A lot of these, uh, through, we're here out, it's, you know, second week of uh, August. And right now we're fishing bulrush patches that are actually really main lake oriented. They're all, all towards the, you know, out in deeper water. You know, that's a beautiful bass, no question about it. You know, earlier in the year, you could be fishing in the back bays, you know, where they'll be, be using the same habitat farther back. But right now it's late season, or late season as far as the summer goes, and a lot of them were targeting bulrushes that are on the outside face. You know, one thing that's really revolutionized this type of fishing, it's really sort of interesting what it is. Uh, you know, well, obviously uh, electronics, meaning uh, a trolling motor to be able to pull through heavy cover like this. You have the right uh, presentation specific rods that are really designed to pull big fish out of dense cover, high speed reels. Believe it or not, it's the line, you know, 30 years ago when we used to come in there and fish this stuff, we'd be fishing with like 25 to 30 pound test monofilament line, which had stretch. And uh, it was a real workout to be able to land these fish. But with this new braids, this is Suffolk's uh, 50 pound performance braid. And with this stuff, you can pull a truck with it. You know what I mean? This stuff is not only abrasion resistant, but one of the biggest things is when you hook a fish way back in there, you can immediately turn its head and pull you towards the boat. When you used to be fishing with monofilament, you'd hook the fish and they could, you know, they it had so much stretch, you, 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 the fish could pull away from you and get wrapped around the, uh, the bulrushes and you'd lose a, really a lot of them. But I'm not kidding, you know, the one thing that I would say that's really changed the face of this type of really dense cover fishing is braided line, no question about it. This boat is rigged up about as nice, easy to use, and it flat out works. It's a must have when you're talking about big waves. Well, these trout are so darn tough. This bait is legendary. So that was on a number eight shad wrap. Your style of boat control is really key. One that was there from the very beginning. You want to be able to see in the water. The adventure begins. You know, today's day and age, bass fishing is so presentation specific as far as rod reel goes. This is St. Croix's Legend Tournament Flippin' Stick. It's seven foot, six inches in length. It's a heavy power with a moderate fast action. This is a perfect balance for flipping big bass out of heavy cover. You know, the same thing with the reel. This is actually a Daiwa Elite pitch and flipping uh, reel, reel. This is 8.1, it's real fast gear ratio reel, but it also has this T-wing system that it opens up the aperture for you know, accurate cast for long distance. It also has this uh, quick release uh, thumb bar that really can quickly engage the reel. As the bait is dropping, I just hit the thumb bar to pop it up so I can ready to set the hook as quickly as possible. But you know, today's day and age, that's the way bass fishing is. It's so presentation specific, rod, reel, and line. We're gonna reposition here to actually fish these reeds really as accurately as possible. We wanna be fishing with the grain of the reeds, but the thing is we have the wind and we're blowing it at our back. So what I'm gonna do is turn around, Jake, let's go downstream. You wanna drive us down, to, down there and we'll fish back. And it'll be just a little bit easier for boat control. Now you'll really see this, this kind of fishing is really boat specific. You wanna make sure you have the right stuff. And we've got the talons back there and it's a huge help because there's so many spots that these fish could be. Being able to talon down in the middle of these bulrush beds allows you to pick apart the spots and catch these fish. This should be good in here. Boy, we've got a really nice dense stand. This is the farthest clump of bulrushes out into the lake. This is like the lead point. In other words, as deep as the bulrushes grow in this lake, this is the point right here. Oop. Oh, there's one. Oh, come on, buddy. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Come here. There you go. Interesting little spot where that fish came from. When you look up there, you can see there's a bunch of 
alternate weeds actually blown into the edge of the bulrushes and it actually forms a little bit better overhead cover and that's where that fish was positioned at. But there's a variety of different uh, specific spots around these bulrush beds when you're looking at where the fish are likely to be positioned at. Fishing these giant bulrush beds can seem intimidating. They are so massive and you have to fish relatively slow to pick them apart. Oh, there's one. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Here's a few things that'll help you with the fish finding process. Edges. There is obviously an outside edge to many of these reed beds, but when you dig in a little deeper and go inside, you'll notice alternate edges, thicker weed mats, wind-blown overhead cover, large holes on the inside, and natural lanes in the reeds. These are all potential targets. Be aware if you catch a fish off a certain type of cover mixture, because it's something that could be possibly replicated in other weed beds. Depending on the time of the year, water depth can be a pivotal factor. Experiment with different reed depths and a pattern will emerge. Now when it comes to wind, it can be a double-edged sword. On one hand, it makes fishing a little bit more difficult because you want to be fishing with the wind directly from your back. So you're fishing with the natural grain of the wind blown cover. But one thing the wind can do is concentrate the fish on the wind blown side of any reed bed. So what Jim was saying with fishing with the grain of the weeds, you can see them getting blown down like this. So I'm able to cast back, pick a spot, and then I can actually fish through it without getting caught. And it's also way easier to land them because the fish aren't going across them, you're getting caught. You're able to pull them right through this cover. Got him. There it is. That doesn't look like a rocky to I don't me think there, big so. boy. Or is it a big bull rock? No. We are loaded for bear. We got you know, bites. there's so many different ways to fish for water. Dependability and efficiency. Simple, fast, and easy. The best rods on the planet. They like to eat when you're throwing the right thing. You don't have all bluebird flat calm days. Just a perfect eating size fish. See, that's what I'm talking about, these die with drag. We got walleye stuff, we got crappie stuff, we got pike stuff. One, oh, whoa, whoa, there, look at that, there we go. Wow. You know, this is toe-to-toe -to -toe fishing. It's not for the faint of hearted, but it can be some of the best bass fishing you can get in all year. You know, reed fishing like this is actually a, a lot of, uh, it's a lot of work, but the thing is, boy, it can be absolutely a gas. It really is. You know you've had a good day when you got a pile of old rubber like that. Hey, I got a special guest with us today. It's my friend, Jeff Simpson. Jeff and I go way back to In Fisherman Communications Network when my family and I owned the business. We sold that, we got involved with Linder Media Productions and we produced the, started the Angling Edge television series and, and it's alive and well today and a number of other shows that we produce. And uh, Jeff is in charge of our social media area. He oversees the whole social media world that we live in today. And uh, when we do these closes like this, Dan Linder, my nephew is on the camera, and Jeff have always been with me. And we pray over the opening and get a direction. We know what's right, we seek some wisdom on the stuff. And I ask him, is there anything on your heart that you might want to share with the viewers? And Jeff came up with something on his heart, and I'm going to just turn it over to you, brother. <laughs> well, thanks, Al. Yeah, the one thing I can think of that has helped me for decades is to really take conscious of and consideration for forgiving people and to forgive often, you know, and, and that was really handed to my wife and I before we got married. And boy, has that really paid big dividends for us in our marriage. Sometimes I step on her toes, she steps on my toes, but every day, like we start the day off fresh, we have, we forgive, forgive each other. And, and for people, you know, as we move along in, in life, you know, they're just people you, that we're humans. We're kind of a funny bunch, right? We, we, we step on each other's toes and we may offend each other. And, and some of those infractions can be bigger, you know, dealing with, with people as you go along in life. And, and so it takes a lot of effort for you, yourself to forgive somebody. And, and, but it's really, really, truly worth the effort. It, it's only gonna, the main person that's gonna benefit is you and me so I, I honestly go through the effort and and if somebody has offended me i will or, or hurt me in some way to go through that process of in my head and in with in my heart to forgive that person and it may take 
several several times and it may bubble back up and I, I really work at forgiving and what that does is it eventually it will release you and those open wounds will heal you may still have those scars but but they're just scars and you don't feel that anymore so it's written right here in the Bible Matthew 18 21 through 22 then Peter came to him and said Lord how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him up to seven times Jesus said to him I do not say to you up to seven times but up to 70 times seven times per person <laughs> that's 500 times roughly <laughs> so but it pays it's it's a gift from God to Amen. forgive people hey simple words of wisdom that all of us have to deal with at some time in our life multiple times hey from all of us here at the edge have a good safe fishing season Thanks for being with us. Let's head to South Dakota and catch some walleye. Sounds like a, a good plan. Spread throughout North America, there are many unique fishing destinations. One that is really close to our heart is Leech Lake in central Minnesota. Leech Lake is big with 112,000 acres of water with really diverse fishing opportunities, resorts, and outdoor recreation 365 days a year. For us, fall is a great time to be on the water. Once hunting season opens in the North Country, boat landings are empty and you have the whole lake to yourself. Let's join Jeremy Smith, Jeff Simpson, with James and Al Lindner enjoying some hot late season bites on one of Minnesota's crown jewels. But a lot of people don't take advantage of this fall, this fall bite for numbers and quality of, of fish. They're hunting. At least more fish for me and James. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. Yes, nice, nice one too, Jeff. Nice one, nice one, nice one, nice one. There we go. Sweet. Woo! He just pounded it, baby. He just creamed it. Look at that. Good morning, Muskie. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, Jeffrey. Good girl. All right. Sweet. Woo! We're on a Leech Lake mission. Oh, Jimmy and Al, we're gonna do a little walleye fishing out here today. It was, it's fall, it's one of our favorite times of year to fish. And Jeff and I were like, we're not so much in the mood for walleye. It's been such a beautiful fall. Let's catch a muskie. I don't know, three minutes in, bam, muskie in the boat. Okay, sorry, I tend to exaggerate. I'm all shaky, it's dark, so a lot of people think that early in the morning, late in the fall like this is not a great time to fish. But I find that it can be an awesome time to fish when you've got the Cisco's pushing up, they're near the surface, they're often near shallower water, and man oh man, the muskies are right there with them. I'll show you why I love fishing here so much because you've got potential trees Ugh. to catch fish like this out here. It's absolutely one of Minnesota's crown jewels. The boys are gonna have a good time, I know, catching walleyes, but for Jeff and I getting a chance to come out, catch a muskie like this, on a beautiful fall morning is as good as it gets. Oh, and they're just gorgeous fish. I just love them. All right, let's get this girl back. All right, let's let her go. Oh, great fish, man. Great, great muskie. Woo. Oh, that's a beaut, huh? You know, from season opener all the way up till freeze up, there's some great musky bites that happen, but I think anybody who is really into musky fishing knows that fall really is the prime time to run into some big fish. They're as heavy as they get, and oftentimes the fish can be relatively concentrated just based on the food. And Leech Lake has both Cisco's and Lake Whitefish in it, and fall is a time where you can run into big pods 
of those cool cold water forage species for muskies. And when you run into those big pods of bait like that, it's amazing how many big predators can be with them. So Jeff and I right now are out taking advantage of the fall prime time bite where the muskies are eating up on some ciscos, taking advantage of that. And a lot of times, early and late in the day this time of year are, are peak periods. So those, those fish often come up to spawn or if it's pre-spawn, they're a lot of times near the surface where muskies have access to them and they know that. And it seems like if you get a calm, sunny day in the fall, the muskies will be near the bottom. But if you get out early, the ciscos are still up and the muskies are hunting those things down and you can really have a great bite on the bookends of the day, early in the morning, and then again, late in the evening. Oh, there it is again, this is kind of cool. You can see, I wanna show you this. I did not see it with my eyes. So if you see right here, that's the actual fish in the water column, and I could see him moving on the side imaging here. So there's the muskie. You can see that his shadow, I've got that line, and then I get that nice little white return there. And that was definitely a muskie following on side imaging. You know, so much of really what you deem success in musky fishing is like how many fish did you move? How many follows did you have? But when you're fishing in this low light, it's, you know, obviously, or at night, it's obviously hard to see into the water to see the fish. And you really got to believe your electronics that, you know, in this dark here, we have not seen a fish yet, but side imaging has shown us like four follows already. So you can kind of see that there'll be like some lines in the water like a little wavy thing and then a lot of times in the in the black zone which is just below your boat that little spot between the center line and the bottom of the lake then all of a sudden you see a little white line appear in there and then you're seeing some wavy action out to the side of the boat and those are muskies following you just can't see them with your eyes so when you do indeed see that mark it down pay attention to it because those are, those are the follows. Those are the fish you want to come back to when you know you've got the right conditions. So fishing early in the day or late at night when you don't get the chance to actually see the fish with your eyes, your electronics nowadays can actually show you the fish following the bait as well, which is pretty cool. And you got to believe it because it's, it's for real. Oh, there's one. Little guy bolted off. Oh my gosh, there's one behind me. Look at this. This is a great example right here of a follow. Okay, so you can see here, Look at, look at here, okay, so as, this is the fish moving. There he is, right there, and then you can see him again, kind of waving right there. That's a really cool, you know, that's exactly what you wanna see. And it's just dark enough right now, I can't actually see the fish, but it looks pretty sweet, isn't it? That's the muskie, that's his signature right there. You know, in the fall, Jerry and I love to get out early in the mornings and get after these muskies. This is really just a small window that we can target. You know, we, we get out here before before sunrise and there's a small window, Every, all the, everything's real active, the bait are up. And when the sun comes up about now, we're losing confidence. So that, that window's pretty much closed. But that's the beautiful thing about Leech Lake. You know, the muskies may be shut down for now, but hopefully Al yeah. and James, they're up on the other part of this lake chasing walleyes. They're gonna probably catch some walleyes and the panfish, can go all day, so what a fabulous, fabulous fishery. Come here, buddy. This segment is brought to you by Big Bite Baits, designed to bring the big bite to your line. Give me a oh, 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 easy it. Out. That's what I like. There we oh go. yeah, big fish. Nice fish again. Yeah. Nice fish again, man. Whew. Boy, they're real fatzos in here. Come here, buddy. There you go. There you go. Oh, there you go. Look at that guy there. Beautiful fish. Look at that. Wow. Beach Lake Special. Come here, buddy. You know, Leech Lake is one of those special bodies of water. We've actually fished out here for many, many years, and we've shot television shows for walleyes, smallmouth bass, big muskies, crappies, bluegills. It's a real special lake that really has a tremendous uh, carrying capacity, just the way the lake is laid out. There's giant flats, lots of uh, big weed, weed beds, reef systems. 
even big smallmouths. It's a really, really special body of water. You know, and throughout the year, the cool thing about this lake, there's always something biting out here. You know what I mean? That's one thing about, you know, you, certain lakes, uh, they have such tremendous carrying capacity, there's always different things to do on it. Oh, got one, Jim. Yeah, you do? Yeah. That one's fast. Nice. Nice job, bro. What's that? Not a, not a big one, but not a bad one. Yeah, you know, if, if you were to look, I don't need it, I can flip this one. <laughs> Just on the, the cusp of being a flipper. The way the bite's been going, you need to get a few of these mixed in with it, huh? Yeah, yeah. Real good eater. Good go. Yeah, water is still, you know, a couple different basin areas of the lake that we've been on. The one area we're in now has a little more, definitely some more color to it. Without a doubt, there's more color. And versus some of the other ends, in, in the area that we've been getting the bites, is when we can find some stain in the water. Yeah, you know, when you're dealing with shallow fish, yeah, you know, and these fish are, well, I, I were catching them from six to, the one under the screen there, six to about 10. You know, water color can make a difference, especially when it's flat, calm, and sunny like this. The little pods of fish are just wandering you know, two or three fish here, and you can just see them just swimming around on this massive, massive flat area that we're here. He's scanning, scanning, scanning with the mega live just looking. And you see a man or two or three here, you get, a, you get a cast in there. And hopefully it gets in front of one of them enough to, to stop them to eat the bait. They like to eat when you're throwing the right thing. You don't have all bluebird flat calm days. Just a perfect eating size fish. Dude, that's what I'm talking about, these Daiwa drinks. We got walleye stuff, we got crappie stuff, we got pike stuff. This boat is rigged up about as nice, easy to use, and it flat out works. It's a must have when you're talking about big waves. Well, these trout are so darn tough. This bait is legendary. I, I don't know if I could, nah, I, eh. You think I can flip them? I'm going to not flip them. I'm going to, yeah, well, eight, I can do it. Yes, we're there. <laughs> right on, this one was right on the edge of flipping her over. <laughs> you know, one of, one of the reasons that I personally really love Leech Lake is it's one of those bodies of water that, uh, uh, Walleyes like to bite on a jig. It's noted for a jig bite. Actually, all season long. Naturally, heavier in spring and in fall. But even in the middle of summer, jigging plastic, uh, uh, a jigging wrap, those style of baits, hair jigs. And, and uh, it's funny how different lakes have a presentation yeah, you know, that uh, they're, they're kind of known for. You'll hear guys say, this is a rig lake. This is a spinner lake. This is a plug lake. Well, Leech is a jig lake. And that's one of my favorite ways to catch walleyes. That's why I love this lake. I'm throwing about as classic of a Leech Lake bait you could possibly throw. This a uh, VMC hardball jig, 1 8 ounce with uh, a rainbow minnow on, on there. But realistically, when you're talking jigs, particularly for the shallow water bite, hair jigs are really good depending on the uh, time of the year. So can be soft plastics. But the big thing is, is what the fish are willing to bite. Right now, we're fishing in relatively cold water and they're, they're gonna, they'll bite on a little bit of everything, but hair and um, a jig and a minnow Seems like it's the best right now, but throughout the summer months, a lot of times that soft plastics is all you, all you need. A lot of times we fish with like these suicide shads in a moon-eyed jig and fishing it really hard and fast. Right now with that water temperature being cooler, they're a little bit more inactive where you need that little bit slower, more subtle drop speed. We're using relatively lightweight baits. But when you look at the lake, 
what's so cool about leech, it's so diverse and so large. You have big, expansive uh, uh, cabbage beds spread over these flats. In some areas, you have this weed called cara or sand grass. And a lot of times, perch really like that. And in turn, walleyes like that. And then you look at the gravel and boulder flats that are around this lake. You can jig all over the entire body of water. For today's jigging mission, Al and I are both using the same stick, just different models. It's a six foot, eight inch, medium power, extra fast action. The extra fast tip is ideal for snap jigging like Al is doing with artificials, but the extra fast action also provides the right amount of flex in the tip when the waldos aren't launching the jig, they're just hanging on the minnow. You can put a bit of pressure on the fish without risking them dropping the bait. St. Croix has his power and action in their three walleye lines, Icon, Avid Series Walleye, and Legend Tournament Walleye, because this is the ultimate jigging rod. I'm fishing with Daiwa's Regal LT. This is a classic from Daiwa that was recently designed with the LT concept of light and tough. For 60 bucks, there isn't another reel out there that fishes this smooth and packs in so many features like a carbon light body, digi gears and nine ball bearings. Line choice is dependent on your preference. However, we've seen plenty of times when braid versus mono can have a distinct advantage over the other. When snap jigging shallow, we're often using Suffolk's advanced mono in six or eight pound test. And for dragging or fishing deeper, we'll often go with eight or 10 pound Suffolk A32 braid. Both of us are using an eight pound fluorocarbon leader. One one thing when you when, when you get them, they're good ones. So that was on a number eight shad wrap. Your style of boat control is really key. One that was there from the very beginning. You want to be able to see in the water. The adventure begins. We are loaded for bear. We got you know, ice. there's so many different ways to fish for water. Dependability and efficiency. Simple, fast, and easy. The best rods on a planet. You get them there, good one. This is one. This is a a real, a real good, a good one. <laughs> like that first one that you had. Fall bites. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Get your head out of there. Ah, not a bad one. Uh, pretty good one. Huh? Look at that. You know, jigs are actually a a pretty interesting bait. They're really so simple. In, but they're not really. Actually, when you look at uh, various types of uh, jigging, we fish these baits a wide variety of different ways in really cold water for really negative fish. A lot of times, if the fish are inactive, do you know what I'll do? Is not jig it at all. Take it and drop it to the bottom and reel it on the bottom. And the fish will pick it up off the bottom and I'll intermittently stop the bait a, a lot. Um, then you look at uh, hair jigging. A lot of times what we do with a hair jig is we can fish it really super erratic moon, uh, moon, moon tail and you fish it really erratic so it pops up and down really fast. Sometimes like in really cold water conditions like what we'd have here, you go to a really lightweight head and it's a very, very slow, subtle swimming retrieve. Uh, same thing with soft plastics, a suicide shad and a, uh, like a, a moon eye. A lot of times that will fish it with a relatively heavy head and then a, a, you know, a three or four inch bait, but we'll fish it so the bait goes, jumps up and then snaps real fast back down. Jumps up, snaps right back out, down again. So jigs are, you know, as simple as they are, there's a lot of little subtleties to becoming a really good jig angler. There's no question about that. And the intriguing thing is, is what I'm talking about, you can see a really dynamic difference on the number of fish you catch based on the attitude of the fish. If the fish are neutral or negative, the more the subtlety of your retrieve is. It's no, there's no question about it. Where you fish the bait one way, and you catch a lot of fish, and then you fish it another way, you will catch none. Uh, uh, there's two times of the year where you got a lot of fish and a lot of big fish that are up shallow. And but that's spring of the year, pre-spawn, spawn, post-spawn. Post -spawn. And then after that, they spread out and do different things. Then again, come in fall, after the lakes turn over, and that water gets into the low to mid-50s, the fish that have been suspended 
the fish that have been lead core fish across the basin of the lakes. These fish all join the weed fish and the structure fish, not all, but a big percentage of them come back into the shorelines. And this happens in a, a lot, a lot of walleye lakes. So you got a fall movement that these walleyes, and the night bite, by the way, now, the night bite can be tremendous on a lot of these lakes. But those two time frames, the spring that everybody knows about, but a lot of people don't take advantage of this fall, this fall bite for numbers and quality of, of fish. They're hunting. At least more fish for me and James. You know, so many times I've had people send me emails, a letter, ask me at church outreach programs, talk to me at sports shows and stuff that follow the closings on our show. And uh, they often say, I got a hard time understanding the Bible. You know, a lot of it just doesn't make sense to me. Well, welcome to the club. <laughs> There's a whole lot of it that, that doesn't make sense in a lot of cases because we're not quite capable of understanding a lot of it. Let me read a scripture to you that really addresses that issue. And I, I've got, I got the, the Passion Bible here, I got the New King James here, but this one explained it a little clearer. It's the Message Bible. And it was so simple and so clear. This is Solomon, who was considered the wisest, richest man that ever lived. This is in uh, uh, Ecclesiastes, 8, verse 16 and 17. When I determined to load up on wisdom and examine everything taking place on earth, I realized that if you keep your eyes open day and night without blinking, you'll never figure out the meaning of what God is doing on this earth. Search as hard as you like. You're not going to make sense of it. No matter how smart you are, you won't get to the bottom of it all. It said so much, it makes it so simple. And what I mean by simple, don't complicate it. And the Word of God is built around your personal faith. He's moved by faith. He says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith-filled prayer is what moves them. Not vain repetitions, or that. it's faith-filled prayer. Do you believe what you're saying? Is it coming from your heart, not from your head? When you have faith-filled prayer, God answers it. Don't try to make sense out of it because you're not gonna make sense out of it. And here, I found this, this so enlightening for so many people. Just read, you're not gonna figure it out. I don't care how, how smart you are. Uh, 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 uh. There's things in God's word that you're not going to figure out. It's a God deal, not you. God is God, and you and I are human, flawed in so many ways. However, we have access through him. We have access to his word to tell us how to live a faith-filled life and make life a whole lot easier in all of the circumstances that we face in this world we live in today. I thought that was a great read, and I just wanted to share it with you. Hopefully it makes your day like it made mine. They're from all of us here at the edge. You have a good fishing season. See you on the water.